Hello, everybody, and welcome to the AWC Finals. My name is Aya. I'm going to be your host this weekend. We are back here with Zico, Venruki, and Supertease. And Sid, we are starting off today with the gauntlet. These teams fought long and hard to get here, and they're only hoping to get to tomorrow's games. Yeah, this is the first time that we've done uh, a system like this, where they're going to be battling each other in a single elimination line, one after the other, seventh versus eighth, the winner of that versus sixth, winner of that versus fifth, winner of that versus fourth. So right now, Team Huhu, they're sitting as the final boss of Europe in this gauntlet to qualify into the finals tomorrow and on Sunday. Our first series is going to be Dragonlance, Roulette, and Bane. Obviously, there have been a lot of class changes leading into this uh, grand finale here on this weekend so a lot of teams are going to have to adapt um in europe we had a lot of priests and a lot of druid which i think have started to fall off to shaman and mistweaver as far as healers so are these teams going to be shifting their classes are they just going to stick to their guns how are they going to plan their route through this to make it through into the top four yeah a lot of tough decisions coming up for these players a lot of tough games ahead of them for sure but uh yeah you you, you got to talk about it you got to talk about the changes They're, the ladder's looking very different right now the tournament realm is looking very different right now ven what can we expect from today what are you looking forward to the most in terms of class changes yeah, it'll be really interesting to see, like Supati said, how some of these teams are going to adapt in terms of healers. We already talked about it. It's going to be the Restoration Shaman and the Mistweaver Monk uh, that we'll likely see the most of. Uh, for DPS, there's been a bit of a shift. Uh, Rogues have kind of uh, disappeared a little bit. They've vanished. So I'm, I'm curious to see if any teams will continue to run that uh, or uh, you know, if we're just going to see kind of the Rep Pally dominance. Because I, I think the two classes or the two yeah the two classes i expect to see the most of are the paladin especially the retribution um as well as warlock that demonology warlock those are like the two main dps specializations that most comps are kind of built around right now yep and it kind of sounds like zika we've seen pretty much every every team that's going to be playing this weekend sort of adapt to those changes otherwise they might just you know sink yeah and that's the thing right because uh you know it's been a pretty red heavy meta but uh, it's also about kind of adapting to that. If some teams uh, can find kind of their own unique answers, uh, that could definitely be a way forward. And, um, you know, I talked a little bit with some of the teams uh, in Echo, which is formerly Poggers, and uh, I don't think they will be playing Red. You know, they didn't really give away too much in terms of like strategy. Obviously, we won't see them today here in the gauntlet. They're already qualified for the finals. We'll see them tomorrow. But uh, I think they have some interesting strategies uh, saying that they were kind of playing some off meta picks and it's hard for teams to get practice against them and it's uh, easy for them to kind of get practice into the current meta so there could be some sleeper picks like that that could come forward and uh, a lot of it is about kind of incorporating it to your uh, your own team right because uh, having somebody pick up like maybe a ret uh, and a warlock could be difficult if you didn't already have that but uh, we might see, you know, like a Red Warrior. We might see some Red uh, Hunter as well. Been pretty popular, like, uh, for example, uh, for My Way, that, that could be something. So, um, and then some teams already have the Warlock, but they don't necessarily have the Red. I'm thinking of uh, Team Huhu, final boss in the gauntlet that we'll see at the end of the European uh, gauntlet today. Uh, they might just bring in, you know, a Warlock Ellie, try to make that work. Uh, there's been some changes to Reds as well. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what, what actually happens here. Yeah, certainly will. And I'm looking forward to it, seeing what these teams have in store for us. But like we sort of already hinted out, we are going to be starting off the day here with the European teams. And we're going to see who moves on to tomorrow. And then in the later half of the day, we're heading over to North America. But let's talk about the, the EU teams right now. We're starting off with Dragonlands Roulette versus Bane for the first match of the day, Ben. Yeah, I mean, it'll be an interesting one. Um, like I mentioned, some of the teams may have not picked up that Retribution Paladin. And I, I think in Europe, at least, these would be the two teams that are kind of just sticking to their guns. Bane kind of known for that Rogue Mage Priest. So I'm curious to see if they can still kind of make that work. And for Dragonlands Roulette, they have a pretty flexible roster. So there's different things that they can run. Of course, they have Valet on the Shadow Priest. Gelu who plays both Mage and Warlock. Acro on the Rogue. Um, so they have a lot of flexibility within their own roster. And this... Could be an interesting first game because I think it's likely we won't see too much of like the main meta stuff. Although I know Gelu does play that Demonology Warlock, so that might be something that they want to try to implement here in game number one that could actually be really good into Bane. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we'll have to see. Bane, uh, you know, the winner of this one will move on to fight the Fiends for the next one. So there's a possibility that we could see a couple of teams today, Sid, play multiple series in a row. So these teams are really going to have to kind of keep their head up, keep their mental game strong in these tough elimination rounds. Yeah, we might have some Cinderella stories, some dark horses here. Uh, if they can move series after series after series through the gauntlet, make it through Team Hoo Hoo, the final boss. Right now, Admirals Esports is kind of standing out at the, as the strongest team to me, uh, given the current meta, having Blizzo on Arms Warrior. Swapsy was playing Rep Paladin before uh, the rework and was getting close to getting wins with it. So now after the rework, I'm imagining that he's going to be, you know, crushing it on the Rep Paladin. So they're kind of the Titan team. Between these two first teams, it's kind of whether or not They've either they can make their comps work in the current meta or they can beat the new meta um, because Bane has been a diehard RMP. They've only got three players, so I really doubt to see them make any shifts. All right, well, let's see if they do. Up next, we've got game number one here Dragonlands Roulette facing off against Bane for the first series of the day. Yeah, I think the blind pick's going to be really interesting for this one. And either one of these teams, if they want to have any hope to make it into the finals, make it into that top four, they have a long day ahead of them. It's going to have to be win after win after win after win. Uh, we'll see who's up for the task. Game number one on the Grand Arena. I'm kind of expecting Bane to go with that Rogue Mage Priest. Uh, what do you think that Dragonlands mm -hmm. Roulette is going to be going with here? Oh, there's a lot of options here for Dragonlance Roulette. You know, uh, maybe they will just go to uh, what we saw kind of in the qualifier uh, with that Rogue Shadow Priest. I feel like uh, that is exactly is. what we're going to see. But uh, like Sid kind of mentioned, the rest of Druids kind of be falling off a little bit more uh, in favor of the Shaman. So we're going to actually see the Priest as well being swapped out for Oliak here. He's going to be bringing in his own Restoration Shaman. So uh, we got two teams essentially that played RMD and RMP playing Rogue Mage Shaman uh, and Shadow Priest uh, Rogue Shaman. We're going to see an opener here right away uh, over on to the Rogue here. Shoxy taking a little bit of damage right now. Gets the Earthen Wall Totem, gets disarmed here from Acro p -Mech now, loading up some damage here on that mage. But Vileo as well, uh, doing a decent amount of damage here, going in for the Psychic Horror, moving in for the Fear. Nice. What a nice knock. That was really nice by p -Mech there, knocking away Vileo, shutting down the Fear there. That was almost his Ice Block right there. If he got that Fear for sure, he would have had to use it. So, yeah, good deflection there from Bane in the opener, but also good offense coming in from Dragonlance Roulette so far. Yeah, all he had to actually trade his trinket, so he made a fair trade with that blind. Now we have full kitty shot onto Acro, trying to get something done, but a nice grip there from Belay shuts down some of that damage. P make trinketing out aggressively as well, wanting to get aggressive. Can he find the polymorph? Does manage to find it, but an instant mass spell coming in from Belay. That shuts down the crowd control, frees Zank to actually heal up Acro, and now it's going to be Dragonlance Roulette once again, who can get aggressive. Ooh. They have a kitty shot here onto Shoxy. Ollie not in any crowd control just yet, hopping the Ascendants, trying to empower his heals, does manage to stabilize, but uh, I think Shoxy should be okay, so he still has a lot of cooldowns he can work with. Big setup here on Acro, can they take him down? Let's see if they can. Beautiful Hex coming in from Ollie onto Zanked. Delay is not going to be able to master spell that one, and that could be key to victory for them, get those Hexes. In the meantime, he make his force into the Ice Block, a beautiful setup there by Dragonlands Roulette. Can they just push through and take him down? A full fear, P makes in trouble. Yeah, big damage coming in here. Also onto Shoxy. Pressure in multiple locations. Lightning Lance coming in from Ollie onto the lay. They do manage to shut that down. Shoxy forced to use his Cloak of Shadows right there. Pimek with no Ice Block though right now. Could be the Spirit Link Totem. It will get traded out there by Ollie. Acro now though. No Cloak of Shadows as well. I had to trade it out earlier in the Smoke Bomb. So he's going to be in a little bit of trouble here as well. But he does manage to get picked up here by Zang. Another Kidney Shot Smoke Bomb here from Acro this time around. Big damage coming in here. Ring of Frost to kind of slow it down a little bit. Counter Kidney Shot onto Acro. Acro actually going to trink it out offensively here they do get a sheep here onto zank p -Mike doing a lot of work here uh, doing some damage getting those sheeps with lay once again with an instant master spell gets caught up in the hex acro once again dropping a little bit low but zank no longer in crowd control should be able to keep him alive for now and that next setup could be onto p -Mike. that could potentially take him down or onto shoxy uh, either one could go down that next time they can push for that disarm into fear the lay right now still they're trying to slow him down with those cheap shots acro getting disarmed as well taking a little bit of damage but he 
does get top tier. Ascendance procs for Zank as well. It should be able to keep Akra alive, but Pimek actually getting a lot of pressure out here so far. And once again, they're just trying to slow down Vilay, trying to shut down that crowd control before Vilay can push in and actually get that. And so far, it's good deflection here from the Rogue Mage team. Again, they get that Earthen Wall totem. Akra again in a little bit of trouble, but again, it is going to be Akra kind of staying alive. Vilay pushing in for the fear here, but Olic doing a good job here, just line of sighting, avoiding the crowd control, making sure that he tops his team before he gets put in that Psychic Scream, and yeah, I think they are going to be fine on the side of Bane for now. Yeah, it's looking like it, and Oli actually has a huge mana lead. It might not matter. Full blind on Zank. He trinkets out, trying to save Acro, who's caught into the kidney shot. Preemptive Spirit Link Totem will drop down on that Polymorph, but they kill it off instantaneously. It's not even able to break that Polymorph. Nicely done there by P-Make and Shoxy, really shutting that down, and Zank's mana is not looking good. This is not what I would have expected. I feel like with the composition Dragonlands Roulette has, they would have a mana lead in this match, but it doesn't appear to be the case. That being said, PMake, there's no ice block for a long time. Ooh. I mean, this next setup coming in, if they get any crowd control on Ollie, PMake could just go down in one quick setup. They got the silence. The Psychic Core is coming up soon as well. So, Bane, they need to try to close this game out as I, I feel like PMake's going to be in a lot of danger here shortly. Yeah, Olig actually trinketed a, a fear right there, and Acro has his blind available, so they are trying to set up for that KO situation. It could be onto P Make here as well. Uh, P Make with no ice block, no trinket for about 20 seconds. They could land a kidney onto P Make. He's not playing that blinks down. If they can get the blind as well, they could potentially take him down here. That mage is going to be in a lot of trouble here, trying to reset his cooldowns with that shifting power. They're trying to slow down Acro here before he can get going, but I feel like he might pull the trigger soon here. Going for that restuff, might be able to get it. Play in a, a nice crowd control here, actually. You get the lightning lasso into sheep and get a full ring of frost acro actually forced to trinket out now going over onto p make here can he rush him down zank mana not looking too good right now in that window uh, with no trinket is getting slimmer and slimmer acro once again with no cloak of shadows no uh, real defensives here just has to rely on his healer to do the job here and zank so far dropping very low mana but here he goes full setup coming in and that is going to be it shoxy does get dropped right there and uh, I wonder if they could have decursed that hex right there. Acro actually didn't pull the trigger on his blind. Uh, I feel like uh, it's kind of strange to see that. I expected him to just pull the trigger on the blind and then maybe follow that up with a hex or something. But I think maybe they silenced the make and uh, yeah. they got a hex on um, on the shaman. So uh, either way, they got that uh, cross crowd control set up and were able to capitalize with that kidney shot. But mana was not looking too good there. Yeah, when we look at the replay of this match, Dragonlance Roulette, they were actually kind of on different pages. Like, Valet was attacking the mage, and Acro was attacking the rogue. It ended up almost being like a double kill there, but I wonder <laughs> if that could have been cleaner, or if they kind of intentionally did that to let the, the, the hex sit. Um, but yeah, really, really good pressure for both sides. Kind of surprised at how much damage Bane was able to get out here. They almost got Zank completely out of mana. This is that early ice block in the match, about a minute in. Um, where P-Makers force that defensive. And that's the thing about the Arcane Mage, right? Like the, the Ice Block, you only have one of them, um, and it's got kind of a, a long cooldown. So it just takes a few good setups on the Mage to take him down, but ultimately it was Shoxy that did go down. This is where Acro kind of having to play some serious defense, tricking out of the Kidney Shot, going for the Shadow Step Kick on a P-Make, just trying to extend the game for a little bit longer as they realize they, they have a really good situation here. I mean, Shoxy's got no Trinket, We'll see exactly how this crowd control did set up. It was a full fear into a silence, and this is where Valet is actually going after the mage. Um, do we get the hex? We have the hex. P make could he have decursed it? It's looking like might have been able to just a little bit too late. They had the spirit link totem, too. So I'll say that was a bit of a misplay there by Bane, just dropping the ball there at the very end. But Dragonlands Roulette gonna be happy to kind of take advantage of that. Yeah, most yeah. definitely. Go ahead, Zico. No, I was just going to say, uh, I feel like uh, if they got that decrease a little bit sooner, that spirit link got dropped and uh, they uh, would have stayed alive. It just didn't have enough time to actually tick there. So very, very close game number one. Had they stayed alive though, Zico, I mean, would they have been able to turn it around in their favor? I mean, it seems like kind of Bane, it was just time. It was only a matter of time before they were going to go down. If they had survived that, that play, what would they have done next? Well, Acro had no trinket from that previous uh, setup that we saw, so maybe they could have capitalized on that. Um, I think Smoke Bomb was coming up as well for Shoxy, so maybe they could have gone for something like that. And also Mana was in their favor. So for them, I feel like in general, it was just all about surviving there. But uh, there also was a kind of kill window with that blind. So I'm kind of surprised to see that Acro didn't pull the trigger on it, but maybe he didn't have enough mobility to get the blind and then also get to his target. Uh, so they just opted for having kind of a go for the hero fear. Um, 
So I feel like there was win conditions on both sides. I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, to see uh, kind of similar comps just locked in uh, on, on both ends. Okay. Well, we are seeing Bane play the Arcane Mage event. It's kind of been a while, uh, you know, Arcane historically, we don't really see it in the ADBC too much. What is the current state of them? How do you feel about that spec being played in this matchup? Uh, 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 maybe they just don't really have many other options. I, I feel like for PMAG, this is something, it's like a comfort pick for him. We've seen him mostly mm -hmm. play the Arcane Mage so far uh, in the AWC. So maybe kind of just sticking with his guns, uh, you know, not opting to like re-roll to some of the uh, alternate specializations, just trying to play uh, what he's best at and excel at that. But um, yeah, Arcane, I'm really curious to see how it does this weekend because um, in the cups, it was really, really important for a lot of teams, right? Like it's a really mobile spec. Has a lot of burst. It's got some really good team utility. Um, it is quite strong, but I, I would say Arcane and you know both Fire Mage and Arcane Mage have kind of fallen off a bit. Ross has kind of risen to the top in terms of Mage specs. Um, but yeah, it seemed like he was able to get out some solid damage um, in this particular matchup. And I think the reason why they went to Blade's Edge is try to utilize some of that Mage utility, like the Blast Wave, where they can actually knock people off the edge uh, and maybe give them a little bit of an edge in this matchup. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see how they can do here on Blade's Edge. Bane, now they got about 50 seconds to lock in their composition. There's only three players on this team, and it sounds like, according to Ben, they're kind of playing their comfort pick. So yeah, it's unfortunate when you see a team in a situation where comp's not necessarily working, Zico, but there's just not really much they can change for their comp to make that happen. But, I mean, kind of a pocket pip pick of a map, so I'm interested to see how they do use that and what they plan to do for game number two. Yeah, Blade's Edge, uh, like Ven said, it's a great map for uh, for blast waving people and kind of splitting up the teams, isolating targets, uh, especially if you can get like, kind of in between two players and knock them in opposite directions. You can send a smoke bomb on one of them. And uh, we are going to see the swap here to the Frost Mage. So, uh, Bane, uh, they were kind of debating there whether or not to stick with that Arcane Mage. I kind of like the Frost Mage swap here as well for them. Uh, you know, they tried the Arcane, they tried to go with that Comfort. Now they're going to play a little bit more meta spec. Uh, and I would say both of these teams, honestly, uh, these are not like super, um, you know, common compositions from both sides. Uh, I think this is Dragonlance Roulette. This is what they played the, and had a lot of success with in the Cups. And this is kind of what Bane, well, the RMP with the Arcane was kind of their kind of bread and butter. So uh, I think both teams kind of just leading with their uh, with their Comfort picks. They do have Gelo on the bench for Dragonlance Roulette. Uh, so maybe, you know, if Bane takes this one, we could see a comp swap, we could see a straight up Rogue Mage Mirror, or maybe we could see him get tagged in on that Demon Warlock. Do you think um, uh, Warlock Rogue could be pretty decent as well? Uh, so we might see that uh, in a larger map as well. So there's still a lot of options for uh, Dragon Dragonlance Roulette, but uh, with Bane being a three-man roster, there's not a whole lot of flexibility there. You know, they can swap the Mage back, they could even swap to a Sub Rogue, but uh, that's uh, pretty much it. That's pretty much all they can do, really. Mm. How do you how do you feel like the synergy between Rogue and Frost Mage compares then if they were playing Arcane instead? Well, I think Arcane was more about like we saw it a couple of times. They try to uh, kind of isolate a target and try to burst it down. With Frost, I think you can do a little bit more. Uh, just uh, try to do damage, slow down everybody, stop setups, and just have high overall damage. Because with Frost, it can be a little bit annoying uh, sometimes when you try to go for those setups. Uh, if uh, Oli is stacked, for example, or sorry, if uh, Zhang is stacked with, the, for example, Vilay and you're going after Vilay, uh, well, pretty much every mage plays with Splitting Eyes. And Splitting Eyes actually targets uh, Polymorph targets. So uh, what it does is uh, when you cast an Ice Lance, it hits the person that you're casting it on and the nearest targets next to it. Uh, so that will actually break uh, crowd control. So sometimes you can't actually use like your main damage ability. Um, there's also different uh, specs for Mage. Uh, we'll see what PMAG decides to go with. You know, he can play with Glacial build. He can play with just like more Cleave, Iceland spammy build. Or he can go for uh, the Frostbolt uh, turret build that I know Ven really likes. Um, so there, there's some options even within Frost that he could go for. Mm. Why do you why you've been playing that one a lot, Ben? Ah, uh, just it's it's good. I mean, I, I feel like Frostmate is kind of in a it's in a good spot right now. Where, like Zico said, it's got a lot of different viable builds. You can even drop the splitting eyes if you want, if they want to try to just go for, you know, more isolated damage. Um, you know, maybe go after the Shadow Priest and actually try to land crowd control on the Shaman. I feel like that's not going to play that way. 
I feel like the strength of like an assassination rogue and a frost mage together is going to be just kind of get pressure all over the place. You know, drop your orbs, get your ice lances out. If you can sit there and turret frost bolts, you're going to be able to get big shatter combos. Um, you know, those those frost bolts can hit super hard if you have icy veins and it's kind of ramped up. So overall, I think their damage is going to be a lot higher, and they're not going to have to kind of rely on getting that crowd control because it, it can be difficult. Um, Traditionally, uh, as a mage, you know, getting reliable polymorphs against Shadow Priest Shaman is just not easy. It's just too difficult to get the CC on the Shaman and also cover the Shadow Priest before he can just instantly mass the spell it off. Um, so I think they're going to have to go for more of like a damage build. And what I would like to see them do is uh, make sure they're getting really good blast waves. Um, I'd also like to see the Shaman play um with the lightning shield so he can unleash shield and knock people off the edge and also play thunderstorm so i, I think if they kind of abuse the z access on this map they use the multiple knocks that the shaman has the knock that the mage has uh they can really disrupt what dragon lens roulette wants to do in this match and kind of just pump out as much damage as possible so i think that's going to be like the main line of play here for bane all right let's see if they can pull it out we are heading into game number two here on blades edge dragon lands up 1-0 Yep, Dragonlance Roulette up 1-0 here against Bane. Let's see if we can uh, tie up that score on the side of Bane or if this is going to be uh, an all-out Dragonlance Roulette show. Uh, gates are open, and we are going to see here what did they decide to do in the opener. Both rogues actually moving up there. Oh, they might find each other right there. If they both just took one more step towards the middle there, I think they actually would have ran into each other. But p actually just randomly Nova's acro out. They get a sap onto Zank, and uh, they're going to be opening up onto Shark. So there's that Frozen Orb immediately being dropped here, uh, trying to get a little bit of cleave pressure coming out. Delay actually deafing uh, a Hex right there from Ollie. And uh, already, decent amount of pressure. Ring of Fire coming out as well, and p is just playing all-out cleave build here. He just wants to do as much damage as possible onto everything and uh, try to maybe win the game on mana. They did have that mana lead last time around, uh, but it was Dragonlance Roulette kind of finding a target and isolating. And I think p is playing that Frostbolt build right there as well. If you just saw Acro lose about half his HP there from one bolt. Yeah, it's really solid right now. There's a beautiful knock there by p as well, but he's in a little bit of trouble having to jump off the side. Acro's all over him right now, and that is going to be the first ice block. So... Getting that crowd control on Ollie. p is kind of just isolated, left alone. Now going for some cleave once again. And the thing is, uh, although p has a lot of cleave damage on that Frost Mage, um, this is it's, this is more of like a like a solo shuffle strategy, you know? I, I feel like the rest of Shaman <laughs> is quite good at dealing with this early cleave until dampening kind of kicks in uh, with some of the buffs they have to Healing Stream Totem and how powerful Riptide is right now. I feel like Dragonlands Roulette should be able to survive kind of this consistent damage. And I think the isolated setups coming in from Dragonlands Roulette onto P Make are going to be absolutely devastating. We have a full kitty shot here on a P Make right now as they continue to make a push. A beautiful Ooh. knock there by Zangd. And that's the thing. This map is a double edged sword, having both Shaman here with Nox uh, and that Unleashed Shield. Uh, you are never <laughs> safe for the top side of this bridge. Yeah, you gotta constantly watch where you're stepping. And Acro is right now chilling in a Frost Nova into a Ring of Frost here. He actually steps out of it. Kidney shot, smoke bomb onto Shoxy. Big damage coming out here from Acro. I think that was the death mark as well being committed. He gouges up Ollie. Do you have anything to follow it up? Villay is just getting slowed. He's trying to move a, move in there for the fear. He does actually manage to get it. Shoxy's in a lot of trouble here. He might just be able to close it out. Shoxy goes for the vanish, but he doesn't uh, want to trade out the Cloak of Shadows. Ooh, he gets knocked out of that smoke bomb right there. Acro going to be able to sit through that kidney shot without trading his trinket there which is definitely what they wanted there belay with a nice mass spell there onto zank both teams being pressured right now but it is shoxy and p make right now right now on the back foot ollie trying to catch up here pops that uh, spirit walker's grace giving him immunity to uh, kicks and that should allow him to cast and top everybody on his team but that was a pretty close moment here p make still in a lot of trouble here stuck in a kidney shot shoxy is in a disarm huge damage coming in here p make there's a gouge onto ollie and that will be the second ice block forced in barely even three minutes here into the match mm, shoxy could just go down as well forced to trade out the cloak of shadow throws out a blind here onto ollie trying to oh. do what he can but it looks like the spirit link totem is forced to make a trade ollie actually trinketing with like a fraction of a second left on that one that's super unlucky but felt like he had to make that trade but now bane finds himself in a situation where there's no ice blocks there's no trinket cloak evasion there's no trinket link there is nothing for Bane and Dragonlands Roulette is potentially just one setup away from closing out the game. Boy has his instant crowd control ready. He's got the psychic scream. He's got the silence. He's got the psychic core. Everything ready to go. Is he going to be able to find a cheap shot into uh, Garrote? 
coming in from Shoxy, shutting down that crowd control oh. chain just a little bit. But I think P-Make, I think it's just done for him at this point. Silence on Ollie. P-Make, can he actually survive 1% health? There's oh. no way. He might actually do it. Nicely done there by P-Make, but it is not over yet. We've got a gouge here on Ollie. P-Make really struggling to get topped off, and I cannot believe he did not go down, but it might still not be enough. Ollie just doing what he can, but he just unfortunately does not have the healing to keep P-Make alive. This is an absolute miracle, but finally oh. he will get dropped. And once again, good effort there by Bane. Good kiting there by P-Make at the end, trying to survive that basically unli unlivable situation, but almost managed to do it. That was so close at the end. He got that Spirit Walker's Grace back off cooldown and he went for that uh, fake cast into a Spirit Walker's Grace when he came back. If he almost got that heal off. If he got that heal off, uh, that was actually going to be P-Make uh, making it out of that one. But uh, it wasn't looking too good for them uh, in general here, if we're being honest. I think this was the big pressure moment here where they got the second ice block. So P-Make here, probably initially low, all the times, all times back, blinks, and there's that gouge from Acro. That's going to be the ice block. And then I think they blind all here i think it's a dr blind i think they fear him into a half blind and they swap over to shoxy while p is sitting in that ice block and then they dr blind ollie here and then cheap shot him and then he trinkets on the last second there to get that spirit link so in that moment they got every single cooldown from everyone and then here they had that extended cc chain but they started it off with the disarm into the fear into the silence into the gouge that we just saw there and uh, and then here is that those final moments here and Ollie getting that Riptide right there. There's the knock as well coming out. He's trying to buy P make a little bit of time, but Akris is doing so much damage. And here, there's that uh, knock on his heel by Zhang. Really nicely done. And then here he goes for the fake cast. And uh, actually, he gets um, uh, the proc right there. So he almost uh, can top him off. But uh, very, very good offense there coming out from Dragonlance Roulette. Uh, and uh, they had pressure on multiple members. And uh, they kind of took the strategy. Uh, that the, the rogue mage wanted to use and kind of just used it against them. They got the block, they got the rogue CDs, they got the shaman CDs, and then it just kept the, the, the pressure going and never stopped. Mm -hmm. Yep. Then Bane sl slowly whittled down, wasn't able to recover, unfortunately. So they've got one more try here. They can't drop any more games or they are out of this one. Dragonlands Roulette, they're up 2 0. Looks like we're heading to Ash Main's Fall. So quite a bit of a different map as well when you compare it to. Blades Edge, Dragonlands Roulette, not changing their comp, so for sure, not really a surprise there. But I mean, then we're heading to a really large map, so can we guess maybe what Bane has in store for us? Are they going to try the same thing with just more space? What what do we what do we want to see them do? I think that's like the main strength of the Frost Mage, right? Is you can actually keep people snared and uh, try to just play at max distance as possible. I think as soon as you make it a small game and you go to a map with Blades Edge, even with the Nox. Uh, it's just really difficult to actually kite and get away. As that Frost Mage, you want to be playing max distance. If you're playing this kind of cleave build and trying to get as much pressure as possible, you want to make it difficult for Valet to get there. Um, if you're on Blade's Edge, it's quite easy for him to just get those stuns into fears uh, that it's really difficult for your Shaman to actually avoid. So I wouldn't be surprised if they play the exact same composition. Um, they're actually going to be switching. It didn't like the Frost Mage going for the Arcane um, and basically playing kind of a repeat here of game number one. Uh, I'm not sure how this is going to work out for them. I kind of fear for Bane. I feel like Dragonlands Roulette uh, has quite a composition compositional advantage right now. Yeah, I think so. Okay, well, we're going Bane back to that Arcane Mage. Like Ben said, that is the game that they played in the blind on the Grand Arena, and they unfortunately lost that one as well. And this is their last shot. So, uh, I don't know, a bit, a bit of a risky move, Zika. What do you think? Would it have been a, better in your mind if they had stayed with Frost? No, nah, I think the Arcane game looked way better. Uh, it came down okay. to like a couple of small things. They had a decent advantage uh, in game number one. I saw kind of like a clear win condition for them at least. Uh, whereas the, the game on Blade's Edge, which also could be the map, um, just looked like a complete stomp. Uh, I actually do wonder why they decided to go with a small map because I feel like if they're going to win, it's more of a dampening strategy that, that has to be implemented for Bane. Uh, and I feel like uh, going on a small map is just exactly what Belay wants. He's not being targeted, and he can just do whatever he wants, and has a very short distance to kind of travel to get those fears. Um, if he was on that Frost Mage, we saw him actually slowing down Belay go when he was going for those fears, but when you're on the bridge and uh, you know your shaman has to kind of run to you and heal you there's not a lot of space for him to kind of move around and still get those heals out so i think that's why we also saw them swap map here so 
I think the map is going to do, uh, you know, a lot better for Bane. And also the comp will probably do better. But this is a match point here for Bane. If they lose here, they are completely out of the gauntlet. And Dragonlance Roulette will play um, against uh, the next seed here in the tournament. Yeah, well, let's see. It's going to be a long day for either one of these teams if they are going to make it. Dragonlands Roulette, just one away from completely eliminating Bane here from the tournament. Got a cheap shot on the as they look to get aggressive very early on. Pimek getting Garot silenced. Nicely done there by Ollie, backing him up a little bit with that Lightning Lasso as they make a swap here onto Acro. Lightning Lasso into Kidney Shot. Nicely done. Getting some serious pressure here onto Acro, but looks like he will be okay. Zank throwing out some serious heals. Belay right now going for that damage, trying to close the distance. Wants to get on top of Ollie. There's the full blind. Is he going to make the trade? Is he going to trinket? Acro, can he find the sap? Or is Valet going to follow it up? Nice dragons right there. The DR Fear comes in. Acro right now goes for the gouge into the Psychic Core. A little bit of an overlap, but there's just so much pressure. Shoxi might have to make a trade. Ollie with his Ascendants, trying to cover some Shred healing right now, but this damage from P-Make is quite immense, just throwing out the Arcane Blast with that Precognition, gets shut down by a Kidney Shot. Both these teams are stabilized. Yeah, Ollie uh, did have to trade out his Trinket right there in that exchange, so wanted to greet it a little bit, but in the end, they were able to snag that cooldown, and uh, in addition to that, also... Uh, able to get he makes trinket here so not a bad opener so far and here comes the counter go lightning last week the sheep onto the lay blind into ring of frost actually into sap there onto zank so really good combo so far they follow up with the smoke bomb and uh, they don't have too much damage though with all this crowd control i feel like acro just kind of turned that around and uh, all of a sudden it's shocksy here in, on the back foot huge pressure coming out and that is going to be a defensive overlap right there the cloak of shadows evasion trading out for shocksy and ollie also trading out that spirit link totem and uh, you know dragonlance roulette here getting through the checklist here and that was also i would say on bane's go so that is just disastrous for bane right now uh, basically doing a perfect setup there getting nothing with their blind and in return actually having to use their last couple of cooldowns the rogue is now a very exposed target they can get some uh, cc here onto olic that might just be enough to uh, kind of push them over the edge well, let's see what they can get done. Dampening still stable here at 10%. Kidney shot right now onto Acro. Lightning Lasso on Valet. I like that. Use the Lightning Lasso to kind of cover the Polymorphs if they can. Uh, I think that's one thing that Bane could definitely do here uh, and just make it so that those full sheeps do land on Zank. So you could do like a Lightning Lasso on Valet. Uh, I'll table this discussion. P-Make taking a lot of damage. That's going to be the Ice Block. Uh, but I was talking about these setups. I mean, they could do a Lightning Lasso on Valet, Dragon's Best Sheep on Zank, Kidney Shot on Acro, and that might be something that Bane can consistently pull off to get some damage, but I don't know if they're going to have time for that. Shoxi is just incredibly low. Big heal coming in from Ollie. That Ascendance should be enough to keep his team alive. Uh, but this is dangerous. Dragonlands Roulette, they have a lot of momentum right now. They still have a lot of cooldowns to kind of work with. They've got that Void Shift that hasn't even been traded out in a single game, and Lay on that Shadow Priest, all this team utility he's able to bring is just doing work for his team. A full blind on Ollie once again. And remember, P-Make, that Ice Block is not up for another four minutes. So they're always just one kind of good setup away from taking down uh, this mage. Let's see if Dragonlands Roulette can do it. Yeah, that was a really good shutdown, though, by Shoxi. Acro went for the blind there onto Ollie, and Shoxi immediately pulled the trigger on that Shadow Step Kidney, but here comes damage. p actually trinketing out of that Kidney Shot. More crowd control here onto Ollie. He doesn't have his Spirit Link Totem. He did have to use his uh, Racial there, I do believe, on that Silence. Uh, or might have, uh, I think it was his uh, Racial. Acro now taking a decent amount of damage here as well. Needs to be careful. He's uh, line of sighting Zank there a little bit, but will be able to duck back into the Earthen Wall Totem here and should be okay with that. Now another Kidney Shot onto p -Mek. There's a Siphon down as well, so decent pressure coming out here. They should be able to kill off that Siphon. Actually taking a lot of damage there thanks to that powered shield that Valet put on it. And uh, once again, it is going to be p -Mek here in trouble. And like you said, Maruki, no um, Ice Block for three minutes. Acro, though, in a lot of trouble here. Zanx is in a Polymorph. Can they follow up the chain? Doesn't look like it. Acro will be able to slip away there. And once again, it's going to be all about Valet here. If Valet is slowly moving towards Oli, if he can get that crowd control onto Oli with that disarm into that fear, that should be lights out here for PMEC potentially. Or they could maybe just win on mana. Another setup coming out though. Acro is going to trinket, going to counter pressure Shoxi here. Shoxi taking a lot of damage. Acro turning out the evasion. And there's the psychic horror, the disarm into the full fear. Shoxi might just go down here. He's got nothing. He does manage to get a vanish off right there. Where I, maybe a shadow meld actually. But PMEC is just going 
getting swapped through here. Smoke bomb coming out. He blinks out of it. Big damage coming out still. Dragon's Breath defensively coming out. Oh, he has the Spirit Link totem. He might need to pull the trigger, but he is able to top them off here with another Ascendance. And uh, again, it's just Bane trying to stay alive here. Getting a little bit of pressure there onto Akron. They did get his trinket, so that could be an opening. Ooh, they got the Void Shift. Don't choke oh. it. They do it. They managed to get it off. Lay right at the finish line. That was such a close call. Zank needs to play catch up, but Shoxy has maybe run out of time. Spirit Link Totem drops on the blind, but I think this is going to be a double kill here for Dragonlands Roulette. Is there any follow-up crowd control? The Psychic Horror comes in from Belay as he's looking to close out the game and advance in the gauntlet. He managed to do it. Dragonlands Roulette looking really good in the series, but how far can this composition bring them? I feel like Bane is probably going to be one of their easier matchups here today. Uh, they got a lot of work <laughs> cut out for them if they want to continue here in this gauntlet. That was crazy. They almost took Acro down there. Uh, as I was saying, you know, yeah, they got his trinket. This could be an opening. And then, boom, the, the Arcane Mage comes in and gets some big hits right there. But uh, it wasn't enough. And uh, I think it's the Dragonlance Roulette. I felt like they got better and better and better throughout the series. The first game looked a little bit sketchy. Second game looked a lot more convincing. And this game, they also had great pressure. I think this is the moment here onto Acro, actually, where he almost just gets dropped. So they get a Ring of Frost and uh, a Sheep. And then they Kidney Shot, p -make. They silence Olic out of that setup as well. And this is where Olic almost uh, goes down as well he blinks out of the smoke bomb shoxy uh, did use his vanish right there and then here uh, they just kind of pop off on to acro get a decent amount of damage onto him and uh, acro right there almost going down there drops to about one percent uh, almost having a she death proc right there but delay quick with the with the trigger there on that void shift and then uh, that spirit link totem for ollie really didn't do much actually did it break the blind here i was wondering what happened to the blind it looked like it broke from something right there um not exactly sure if it maybe was the spirit link that broke it um but yeah and not enough he sat through the blind most of it anyway and then delay again uh, quick with the follow-up there getting the fear getting the you know uh, the re-cc and uh, Dragonlance Roulette going to continue uh, fighting here in the gauntlet. Yep, they are going to be moving on to face off against the Fiends up next, but pretty convincing game for them, 3-0. Now, Ven, you did mention that you want to, you think they're going to need to improve a little bit. I mean, what do they want to capitalize before they move into that next series in your mind? Well, I don't think they played bad. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah. So I feel like Dragonlands Roulette, they have like some of the easier matchups at the beginning, right? They go into Bane, who's mostly like a rogue mage team. And then they're going to be going up against the Fiends, um, which might be playing like more kind of meta compositions. We'll have to see. Or maybe they'll just be kind of sticking with that same thing, that Thug Cleave that they're kind of known for. So um, I would say the main threats to a team like Dragonlands Roulette is going to be that Retribution Paladin. And I think for any team to convince me that they're going to make it into the top four, they have to have an answer for that because that is going to be like kind of the final boss in terms of composition. Um, so I'm curious to see what Dragonlance Roulette does have prepared. Maybe like a Shadow Priest Demonology Warlock could be pretty good. Um, uh, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Yeah, we certainly will. Uh, the Fiends, like we said, that is the that is the team that's up next. Very strong team as well. If you guys were watching the previous AWC season in the Cups that they did play against. So, uh, Zico, who do you feel like? Which team comes out of this in your mind? It's a tough one to call, but um, I think Dragonlance Roulette uh, probably a little bit favored here. I feel like at least I've seen Zankt uh, kind of pull out the rest of Shaman. And uh, Zankt, you know, he looked great on the Druid uh, kind of during the season. And, uh, you know, today he looked great on the rest of Shaman as well. He got them the game-winning Hex in game number one. He got them the game-winning Knock as well on um, uh, Blade's Edge. And I feel like he did a great job kind of just keeping his team alive and aggressive uh, in this third game as well. So he's been a very impressive player. Um, and uh, having him on that rest of Shaman is going to be absolutely huge for Dragonlance Roulette. Now, my question is, of course, Zenlin. Uh, you know, I have a lot of love for the guy. He is uh, probably the best Holy Priest that you could ever, you know, see. But has he been practicing the rest of Shaman? Because I think if he comes in to a Shaman fight with a Holy Priest, I'm just not sure how that's going to go for him. All right, well, time can only tell. We are going to head to a quick break. When we come back, the Fiends facing off against Dragon Dragonlands Roulette up next.
Hello everyone and welcome back. If you're just now tuning in, we are in the gauntlet in the European region. We just saw the first match of the day. Dragonlands Roulette 3-0 versus Bane. Bane is now out. Dragonlands Roulette facing off now against the Fiend as we the Fiends as we move deeper into this gauntlet bracket, Sid. Yeah, the Fiends, this team is a miracle maker to me uh, throughout the cup stage. Like, they're playing Holy Priest, Sub Rogue, Survival Hunter, the only team really playing this combination of specs and even, you know, most of those specs, the only Survival Hunter, the only Holy Priest. So for me, I think they're probably going to stick to that composition and just try and make it work. And it would be a miracle for them uh, to, to make it through this bracket alive, in, in my opinion here. Not that they don't uh, have the skill to do it, but with the comps that they've brought or the comp that they've brought to this competition, it, it would be very tough for them, but perhaps there is a miracle for them just because they are the miracle makers. So, so you think Dragonlands Roulette is slated to win this one then, uh, Sid? I would think so. Uh, the Fiends really struggled with kind of Shadow Priest comps, let alone Shadow Priest and Shaman together, because Shadow Priest Shaman is a really good anti-hunter um, type of combo. So. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be really tough for them. I, I don't know how they're going to make it through this. I feel like they're going to just get out attritioned by the Shadow Priest Shaman team. All right. Yeah, and, you know, Dragonlands Roulette, they did have a really good series in that first round. It was 3-0, so they're going to be kind of riding that high a little bit, Ven. Momentum being really important in these kinds of situations. So uh, I know we heard your thoughts a little bit before the break, but, I mean, what can the Fiends do then? Uh, like, what do you want to see them make in terms of plays if they want any hope here? against Dragonlands Roulette. I think the Fiends could actually win against Dragonlands Roulette. I just feel like the next two bosses are where these teams are going to be really tested. But in this particular matchup, I, I do feel like the Fiends, if they do decide to go with that Thug Cleave, you know, the Survival Hunter with the Subtlety Rogue and Holy Priest, I think they have a shot. Um, Sid's right, the Shadow Priest Ro or sorry, the Shadow Priest Shaman is a difficult composition. Um, you have kind of a lot of disruption. The Shadow Priest Master Spell is really good in the Hunter Traps, but we've seen some absolutely insane swaps um, and setups coming in from the Fiends. And I feel like a lot of teams might be out of practice against the Subtlety Rogue. Like, you really don't fight <laughs> rogues that often on the ladder right now. So the Fiends might be able to come in with some surprises, and they are going to lead with their best composition, oh, which is something that. you love to see. I was wondering if Gelu is going to step in on Demonology Warlock just to make this even more annoying. Demonology Warlock is like a hard counter to Subtlety Rogue because the pet can stun the rogue when the when your allies are crowd controlled. So let's see if the fiends can penetrate throughout all this defense. They're starting with an opener onto the healer, Zanked. Bursting him down quite low as he trades out Astral Shift, but they don't get his medallion. They might look to blind him, make a swap to somebody else and bait his trinket, maybe swap back later. The Shaman is definitely going to be the easiest target to kill before dampening, but also the riskiest. Look at this. They're getting punished for that push. Rat down at 30%. Zen caught into a fear at the moment. Vic makes feign deathing off the dots, trying to stay ahead of the damage here, but now getting feared himself. Zen into a silence. Rat might have to cloak here. Is he going to trade it in time? 10%. He's dying through cloak to the pets. He pops evasion. He's got to face those fell guards, dodge the attacks. Zenlin ducking into that angel form to try and get his team back into the fight. Here comes a scatter onto Zank into a stun. They're swapping onto Gelu, trying to blast him down. Can they take him out here? It doesn't look like they've got any more crowd control. Gelu should recover on this counter assault, and now Rat is basically left with nothing. And he's got no trinket as well. So these next few setups that do come in, he gets stunned or feared away. He's not going to have a way out. Beautiful Howl Terror there by Gelu. Opting to play that talent over the Mortal Coil to kind of disrupt these Hunter setups. Nicely done. And as the Fiends, you don't want to kind of be on the back foot in this matchup. But you kind of have no choice. I mean, if they do manage to get the crowd control here on his end, Rat could be in a lot of trouble. There's basically no defense but a Vanish. They're going after Zanked, it looks like. No, just going for a cheap shot. Not really a great setup here. They get the kitty shot on the Gelu, but he's going to immediately use that Dark Bargain. And that does absorb this entire attack. And the Fiends, surprisingly, are still doing pretty well on mana. So... Zenelin, at least in that regard, is doing well. He's still got his trinket. So the Fiends are definitely not out of this one yet. All right, the Fiends, you guys need to make a miracle here in this current meta. Just odd stacked against them, playing these off-meta misfit specs to survive under the Holy Priest, trying to bring them all together and make it work. But a triple Shadow Fury out from Gelu might end it here into an Axe Toss as Rat dips low. Will the Guardian Angel be enough for Rat to survive? Zen picks him up with a pair of Mending Scatter onto Valet into a full fear, trying to get the Shadow Priest out of the fight, but Zanked immediately removing that with the Tremor Totem. Now repositioning Zen, trying to dispel off dots, stay ahead of the damage. They have been penetrating through the defense of Gelu, though, surprisingly. 
Gelly getting his unending resolve. They need to survive a bit longer. Zen actually gets interrupted by Gelly. He can't heal into a stun. His teammates are rotting down to the Shadow Priest pressure. Valet is pushing forward on top of them. Zen dispels dots, reapplied immediately by that Shadow Crash. They gouge up Valet. They're trying to stall the damage, but if you stack up against the Demonology World, you get Blade Storm down by the pet. This could be a triple kill for Gelly if they stay stacked up. They're swapping to Zen. He trades out the Ray of Hope at 10%. Will it be enough? He gets stunned on his heal. Ray of Hope, is it going to be negative? It's negative, and Zen will go down in a huge, almost triple kill from Dragonlance Roulette game one. Yeah, I mean, if you could pick one of the biggest counter comps of the game to Thug Cleave, uh, I, I feel like this has got to be it. You have the Shaman for powerful heals, you have the Shadow Priest for massive spell and disruption, you have the Demonology Warlock for that kind of uh, disruption, as well as just massive cleave damage and pressure. Uh, this is just such a well-crafted composition here by Dragonlance Roulette. And I, I mean, they're looking good. I mean, with the de they got the Demonology Warlock from Gelu. They got zanked on that Resto Shaman. They obviously came prepared here for the Gauntlet. And I think this is going to be a really tough matchup here for Fiends. Uh, even that first setup you saw from Rat a little bit earlier on here, uh, he just got immediately axe tossed on it. So just stunned. And that's kind of the main benefit uh, of having that Demonology Warlock. All of a sudden, you basically have four members of your team that can disrupt Rat. You have the Shaman, the Shadow Priest, the, the Warlock, and his pet, uh, which makes it so tough. Biggest problem right now is look at Dragonlands or Lead. They all have Medallion. Against a Subtlety Rogue, if you're two and a half minutes into the game and all three players still have Medallion so they can break crowd control and then use a cooldown or crowd control and, and stall a kill, like they're so far away from a win. If, if you look at this situation right now, it's just, yeah. they need maybe like five more setups, like two and a half more minutes, they need to stay alive. They've got the mana, surprisingly, like Zen, Zenland's mana was looking good, but if they can't out position the pets, uh, and try and avoid that, avoid stacking up like that, then they are going to get torn apart here. So tough game. They tried to throw a curveball with the first uh, setup going after the Shaman. I do wonder maybe if they don't do that, maybe just start with a sap and start immediately on the lock, if that could cut their path a little bit shorter to victory. So just no, no fancy, no fancy strats, straightforward. I don't know if it's necessarily fancy to train the shaman it's kind of just like brute force kind of just like they were hoping that right. he would kind of choke in the opener which i mean to be fair it's tournament play zank is playing on a healer that we haven't seen him play in tournament play so maybe you know go after the shaman see if he chokes if we can get a win that way i i like that they kind of tried to poke that out a little bit here but with the pressure that they got on the gelu immediately after that like they got a cool down every single time they stunned him pretty much it's probably safer to just do the warlock route um, and maybe do shaman if he overextends or something and has no trinket, but don't try and force it because it just let Valet and Gallio make it really hard for the fiends to be stable after that. Mm -hmm. So just too aggressive, just kind of too front loading of of all your resources. It sounds like from from the fiends. Yeah, I mean mostly just targeting. It's just going to be hit and run for them. So move in, do a setup, try and avoid as much damage as possible until you can do the next one. Uh, and then hope your mana stays up that you can survive enough setups to be able to take them out. Um, so this time around, I think Sapping Shaman, maybe like Chastise Fear onto Shadow Priest or something, get the Shadow Priest out of the game as well and isolate the Warlock. Um, you could also maybe kill the pet. I, I do wonder if there is an option, maybe if they're behind the pillar attacking the pet killing it off and then removing the soul link option on the warlock removing the pet stun like if they can actually successfully kill the pet i think that would be the best line but it's it's really tough if zank is paying attention to it and if gelu is protecting it as well pulling it back with the eye of kill rog but there are opportunities when you're running away that i think that they could put, be putting a little bit of damage into the pet Okay, well, let's see if they can uh, utilize any of those strategies, but we're heading into game two here. Dragonlands Roulette up 1-0 versus the Fiends. Yeah, Fiends lock in this composition. This has kind of been their bread and butter. Let's see if they can pull it off. Let's see if they can make it work. Dragonlands Roulette has been looking really solid so far in this gauntlet. They had the answer for their first opponents. It seems like they have the answer for their second opponents, and we'll see potentially how far that they can bring this. They're going to have to do a really solid job of defense, though. The Fiends are going to be looking for any opportunity that they can find in this match. Let's see what they decide to do. They get a stun onto Zanked and a sap onto Valet. They're going for a big, aggressive opener here onto Gelu, but he's just going to Trinket. Trinket Howl of Terror coming in from Gelu with that Dark uh, Bargain. Uh, is going to allow him to survive that opener. And now let's see if they can get any kind of counter pressure. That was Rat's Trinket as well. He trinketed it out of that initial stun. So the next time that Axe Toss is available, Rat is going to have to sit that full. Oh, Gelu's ramping up his army. He's got the Valfi. He's got the Tyrant extending it. Huge Whoa! damage! One shot wonder. Dragonlance Roulette what? up 2 0. Oh. 
What in the world just happened? We're gonna need an instant uh, replay on that one. I mean, did he that was. Pi the tyrant. I actually want to know if he pi'd the tyrant or not. Or did I he feel like was yellow? he even in range of the tyrant? Like, was it actually the tyrant that took I him down? I think it was the tyrant. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was like two bolts of the tyrant. It was a big tyrant. <laughs> that, well, that's the thing about demonology as well. Is the things that are good into demonology are like roots like it feels like you almost need like a root or like you know from a shaman or a moonkin or a druid or a mage something like that to get the pets under control when you have no control for the pets which thug cleave doesn't have any like you are just you are so susceptible to this damage and i'm, I'm curious to see what exactly gelu does here you get this kind of overwhelming damage here onto rat looks like he does get axe tossed so he gets axe tossed gelu is going for the tyrant manages to summon the tyrant let's see how many casts it does get off one. these bolts are hitting hard there's one uh looks like two and he's just deleted i mean that was crazy that had to be a cloak of shadows or something but I i'm surprised at just how fast he was able to take him down all right gelu showing that he can do a lot of damage here uh, i wonder if rat regrets trinketing i mean you kind of have to trinket offensively against the demo log that's you the do. problem with the pet is like the pet will just stop your whole go if you don't trinket and then so rat has no trinket in this position it's caught in a stun it's the best setup gelu gets the min max setup like he's got both fell guards out he's got vile fiend out he saved that double blade storm and just he lined every single cooldown up um, to burst all of that right at that one moment. So really well done from Gallo to navigate that strategically, like knowing like, hey, you're going to trinket to kill me. I'm going to save all my offensives, get you in a better position later, and then turn it around on you. Uh, we're going to Enigma Crucible for game number three, and it's looking grim now for the Fiends. Like this is back against the walls. You got to face a Demonology Warlock. This is one of the hardest specs you could fight uh, as a subtlety rogue. Um, Probably is the hardest spec you could fight as a subtlety rogue, actually. And you have to reverse sweep it. This is tough in the yeah. gauntlet for the fiends. Are you guys surprised at all that the fiends hasn't comp swapped at all? Not really. I mean, the fiends throughout the entire gauntlet played one comp, right? Like, oh, sorry, throughout the entire cup phase played one composition. Yeah, I mean, even when it didn't work, <laughs> even when it wasn't working out for them, then teams were running Demonology Warlock into them. Yeah. They never, ever swapped. They just played this one composition. Rat said this is the only composition he plays. This is the only spec he plays. <laughs> Xenolin, this is what he does too, the Holy Priest. I, I, right. I feel like the only one I could maybe see mix it up is Big Mix, but uh, I don't think that's going to happen either. They're kind of just ride or die with this. Let's see if they uh, can make it work here because Dragonlance Roulette made quick work of them in that game number two. Ooh, Rat pre-evasions the Axe Toss, so he doesn't have to trinket the first stun. That was actually a really good play on his part. You don't need evasion for anything else, so using that allows him to keep his trinket, and he gets to stay offensive, and they got Gelu's trinket. So this is the same opener, except Rat stays one cooldown ahead. So that was a nice heads-up play on his part here on the Subtlety Rogue. Uh, Gelu's getting the Vile Fiend out. He's not going for the Tyrant, though. He's just trying to build up some more Soul Shards. Maybe get some Imps out. He sees Rat and Bic Mix behind the pillar. It's not the best opportunity to send too many cooldowns at the moment here. But they're stacked up. Here comes an offensive double Axe Toss play from Gelu. Is he summoning in the Tyrant as the Bladestorm's rolling over? Rat's just going to vanish away from the fight uh, and avoid this engagement. But I still don't see the Tyrant. I don't know. Oh, there's the Tyrant. So it is out. They're going to stun Gelu. They trap up the Shaman. They fear the Priest. Excellent setup here by the Fiends. But they're only getting the Dark Pack. They're only getting the Shield. They're going for the blind they need to get shaman trinket on this setup if they don't get shaman trinket on this setup i'm not sure how they're going to win they go for a cheap shot to try and get it can they get it they don't ascendance comes through for zank big heels his team is topped off now rat is on the back foot trying to retreat but he can't line aside zen in that angel form zen's trying to reposition towards the right side but rat gets caught in a stun here comes the vile fiend again summoned in from gallo hannah goldan after hannah goldan rat is on the run line of siding on this big pillar and trying to get ready for the next setup. They might be able to do something. I don't think he's running smoke bomb. Maybe a shadowy duel. They get the unending resolve. They might be able to do a shadowy duel secret technique one shot with blades in 30 seconds if they can live here uh, onto Gelu. Yeah, the only thing is Zank, he needs to stay close to Gelu so he can actually get that trinket spirit link off. So if you get the spirit link totem, it actually does go through the shadowy duel. That is the only option here for Dragonlance Roulette. Gelu needs to not make a mistake. He needs to not get too far from a shaman or it could be lights out. Rat has a lot of damage available to him in just a few short seconds, about 10 seconds here. They could go for an all in. Let's see what they can do. Valet. Uh, playing very aggressive right now. The triple Shadow Fury does come in. They really want to push the pace. They do not want to make it comfy here for the Fiends. They do not want to allow them to get that set up. I like the way Valet is playing this, playing the really aggressive Wizard uh, in this matchup, just keeping up the pressure. He knows he's not really going to be a they target. Dark -packed. It makes it not easy for them to actually take him down. Why did he Dark Pact? Gelo just dark threw his shield. 
He doesn't have it for 20 seconds now. If Rat can actually get to his target, he's just dying to pets behind the pillar right now. Mindflay ticking on him. He evasions, trying to dodge the pets, but he's going for the kill. It's match point. Rat uses Cloak of Shadows. He's got to go for the kill right now. It's do or die for the Fiends. Can they take out Gelu? They need the most damage ever right now. Gelu ports back behind the pillar, away from the fight. Zen rolls forward. He's in position to get a Psychic Scream. And this looks like he's going to be able to connect it, though. Gelu repositioning. Gets his Dark Pact again. Goes for that Grimmar Felguard stun on the Big Mix, slowing down his pressure. Zank knocks Rat away. Zen's going for a Mind Games. Gets interrupted. Goes for a Holy Fire. Gets line of sighted. Earthen Wall Totem is down, protecting Gelu, Rat, and Big Mix. They need to retreat away. They need to avoid this fight as long as possible. Power Infusion is up. They're swapping to Zen. He's in midfield. He's getting taken out. He trades out the Guardian Angel and immediately goes into the Angel form as well on top of that. Just want, want to throw the game. It's match point. He's giving it his all in this position, but he's still susceptible to a swap. Gelu ports back behind the pillar into a good position. Rat's on the run. Pets are chasing him down. Big Mix repositions, but Rat, he's all alone. He might need to vanish here on this pillar. He's completely by himself. Gelu summoning in the Vile Fiend, trying to keep the pet pressure up behind the pillar. Valet just free casting right now in midfield, having a field day at the moment. Yeah, he's doing a really good job. Valet is going to have to play defense for his team. There's no trinket on Gelu. There's no trinket on Zank. The only one that can save Gelu here is going to be Valet with the trinket void shift. Does not want to mess around. He actually goes for the trinket, but he gets scattered on it. Now Gelu's all alone. He's isolated. This is a bit dangerous. And they actually take him down. Do they have the damage cheap shot here onto Zank? What are they going to do? Beautiful Howl Terror coming in from Gelu, and it looks like he should be able to survive. Zen almost completely tapped on mana. Rat has no cooldowns left. He goes for the Smoke Bomb. A bit defensive there. He realizes he is in so much trouble. There's no vanishes. There's no nothing. He cannot escape at this point. There's a Void Shift here for Zen. He might have to trade it out, but the pressure here from Dragonlands Roulette is completely overwhelming. But a Kitty Shot here on the Valet. It's a bit of a defensive setup. Maybe they can get Dispersion and keep themselves in the game, but... One it's thing's over. for sure, the Fiends does not have a lot of time here left. I don't know how they're going to pull this off. Gelu's got his Trinket coming back up. He's got his Unending Resolve coming back up. They still have Dispersion, still have Void Shift. They still have Spirit Link. Like, they would need the most insane amount of damage ever to win right now with nothing left. Cloak of Shadows comes through. They Void Swap. Zen's low now. He needs a line of sight. He fears the Shadow Priest. They're trying to go for the oh, kill. It's a Miracle Swap on his Zank. Can they pull it off? It's match point. They're so close, but they get denied. Astral Shift blocks the kill. And now Zenlin has a sliver of mana and about to be a sliver of health as he is stunned up and getting swapped to into another stun. Do they have a silence out of this? Doesn't look like it oh there's the silence his desperate prayer gonna be enough for zen he's living on a prayer trades at the ray of hope trying to pause the damage and recover in this position give his team any sort of opportunities with those opportunities are just slipping away zank's trinkets coming up in eight seconds they still have void shift they're trying to go for it with a freezing trap but it's on dr can they take him out in a dr cheap shot he's down to half but the peels are coming in are they gonna be able to finish him zank is getting low void he needs to link he needs to link oh my god the link comes out at the last possible second zenlin mass dispelling the dots in angel form trying to do whatever Whatever he can with absolutely nothing left on match point can he do it for his team he gets stunned up he can't heal rat is trying to peel with cheap shot kicks and scatters onto gello running for his life right now at 30 percent but zen is still crowd controlled he has cheat death available that's the last cooldown for him they've got a freezing trap in their back pocket and it seems like killing the shaman is going to be their only option right now yeah, they have the voice shift, though. Valet needs to save his team once again. Rat, can he actually get the setup? He gets gripped over by Zenelin, but they are just all playing so defensive at this point. Gelu ports over, does not want to give them a moment to breathe in the match. There's the stun on Rat. He's going to get dropped. There's a silence on Zen. There is nothing left for this team. The Fiends in desperation. Oh, they just will not fall. Can they actually find the setup? They get the cheap shot here on the Valet. Cheap shot on Zank, but finally... Rat runs out of time, and Dragonlance Roulette, they're on fire here today. 3-0 in their first series, 3-0 in their second series. How far can this team go? We got the Cinderella story going on right now for Dragonlance Roulette. The last place team, the last seed in the gauntlet, just crushing the first two series here, using their entire roster as well. Very impressive to see Zhang, who we had seen pretty much, I think, only playing Resto Druid throughout the cup stage. Uh, be able to pick up Resto Shaman here for this last finale uh, as it's been very important for his team. I, I can only imagine if he was a Druid, this would not have gone uh, nearly as well for his team. So very impressive plays on their part. Really good positioning uh, on Gelu here. Loved the usage of the Axe Sauce every time he was kidney shot to break up the stun chain so that he could port behind the pillar. Positioning in the earthen wall, just setting up a great defense knowing that as the shadow play, it's all about attrition. Love that they saw opportunities like this. If Zen was in the middle of the map, they, this got a lot of cooldowns at this point, a lot of pressure as well so just really good awareness uh, on the parts of dragon lands roulette uh, playing the shadow priest warlock comp they got the shadow priest rogue i think their their wizard comp is going to be 
probably the most important uh, moving forward for the rest of this gauntlet because I am only imagining that Swapsy is eagerly waiting here on, on his Rep Paladin for this next series. The first time we're going to see it, um, and maybe Dragonlance Roulette will be able to beat it uh, with the Shadow Play. I don't know. I'm scared for them. I really am. But uh, I feel like I my kind of prediction for this tournament was Rep Paladins are kind of they're the king right now. But the only thing I, I think that can actually beat them is Warlock. I, I feel like Demonology Warlock is, you know, up there with the Retribution Paladin. So uh, I think as long as you have that prepared, you do have a shot. I think that's likely what we will end up seeing is some sort of Rep Paladin Demonology showdown in this next one. But yeah, just huge shout out to Dragonlands Roulette. And honestly, I got to give a big shout out to the Fiends as well. I think they had a really phenomenal season, although they kind of were just like a one trick with this composition. They played this composition so well. It was an absolute pleasure to get to watch Zan, Rat, and Big Mix uh, with their Thug Cleave in this tournament. They had some really insane series. Yeah, 100%. They were a fun team to watch for sure as they developed in the last couple of cups for the season. But that's going to be the end of them. So long to the Fiends. Well done. Like we said, Dragonlands Roulette moving forward once again. So that's two 3 0 series in a row for this team. So that's a lot of games also uh, with not a lot of breaks. But uh, we can talk about kind of how they're progressing as well in this bracket. They are going to be moving on to face off against Admirals Esports now, and that's going to be yet another uh, series that might be diff more difficult than the last. What do you think, Sid? I mean, Admirals Esports, this is my prediction for them to make it out of the gauntlet. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, just any sort of cleave, like running down Zanked on Shaman. Like, he got attacked by Survival Hunter Sub Rogue. Now get attacked by Rep Paladin Warrior. <laughs> that's that, as a resto Shaman, like, that's your... No getting away. That what is that's like your rite of passage? Is that what it would be as a resto shaman? If you can survive yeah. being trained by Ret Warrior, like then Zanked is an official shaman, official honorary member of the dues. council. I mean, <laughs> honorary <laughs> member of the council. So I, I yeah, that that's going to be the real test um, right now from me for them is can can they survive a train like that? Now they don't. They obviously don't have to. I mean, Jamie is on this roster as well. They, they could. Wizard, if they needed to, Warlock Demo, um, possibly into Shadow Priest Demo, but I, I gotta feel like the Rep Paladin here um, is the right move, at least on the smaller maps. But I could see possibly on larger maps um, them breaking something else out as well. Yeah, that could be interesting. Well, we uh, will certainly find out soon enough. We're gonna head to yet another break when we come back. It's Admirals Esports versus Dragonlands Roulette up next.
everybody and welcome back. We are back here on the desk. We're in our third series of the day. We have seen Dragonlands Roulette do two three O series in a row. This team is absolutely on fire, Zico, but Admiral Z Esports may just be their first wall that they end up hitting today. Yeah, this is the first uh, earthen wall, if you will. Uh, yeah. We got Admiral Esports. Uh, they, you know, this is a team. This is definitely a team. They got Blizzo. <laughs> Loves playing Warrior. Great at it. They also have Swapsy. Loves playing Red Paladin. Also happens to be great at it. And you can see the the squad right here. You can follow them on socials. You can follow them on Twitch. Uh, not sure actually if any one of them is streaming right now, but uh, there's an easy way to find out. You just go to those links and uh, hit the follow button and uh, let us know if they are. Um, but yeah, this is a, a, a well-rounded team. And... Um, I suspect we might see some uh, type of, uh, well, they have demo locks as well. They could go demo lock Ellie, but I suspect we're going to see some warrior red paladin. The first red paladin of today, uh, I believe, is going to be Swapsy. That's, uh, that's a safe prediction from me. Okay, yeah. I was wondering if we were going to see red paladin today. I was getting a little worried there. <laughs> uh but yeah no let's uh yeah i'm excited to see what we see here in this in this blind pick i think from dragonlands roulette especially just see how they are going to come at this team admirals esports this is the first um red paladin that they're going to have to face today so i mean this is somewhat of a new thing sid that red paladins have been dominating this uh, you know the bracket or the ladder how much practice do you feel like these teams do have against comps like this uh, I mean, Swapsy would be the most practiced and the most versed, mm -hmm. I think, on Red Paladin just because he's kind of been that hybrid melee specialist, uh, you know, getting BlizzCon wins on Enhancement Shaman, has a very similar play style, support, heal your teammates, use your utility to break crowd control, kind of a similar vibe. So I do think that Swapsy is probably the most polished um, out of all the teams that could possibly play it for this weekend in the European region, uh, whereas other teams... Europe is really just dominated by rogue players. So I think it's mm. not surprising that we saw rogues so much throughout the first two series. And it seems like those teams didn't prepare anything new for what has changed. They were just hoping that what they had previously uh, was going to be enough. And it looks like it's not. Um, you're going to need to be, I think, bringing in at least a Demonology Warlock or a Rep Paladin um, throughout these series. If, so if somebody else manages to scrape through without one of those specializations, it would be kind of like a complete curveball um, against the meta at the moment here, but we're, we're setting up in the Grand Arena. Dragonlands Roulette, they played game after game here. Um, the Fiends almost taking out Zank in that last round really close, so they're definitely feeling the pressure, but they're also warmed up, so Admiral's Esports yeah. might be coming into this a little bit cold, uh, and we saw how fast Gelu took out uh, Rat with that burst damage with the Tyrant, so if, if they're not ready to go here, it could be an opportunity for Dragonlands Roulette. Yeah, we'll see if Admirals Esports is kind of on their toes as we head into game number one here. Dragon Dragonlands Roulette coming off of a, a, a two 3 0 victories in a row. So we'll see game number one, the Grand Arena. All right, let's see what is going to happen here. What are we going to see in the blind? I do believe we're going to see Gallo tagged in here on the Demo Warlock. Now, the question is will they take in Acro? Will they take in Villay? Um, probably some kind of uh, double wizard comp. Maybe they even have something, some super secret sauce that they are, uh, you know, saving for this particular matchup. Uh, because, you know, if, you're, if you are doing a Lance Roulette and you want to make a deep run here, you really have to think about every single one of these teams. Um, you know, the first two games, you kind of know what you're running into with the Rogue Mage, uh, kind of one trick. You kind of know the Fiends most likely are just going to be running the, the same thing with that Hunter and uh, with that Rogue. So uh, those two are kind of more easy to figure out what you're running into. With Admiral Esports, it's a little bit more difficult because they have, you know, a wide arsenal of comps. They could be playing, you know, Wizards with the Warlock. They could be playing, uh, you know, LA comp. They could be playing with uh, that Red Warrior as well. So uh, you really have to be prepared for everything. And um, we'll see if Dragonlance Roulette have kind of made that uh, homework here for this game number one. 
All right, the final the final boss for them really here. Team Who is the next one, but I feel like this one is like the the really scary one because this is the the main rep paladin team um, of the lower bracket, and it's got such big names on it. Like I would not want to be facing Swapsy and Blizzo on the ladder as a resto shaman. Like that just sounds terrifying. Um, <laughs> that that deadly duo. So if they manage to pull this off, it would be very impressive to say the least. And they are locking in the rep paladin yeah. warrior. Next will be on a fist. Sweeper. Gelu throws a curveball. He's going on a mage. They're playing a frost mage shadow priest. This used to be a really good counter into rep paladins. Is it still going to be <laughs> Zico? That is a great question here. We're going to see uh, the return of the god comp because we got, also got Zanked on that restoration druid. He does not want to be uh, kind of receiving his, his uh, badge of, uh, yeah. of honor for the Shaman Council right now. He's going to remain here in Moonglade and uh, represent on that druid. And we'll see. I mean, they're going to have a lot of crowd control. And I do believe that, uh, you know, one of the effective ways of dealing with that red button is to just spam crowd control them. Let's see what they decide to do here. And Zank uh, already going for that rakes down here onto Blizzard. They're actually going to go after Swapsy here on that red and uh, already getting crowd control here on the Mistweaver, that is one of the weaknesses here for the Mistweaver. Already trading out that life cocoon and that uh, blessing of sanctuary. I do believe from Swapsy is what actually took next out of that fear. So, not a bad opener, but now Belay has to deal with the pressure here of the Fist Weaver, of the Blade Storm, of the Wings, all the damage coming in here from Admiral Esports. And uh, they have found their target here, Sid. Yeah, I think triple Psychic Scream is going to be what they need to set up on into Polymorph on the Mistweaver, but it looks like they're swapping to the Mage. Um, Swapsy still dipping low here. Siphon's up. Blizzard needs to kill that Siphon. Swapsy line of sights it at the Pillar. They go after Zanked, actually. Zanked is just getting cranked Whoa. next into a Polymorph. Is he going to stabilize? They could take out Swapsy here. Mind Game's getting channeled by Valet into a Void Torrent, getting out maximum damage into a Cyclone. They need to get Divine Shield, but they're not finding it. Was that... Perhaps a lay, no, not even a lay on hands. Swapsy going to stabilize. Valet now in trouble. Look at this damage incoming. Just all three members of Admiral's Esports dogpiling him. They're going to get dispersion immediately with that. There's no Iron Bark to fall back on, but Gelu is free casting. Uh. He almost takes out Swapsy by himself. Big Heal comes in onto Swapsy, but next is into a Polymorph. They're repositioning, still trying to take out Swapsy, but here comes Avenging Wrath. There's nothing for Valet right now. He's going for the Shield of Vengeance. They're crushing him. Can Zank heal the damage? They need to crowd control. They get a double Psychic Scream. Mind Games onto Swapsy, trying to slow down the damage and set up some counter pressure as well. Sanctuary comes through. I don't think they're killing him through Life Cocoon. Valet needs to try and reposition, but they're just all over him. A fear on a Zanky Trinket's out. He gets incapped on his Trinket. Valet is just getting destroyed. Void shift over to Zanky. He's repositioning. He doesn't want to get swapped to, but massive pressure onto Valet. He just can't go anywhere. Ice block offensive from Gelu trying to stabilize his team, knocking them away with the Dragon's Breath, but now they're swapping to Gelu. Is he going to go down while he's on Hypothermia? They're just absolutely destroying him here right now. Zanky's got nothing for him. Into the Storm Ball, into the Leg Sweep, and that's lights out. Gelu makes a risky gamble to try and save Valet. Ends up costing him his life. And yeah, Admiral's Esports, this is a scary team, man. This, this is the meta. This is the epitome Ooh. of the meta here. And they are scary. But this is why everyone is complaining about Retz right now. This is uh, kind of uh, what, they, what they've been packing. And you can see Swapsy right now doing just insane burst damage. I feel like there was a lot of damage though. You know, we're talking a lot about the red, but look at Swapsy here. Look what Gelo is actually able to do here on that Frost Mage, uh, doing so much damage, actually almost taking Swapsy down. So here, Belay, you know, getting absolutely destroyed, trades out the dispersion, but look at the damage coming out from Gelo as well here, actually getting a lot of pressure right there. You know, these Frost Bolts almost taking him down. Look how low Swapsy is right there. And he does not want to use anything. And of course, next as well, you know, on that monk doing so much damage as well and we're gonna probably see it on the scoreboard later on as well but uh, i think it just comes down to this moment right here so zank trinkets he gets incapped instantly on his trinket that's gonna be the void shift and then here gelu he's kind of feeling the heat here he realizes belay might just go down here so he blinks in gets reflected on the poly blocks the poly goes for triple dragon's breath goes for the blast wave and then now he's like um well i don't have blink i don't have block I don't have Trinket. Spell steals a freedom, but Zank is like, bro, you're stacked up with me. I can't cast regrowths right now. I can't really help you. And uh, Vilay also doesn't have Void Shift, doesn't have anything. So Gelu, he kind of, in a way, had to go in there and try to help, but it's just Blizzo on that warrior. He's so disgusting. I mean, that spell reflect, <laughs> kind of making him ice block, you know, the sheep and making him pick, okay, am I going to block this sheep? Uh, and try to save Valet, or am I going to waste a global for my healer, and then Valet might just go down. Uh, it's just those split-second decisions, and it's Blizzle kind of putting him in that situation. So, yeah, just uh, all-around great effort here from Admiral Esports.
Yep, that's going to leave them with a 1-0. Dragonlands Roulette losing their first game of the day here for their seventh game, and they've locked in their comp and the map already. Uh, looks like Gelu going with the Arcane Mage on Ash means fall as well. Uh, we've got quite a bit more space Whoa. to work with now, Stupatis, so uh, what do we want to see them possibly do? Or Zico, you, you made a noise. Uh, they brought in Akroy as well, so they're going full, you know, cup oh, yeah. mode here, uh, bringing in the, the kind of RMD. This is, the you know, one of their main comps that they played here. It's an interesting change for sure. I, I just think it's going to be tough. Like, if you bring a target that's stationary, like a rogue or a shadow priest, into a Mistweaver monk, the main mechanic you're needing to avoid is Feyline Stomp. So whenever you see that giant, like, sparkly blue tree come out on the ground, you don't want to stand in that against the Mistweaver. But if you're stationary like a shadow priest, you're kind of just stuck in it, and it just gets so much extra damage out for the for the Fistweaver monk. So I think the rogue is going to have the same problem, where it's just tough for him to move around, especially as Assassination um I, I, maybe a subtlety rogue and kill the misweaver with like cross cc on the red or something but you've got to you've got to cross cc all three players if you're going to win with cross cc because warrior will intervene storm bolt rep paladin will sanctuary fist weaver monk will fist weave um and, and be able to recover so I, I don't like this i think what they're hoping to do is like drag them around the map and kind of just stay alive as long as possible but I, I don't i don't think you're dragging this comp around the map i just i think you're getting steamrolled really fast yeah, they could also go after the Druid. And we saw it in that last game when they just touched Zank for just a second. Just instantly, uh, you know, his health bar just instantly disappeared. So, uh, and if there is one, yeah, yeah like a little <laughs> boop nose. and it, it was just gone, you know. Um, so I, I feel like for Admiral Esports as well, what, what you were talking about, Sid, is that, you know, if you're not perfectly cross crowd controlling everyone, Blizzard's is going to be there stopping the setups. Swaps is going to be there sanking the setups. Uh, and that's it's so true uh, this team is like uh it's like almost like their ai you know they're so good at rotating those cds you know we saw it uh, in the past so many times you know when swapsy won blizzcon as well with that turbo uh that we were uh, talking about a little bit in the pregame um he's just so good at uh, kind of rotating those defenses with his teams that you will always see them kind of stay cool and calm in those situations where he is dropping low on HP. Like even in that last game, he dropped to like 10% HP, didn't overlap his bubble, he didn't panic. He had full uh, trust in that his healer is gonna trade and that he's not going to trade, you know? And I think that's very, very important when you're playing, you know, at this level, you're playing in this caliber of competition, you need to all be on the same page. You need to all know how, how you're gonna make those trades. You've played so many games together, you're rotating through those cooldowns and that's what makes it extremely difficult actually to take down uh, Admiral Esports because they're almost never going to overlap and give you that like big window where okay now we have a minute here where we can take somebody down where they have nothing you don't really get those windows very often against Admiral Esports because they're always just in sync with those rotations this is going to be like the oldest current roster in AWC like Blizzo and Swapsy. I mean they've been playing together for years I can't think of two people currently that have been competing together that long in subsequent uh, seasons was in Raikou it yeah, wasn't yeah, Raikou was probably true. the oldest. Yeah. If we're talking duo. Uh, well, just, you know, because they don't have the old roster with uh, Method Triforce anymore, so. They they had uh, wait, they had Joe Fernandez for a while with Swapsy. That's why I think mm -hmm. that Raikou and Waz are older, because Raikou and Waz competed together against Swapsy and Joe Fernandez. Yeah. So then Joe Fernandez was out, they got in Blizzo, um, and Raikou and Waz have stayed together. So I think Raikou and Waz yeah. have got to be the longest standing ones here. But we're jumping into the game. We've got uh, Ashamane's Fall, Dragonlance Roulette. This is old meta versus new meta. Like, are they going to be <laughs> able to pull it off here? Because being a rogue against a ret, let alone this combination of classes together with one, is probably the most difficult thing he's going to be able to overcome. And they are playing Dwarf, Warrior, Dwarf, uh, Paladin, but not Dwarf Monk. So I think maybe killing... Oh no, Blizzo Heroic! leaps acro out of stealth slowing down the opener and catches him in a leg sweep they might just kill him in the opener huge pressure blade storm massive damage onto him zank is trying to power through with innervate heals he's fully hotted but even still struggling to heal through this cloak evasion has to be traded out this is a disastrous start for dragonlands roulette yeah, Acro has no cooldowns left, really. He's got his trinket, but nothing really to trade with it. And there's the swap to Zank that we talked about. But the nice shutdown coming in there. Beautiful peels coming in. There's a full sheep there onto next. He gets a blessing of protection that removes it. So they don't want to trade out next trinket right there. They do get the life cocoon. Nice cyclone onto the life cocoon there as well by Zank. But now here comes the paralyzed. Acro's in trouble. Trades out the vanish immediately. Now they're swapping over to Zank. And Zank once again 
They're going to be able to kind of duck away from that situation. Acro getting swapped to once again. Here's the Stormbolt. Here comes the damage. Big hits coming in here from Flopsy and Blizzo. But Zank is ready there. He's got that broccoli form right now, giving him instant regrowth, giving him a lot of powerful heals. And that will be enough to kind of keep his team going. But as soon as that fades, which is now, all of a sudden, you're going to see the pressure coming out. There's the Nature Swiftness now being traded out. Swapsy just charging in another maybe swapping to Zank here in another hammer of justice they might just be able to take him down do they have any follow-up next not able to connect with the leg sweep there he's going to do it onto acro instead acro now going to be trading his trinket and so far it's just a rogue mage team just running 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 and they really haven't forced a single trinket so far on admiral esports said yeah, it's looking tough here. Swapsy at the pillar. Gelu just getting killed by Blizzo, trying to blink away and avoid the fight. The Mistweaver should outmana the Druid between getting crowd controlled and using Fist Weaving low mana cost. They got to get out of that Feyline stomp that Gelu is standing in right now. He's trying to reposition away from it. Kidney shot on Swapsy, holding him back for now. Zank is trying to reposition. They're still keeping Swapsy on the back foot. They swap back to Agro. Acro as he shadow steps in. That might he might regret it. No trinket on the storm ball. There's nothing here. He's got cheat death, but even still, just barely holding on. They knock them back and try and avoid death. They do manage to shadow step over. To Zank, but now Gelu is a bit overextended. They're trying to chase him down, and this is your only option again against a Ret. Is just keeping him away. Just don't ever let him touch you. You gotta pretend you're doing like the Kelthos raid back in TBC with that <laughs> slow moving guy that's chasing you around and one shot you if he gets to you. Like you have to keep him away as long as possible. Here, Zank is stunned up. Acro is stunned up. Here comes a wake of ashes. Massive damage. Oh! And that will be it. Admiral's esports up 2-0. Yeah, the kill toss strat is not going to work here. There's going to be a wipe here for Dragonlance Roulette as Acro gets absolutely blasted. I like how when you were saying that, you have to keep the red pallet on the way as soon as it connected. Just dead, dead player. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's the retribution paladin right there. You know, they got they got a lot of uh, damage for sure in their arsenal, but also uh, you know a lot of utility. We saw it earlier. Uh, you know, uh, here Acro just shadow stepped in, getting swapped to immediately, and uh, almost gets taken down. The Nature Swiftness comes out there for Zank, and uh, they're just uh, trying to kite the raid boss here, essentially spamming out sheeps onto next. And usually, when you get a sheep like this on the onto the healer. Well, this is your time to actually get aggressive, but Acro is so scared. He's trying to get a restyle, Ring of Peace. It actually keeps him in, uh, in combat there for a second, but he does manage to get the restyle. He gets the cheap shots here. Has to go in here and try to save Zank because Zank is getting absolutely blasted. And then Acro getting swapped to in a leg sweep. He has no way out. He has the evasion. Once he gets out of this, he presses it, but I think it was a touch of death that sent him right there at the end with that Wake of Ashes. So gonna be getting a chomp there and actually it was not a touch of that it was just an execute from blizzo uh, it's, that's another thing you know <laughs> there's a lot of executes on this squad as well they have you know they have the lockdown they have the durability they have uh, you know uh, a lot of peels a lot of utility but they also have a lot of executes a lot of raw damage i mean look at swapsy's damage look at blizzo's damage and then compare that to acro uh, acro basically competing with the uh, fist weaver there on the scoreboard oh <laughs> okay, yeah. so they they tried that new comp, Shadow Priest Mage. I feel like Shadow Priest Mage honestly looked better. Yeah, if they Way played better. that on a big map, it, it looked the best so far for them. Yeah, this I agree. this. I think we're, 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 Sorry, go ahead. No, no, okay, you go. I, I think we're going to to Tolvir and a Shadow Priest Mage would be in order. I feel like. Okay, you don't want to see him go back to lock. You guys were saying that uh, the demo lock could be pretty good All against right. Red Paladin. I mean, it's as powerful as Red Paladin, but Fist Weaver is really tough for Warlocks because mm, um, yeah. you, you can't really kill them as easily. Like some classes, you swap to a Fist Weaver. You either need a comp that can swap to them and kill them in a stun, or you need a comp that can crowd control them and prevent them from connecting to their target. So uh, mm -hmm. a Demo Lock can't really do either of those. It doesn't have enough CC to CC the Monk and doesn't really have enough lockdown to keep him out of the fight to kill him. Um, and Fist Weaver will just run at you, killing you the whole game, getting a lot of extra damage. So I don't... I don't think it's really an option here just because Next has the Monk. If Next was a Shaman, then I think you could play a Demo Lock. Um, but because he's a Mistweaver, I think it'll be a little bit tougher. This is it. This is the match point for them. They're facing Admiral's Esports. Old meta didn't work. They're going to need some new tricks here on match point. They're actually going to do it. I'm actually very surprised um, to see it as a bold move. Ooh. I mean, they're definitely saying like, okay, we think Demo is going to be our best shot here. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're bringing in a Druid. I don't know how I feel about the Druid either. I, I like, I don't know if he's just gonna, I feel like he's just not gonna be able to heal the damage. Like he's just gonna get run over. And even if he can heal the damage, I think he's gonna run out of mana later. So yeah, 
I mean, they're definitely what going would you for rather comfort see? here. Um, I don't know if I want to see a shaman either. Like, uh, I, I'm thinking, like, what is the best option for Zank if he could play anything in the game? Like, maybe this is the best and it's just not that great. Um, like, maybe even a Mistweaver himself, something with a little bit more mobility, a better output, and better mana. And he just kind of plays Caster Mistweaver and stays really far away and kind of just tries to heal through the damage, I think might be a better option for him. But obviously not prepared. I think they're just going for comfort. This is, you know, Gelu's played Demo Law for a very long time. Valet has been a, a high standing Shadow Priest uh, amongst Europe competition for a long time, as well as Zank on Resto Druid. So this is kind of like, these are the best specs we have of our main classes. So yeah. we're going to try and make it work here in this situation. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately for Dragonlands Roulette, but they've got one more chance here. They do have to reverse sweep. So it's certainly going to be difficult, especially with how these games have been going for Admirals Esports. But heading into Tolveron, a lot more room to maneuver. We've got the double clack caster composition as well. So that's going to work out nicely in their favor, especially with two melee classes. So, I mean, we'll see if they can make that connection. I mean, like Sid was saying, you know, you just got to try and try and stay as far away from the, that red as possible. But there's just a lot of utility that Admiral's Esports has in their favor to just make that really, really difficult. So definitely be keeping an eye out on positioning from both sides of these teams because this is going to be very, very dangerous game for Dragonlands Roulette. And if you're just now tuning in, this is the gauntlet as well. So Dragonlands Roulette can't drop any games. It's single elimination today. And uh, this is their third series of the day. Uh, it sounds like Valet is really excited to play some M plus later. So maybe they're just like kind of calling, calling it right now. And he's going to go, uh, you know, queue, queue with his friends. I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, we'll see. We'll see if they can keep in any longer for this third series, Zico. Yeah, we'll see if they can turn it around. I mean, they got a, they got the best possible map for it. Yeah. Um, in an ideal world, I feel like they should play Mage Lock, but unfortunately for them, Gelu is both the Lock and the Mage. So uh, Gelu uh, is going to opt for that Demon Warlock. And obviously having the Rogue in there did not look great whatsoever. And they already tried the Shadow Priest Mage. Um, so yeah, I don't mind this too much. Let's see. Uh, what they can do here. I feel like they're going to just need to build a lot of distance between themselves and the Red Paladin. They just uh, go on him, and when you can't go on him, just spam fear him and make sure you're keeping that distance because once Swapsy connects, somebody is using their cooldowns or going down. So we'll see what they can do here. A match point for Admiral Esports. Winner of this goes up against the final boss gauntlet here in Europe, which is going to be Hoo Hoo, uh, another very, very strong team. <laughs> And right now, Admiral Esports definitely feeling themselves here. They definitely want that shot because the winner of that next game uh, after this series is done will be the fourth team to qualify for the actual finals where the big money is and where you kind of get a full bracket reset as well. But now the gates have opened. Vilay has already been caught in a stun and oh he's already my. dropping extremely low. What is going on there? Zank immediately trading out that incarnation, trading out his iron bark as well, getting a lot of heals out here. But they do manage to hold on to that dispersion. Now swapping over to Gelu, and uh, it looks like they're actually going to respect the push right here coming in from the Warlock and the Shadow Priest. Swapping to next here. Next actually trading out that life cocoon. Gets a sanctuary there from Swapsy to remove uh, that stun. And next will be alive. Vizzo and Swapsy will be defensive here. And uh, this is the pressure coming out from Demo Warlock so far, actually making the red kind of run back so far. Oh my, Avenging Wrath is off cooldown. It looks like again for Swapsy. He has to disperse before it. I, I think he's just immediately dead. <laughs> In the next Stormbolt, if Swapsy <laughs> connects with Avenging Wrath, they're swapping to Gelu. They get Dark Pact. He's trying to reposition. They're all over him. And I love what Admirals Esports is doing is they're just a cluster ball sticking together, just running whoever comes near them down and staying together as a team is what they're going to need to do here to protect each other from the different types of crowd control. Here comes the Avenging Wrath. Here comes the Stormbolt onto Valet. How's he going to survive? He trinkets out immediately. Desperate Prayer Void Shift over onto Zang. They might kill him through two life bars on match point they're overwhelming him oh. and absolutely cut him down admirals esports are looking like the scariest team in the gauntlet and i can only imagine team hoo hoo now after seeing that game because they're kind of a demo lock specialist <laughs> uh team is probably shaking uh in their boots for this last round of the gauntlet yeah, he took the words right out of my mouth. I think Infernion is shaking in his boots after seeing what just went down here uh, between these two teams. Uh, that was uh, that was very interesting. As soon as they got that disbursement right here, uh, that was a very, very key moment because they already got the Iron Bark as well earlier. This was also the Battle Master. So while the delay is in that disperse, 
Uh, they're just going after Gelu here a little bit, uh, building up their damage. And then, uh, you know, we're going to swap over onto the lay here. He doesn't actually even have full hots. Doesn't, he's actually missing the life blooms here. So Zank going in there for a bit of an aggressive play. Gets Hammer of Justice. And this, uh, I mean, if there's one thing you can criticize, is the insta trinket. Probably should have happened on this Hammer of Justice. As soon as he comes out, he trinkets the Paralyze, I believe. He actually gets Void Shift, and he sits through the Paralyze there as well. And um, Belay just dies through Void Shift, through Desperate Prayer. And uh, just uh, through basically everything. And the problem for Zangt here is uh, he only has that nature swiftness, but doesn't have any big kind of uh, healing to uh, go outside of that. So they just can't keep him alive. And uh, yeah, uh, it looked good the first couple of uh, moments, you know, in that match when they had the Tyrant out and they were going after next. But uh, as soon as those cooldowns faded, it was all about this melee cleave. And Admiral Esports will be advancing here uh, in the bracket. Yes, they will. Uh, Dragonlands Roulette, that is the end of their season. But overall, I mean, today and just throughout the Cup, I feel like this was a very strong team. It was fun to see them come together as a roster, those four players, uh, and succeed as they did. But that is going to be the end of the line for them. Admirals Esports moving forward, like Zico has mentioned, and they're off against Team Huhu. It's going to be the final European series of the day. And we're going to find out who gets to move on to the Global Finals tomorrow and also gets a share in that $300,000 prize pool potentially. So that's going to be uh, a, an explosive series, I'm sure. Admirals Esports, I mean, those were some very fast-paced games. Are they going to be able to repeat that, Sid, up against Team Huhu? Uh, I mean, probably, unless um, Existence has picked up Rep Paladin. Um, but even if they played Rep Paladin Demo, I wouldn't want to play Rep Paladin Demo into the Fist Weaver monk. So like, <laughs> I think their only option is some type of Ellie comp um like ellie warlock and, and try and use the ellie mobility that the shadow priest doesn't have it's like a little bit better uh, than the shadow priest to try and avoid those fey line stomps try and get distance from the, the mistweaver monk um might be their option but i'm starting to think admiral esports is gonna get a get a 3-0 here like that mm. that is a scary team they look really well practiced with the fist weaver monk and aiding each other i like that they didn't overextend in the beginning of that last game like if they had just ran headstrong into a tyrant and a pit lord probably would have lost the game so they're like they're aware like oh this is the biggest threat let's just chill at the pillar and wait for this to be over and then make our big push later and immediately win so they're they're looking polished uh on the ret warrior mist weaver and these warlock teams are like, unless you got a mage, I, but even if you've got a mage, like, I'm still not sold on that being like the 100% answer uh, with mage lock being it. Um, it I think it's gonna be hard. I, I think it's gonna be hard. This, this is, this is a scary team. This, this patch is definitely helping out Admirals Esports a bit here, especially with the, like the history of their comps, what they've got prepared yeah. for the competition. So they, like, they, they are gonna be really scary moving through here. I almost, I almost imagine everybody else in the top four right now is hoping Team Who Who manages to win somehow. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Uh, you know, we did have a chance to talk to every one of these teams before we headed into this weekend, and every single one of the teams. What you know, we asked kind of like, what are you, you know, most worried about facing? Every single one, of course, named Red Paladin teams. Uh, so we're kind of seeing that play out in front of us. And uh, Admirals Esports, quite a bit of success. Also, if you look at the predictions, we all predicted Admirals Esports, except for Ven, who's unfortunately not on the desk right now. So. Uh, maybe we can get a chance for him to defend that a little bit later on. And then, uh, Ven, wow, Ven, he 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 just was going against the the flow here <laughs> with 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 both of his predictions. He predicted uh, Power Men, and the rest of us uh, predicted Team Liquid. So uh, we can get to that later. Of course, North America is later on in the day, but we've got to get through EU first, and we're going to find out soon enough who's correct in their prediction, who wins the gauntlet, and who moves forward to tomorrow in the EU region. And that's going to be coming up next. We've got Admirals Esports facing off in the finals. Up next.
everybody and welcome back if you're just now tuning in we are in the con the gauntlet for the european region we are in our final series in this region as well team hoo hoo versus admirals esports before we headed off to a break we saw everybody's predictions um and then you were the only team to protect team hoo hoo do you want to you want to defend your choice someone's got to mix it up right like you can't okay. be going with the same <laughs> thing but i think team hoo hoo they they have some uh, decent answers. I feel, feel like the the players that they have and the compositions they have available have a fighting chance into the Rep Paladin. My kind of prediction for this tournament was going to be it's going to be a lot of Rep Paladins, but I do think that there's some things that have a fighting chance. Like Sid said, not 100% convinced of that, but something like the Elemental Shaman with the Demonology Warlock. Uh, you can land full hexes onto the Mistweaver Monk uh, and potentially kind of out attrition and get out lots of damage. Uh, from the Ellie Shaman as well as that Demo Lock. So um, that was kind of my line of thinking for this. We'll see if it actually ends up working out. Um, but this is going to be the only team that I think really has a, a fair shot in this gauntlet here against Admiral Esports with the compositions and kind of the way the meta has uh, gone. And uh, by the end of this, we'll know which team uh, does make it into that top four. Very exciting. Yeah, very exciting indeed. Looks like we're heading into the game soon as well. If you didn't see Admiral's Esports series last time, they were the first team that we saw today pull out a Red Paladin and they crushed the competition 3-0 alongside that Fizz Weaver and Warrior. So Team Who, who we are all very curious as to what they bring out in the blind pick. We're going to find out soon enough this single elimination as well. Winner of this one gets to see another day tomorrow in the Global Finals. All right, let's see. Uh, the, this is everything to play for. Team Who, the final boss of the gauntlet, Admiral Esports, uh, going to be kind of rising to the occasion here. This is everything to play for. You know, in the gauntlet, it's just been a best of five. You're playing one game or one series, and if you lose, you're out. But here, if you win this, you qualify for the main event. You qualify for the finals. You get a full bracket reset, and you get rewarded by getting a chance to play against none other than Echo, formerly Poggers, which is the current first seed. So maybe not the best situation to be in, <laughs> having to go against the strongest team. But if you want to win the finals, you're going to probably have to beat everybody anyway. So uh, that's obviously the mindset of these players. So uh, if uh, Team Who can make it, they will have a complete bracket reset there. Uh, if Admiral Esports can make it, they will also have that same opportunity. And that's really where all the big money is as well. $300,000 on the line here um, on the, in the grand finals uh, tomorrow and on Sunday. So uh, really everything to play for. This is what the players want. And this is going to be you know, a very, very important blind pick. And we are going to see some wizards here, Benruki. We are going to see Banos actually playing the first evoker healer that we've seen all day long. We're going to see Frankie on that Elemental Shaman, and we are going to see Infernion on that Demo Warlock. Let's see uh, how this comp performs into what Admiral Esports are running, which is the same comp that we just saw. Yeah, I mean, I'm really curious to see. Uh, I think the Preservation Evoker is an interesting pick. Um, it's one of the only healers that isn't susceptible to being really trained down, I, I think. Plus, you're going to have that rescue for a little bit of extra mobility here onto Infernion and a little bit of extra burst damage, which I think you do kind of need. Go full hex here onto next as they do make a huge push onto Infernion, but lots of pressure coming in from Frankie as he's just blasting everyone kind of back to the pillar. That being said, we do have Admiral Esports continuing this offensive push. We have a sleep, though, onto next. Great crowd control coming in, and Swapsy is forced back. He's 50% health right now, um, and this is really good pressure coming in from Team Huhu. Yeah, they basically just tanked the entire Demonic Tyrant. It's still in the back line there, uh, shooting. It just disappeared right there for Infernion. And the fact that they actually got through that without trading too much on the side of Admiral Esports just speaks volumes to how well they are rotating those defensives. Another full sleep here onto next by Vanos. Ne uh, Vanos actually caught up in a blinding light as well. Infernion uh, teleporting away here, trying to build a little bit of distance. And this is good pressure right now onto Swapsy. Frankie trying to lob out some of those meatballs, trying to get some pressure here onto Swapsy, but Swapsy once again gets picked up here by Max. Another leg sweep coming out here. Big pressure. Emerald Communion gets traded here for Vanos, and it will be enough potentially here as Infernion still dropping dangerously low. Nice move right there from Frankie using some of that new tech, but it will be the unending resolve trading there for Infernion. And uh, now they're getting through those major defensives. They already got the Communion. They already got the unending resolve. And they I think that was a rescue from Vanos and the Infernion teleported at the same time. Disaster right now. That means they're going to have some uh, uptime here onto Infernion. He has no more mobility. 
mobility if they can reach him and that is it now they're gonna need to try to crowd control these melees away from Infernium as the pain train continues swaps he has his wings ready as well then yeah let's see Infernium he needs to try to get some damage out to help Frankie and, and there it is Vanos is going to use the rescue but they are all over Infernium once again gonna be using that demonic circle trying to kite away but this damage is just completely overwhelming from Swapsy as well as next almost in that touch of death range but here a big tyrant gonna be blasting Blizzo back uh, what are they gonna be able to do looks like they are stable next is in a full fear right now Swapsy into the axe toss but he does have the divine shield does not want to throw away this game Infernion just under so much pressure in this match. Caught into the stun. And once again, down to 50% health, but still good pressure here on the swap scene in terms of mana. Nex is way ahead. And if Nex can stabilize here on that Mistweaver Monk, things are going to be looking very good here for Admiral East Wars. But they do manage to get that Divine Shield Whoa. from Swap Sea, but at what cost? And that will be the end of Infernion as he does go down. But pretty good pressure. One thing I think that's important to note. At the end of this one is Vanus was almost completely tapped on mana. Like his mana was basically as good as gone at that point of the game. So they were going to be, uh, you know, gone pretty shortly after that. And they need to figure out a way to win a little bit earlier in the match, which is not an easy thing to do. Admiral Esports is looking great. Yeah, that was, uh, you know, they were able to survive. They were able to have decent pressure as well from Team Uhu. Uh, they were able to get that Divine Shield, but, you know, at what cost, like you said, if the cost is Infernion's life, it's not exactly a good trade. It's just Swapsy just being, you know, safe here, trying to trade out his cooldown and make sure that uh, he can stay aggressive there towards the end of the match. And uh, next, you know, he was chilling. He had a lot of mana left to work with. And, uh, you know, they also had a lot of cooldowns as well. Like, they, they could have just played a more mana conservative kind of strategy on the side of Admiral Esports and just make sure that Vanus doesn't drink and make sure that they don't just tank every single tyrant like this. But they, they really have a lot of faith here in that uh, Divine Protection. And if Divine Protection fades, swaps the trades out his Divine Shield instead and then gets aggressive here. Infernion really can't do anything. Vanos mana not looking too hot. Even if he was able to top him off there, it would have been his last mana for that. And you know, honestly, I think both teams played a pretty good game. But so far, um, Admiral Esports uh, just seemed like they come out on top here. Uh, especially with, uh, you know, the damage coming out here from uh, Blizzo and Swapsy. As the damage is, you know, a little bit higher even from Team Huhu, but it just comes down to the healer difference, number one. And number two, also that Mortal Strike effect uh, with that Sharpen Blade, you know, Infernion's pets. They have a Mortal Strike as well, but just not comparable to that Warrior when he gets that Sharpen Blade and they get that big, big hit with the wings. There's just a lot of mana being uh, kind of spent uh, for Vanos uh, during those moments. Uh, where his heals just doesn't do as much. Yeah, certainly a, a rough game for them, for game number one on the side of Team Hoo Hoo. Admirals Esports, uh, they are locking in a comp soon enough. Looks like we've locked in Robodrome as well. Not something that we see utilized that often, but Team Hoo Hoo then, do we expect or do we want a comp swamp? I don't really know if they have anything better. This is kind of the composition that I thought they would be able to kind of <laughs> do the best yeah. with. And it was tough. I think on this map, um, Robodrome is going to be a little bit better for them. They will have the option to knock. So I think if they play kind of the top side uh, of the ramp, um, then they're going to have a lot of utility there to actually knock Blizzo and Swapsy off the side of the map. Um, that being said, I think Nex can do some fun stuff too, potentially. I don't know how tight... Uh, honor talents really are for mystery for monks it seems like they're all very important so i don't know if he's going to be able to play uh the knock but you could play the, you know the kick that actually knocks him off the side of the edge and maybe throw uh you know wrench in the plan uh, of them um but yeah we'll see we'll see uh what team who decides to do i think it's likely they're actually going to be bringing in a rep out of their own so mm. all right well emo rep for them also <laughs> <laughs> well, that answers your question. Does existence play a rat? You know, he's been kind of the melee expert so far of the team. We know he plays warrior. We've seen him on the demon hunter, uh, you know, and uh, part of why they were able to finish, uh, you know, in fourth is because of the existence uh, kind of demon hunter and kind of his melee expertise. Now, the question is, how much practice does he have on the rat? And, uh, you know, it's going to have to be quite a lot here because he's going up against Swapsy. This is not somebody who just picked up Rhett uh, during, you know, the patch here. This is somebody who played Rhett when Rhett wasn't, you know, a top tier spec, uh, you know, in the previous meta. You know, try to play this very comp, but uh, obviously with a different healer. 
uh, into you know uh, kind of the rogue meta that we had before with the assassination rogue so so obviously somebody who's been playing reds for years and years has a lot of experience uh, on that spec uh, whereas existence we just don't know how much um, practice he actually has um, for team Huhu though they do have that demo warlock as well uh, it's not going to be Frankie playing it of course it's going to be Infernion and Frankie's going to be the one on the bench so um, we'll see how this plays out they will also have uh, the preservation going up against the Mistweaver. I feel like, uh, you know, Mistweaver into Demo Warlock is just a really, really solid pick for next. So I think that's going to be definitely tough for Team Who to kind of overcome as well in this matchup. How, how are we going to see Frankie uh, go up against that monk? What's going to be difficult about a Fist Weaving monk? Um, Infernion. Uh, the graphic is. Sorry, longer, Infernion. But yeah. <laughs> It's just going to be uh, easy for um, um, for the Mistweaver to get you know his heals out, to kind of stay back, to play mana efficient, and also uh, if he does play Fist Weaving, he can also just attack the pets and heal that way. He's going to have a lot of uh, kind of different ways of dealing with the Warlock. Uh, he's going to have you know revival. He's going to have so many different cooldowns that he can actually rotate through, and uh, it's not really that easy to take down next in a swap because you can't use that revival. Uh, and he can use the Fist Weaving instance, and he also can use Transcendence uh, instance as well. So it will be different, difficult for them to try to take next down. But I don't actually know what target they're going to opt uh, going for uh, on the side of Team Huhu. Um, and for me, the biggest question is going to be, you know, existence on that Red Paladin. How much has he practiced, and how well can he kind of go up against swaps here, man? Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Infernion's going to be setting up a gateway to the top side, and I think it's likely when he does use his gateway, he'll end up dropping down that portal. But yeah, I really wonder who they're going to go after in this matchup. Swapsy's going to be able to back up next here, as you can see, uses that Blessing of Sanctuary to remove the stuns. And uh, Swapsy's just going to be continuing the onslaught here onto Infernion, who's going to be trying to kite and get away, but it is not an easy thing to do against the Retribution Paladin, Arms Warrior, and Fist Weaver Monk. Now they're swapping to existence. Can they get the Divine Shield? They do manage to get the Divine Protection, but it seems like that is going to be enough. That being said, look at Vanos' mana. He's already burned through 40% of his mana somehow at this point <laughs> of the game, and you can just tell how much pressure Admiral Esports is putting out. Yeah, and so far Existence already having a close call. Now they're going after Swapsy here. Double stun coming out. The setup looks good. And that will be next actually trading out his revival there. So big cooldown being traded. Now once again, they're going after Infernium. He trades out the Blood Pact. Gets rescued away. But Existence is kind of left behind here. They do have some damage. I think there's a Tyrant in the back line there shooting. Uh, it's uh, just the Imps right there for Infernion. Doing some work. Tyrant not going to be available for quite some time. That's going to be the Emerald Communion now being expended here as well as Vanos is trying to keep his team in the fight. Swapsy did drop a little bit low right there. Now caught up in a Axe Toss, but it catches a big heal. And next, look at him on that Fist Weaver. Able to do so much work right now. Deep Breath coming out from Vanos. Swapsy dropping quite low here. This could be a trade. They need to be careful. They do have the Life Cocoon as well, but next is just a pretty oh. full faith here in that. And they will trade out the Divine Shield. And uh, actually holding on to that life cocoon, I feel like that would have been a bit more efficient trade there. Next now, it's susceptible to crowd control, gets caught up in a fear. And once again, it's going to be Infernion here on the back foot. He might have to actually trade out something existing as well, getting cleaved out. And there's that life cocoon as well. Good pressure though coming out from Team Hu Hu. Distance trying to kite here, but Infernion gets left behind. And that will be the unending resolve there coming out for Infernion. He gets rescued back, and now existence once again left behind. But they're just going to crowd control him and continue this pain train here onto the Warlock. Yeah, and Fernion's in a lot of trouble. He's going to be using that Demonic Circle and that Time Spiral coming in from Vanos. Allows him to basically get a double portal off. It'll be very annoying here for Swapsy to actually connect to his target. But Fernion jumps down right into the arms of Swapsy, and he's going to be able to lay in some really big damage on that Retribution Paladin. At the same time, though, Swapsy could be in trouble. Forced to trade out his trinket. He gets Whoa. coiled, and he does get dropped. Nicely done there by Team Hu. They were, oh, that's just, that's got to be devastating for Admiral Esports. Uh, they had such a big mana lead in this match, but this map is definitely doing work here for Infernion. Just the fact that he can use the, the Demonic Circle to get up top, he can use the Rescue to get up top, he can use Portal, they can reset his Portal. They have a lot of answers to escape this melee cleave, and I think that's a huge part of the reason why this worked out here for Team Huhu.
Yeah, definitely. Really, really good stuff here for Team Uhu. And this is kind of, you know, uh, the first loss, actually, uh, so far in the gauntlet for Admiral Esports. They went 3-0 in that previous matchup. And uh, with how this one was going, it was looking like uh, they were going to be up in total 5-0 on the day. But uh, Team Uhu actually able to tie us up here. Uh, is going to, of course, be great for their team morale as well. They swapped comp, and they looked good so far on this. And exactly like you mentioned, you, know, you have that gateway as well. You can gateway down or from down all the way up so uh, inferno doing uh, you know a lot of plays here jumps down gets rescued jumps down gets teleported jumps down gateways this has a lot of different ways here you can see i think here actually he's walking towards that gateway right there and here is that setup that they get onto swap see a lot of damage they already forces divine shield here they get the sleep onto next shrink it there really nicely done and then they get the mortal coil there onto swap see beautiful cross cc they get the fire breath as well there for vanos vanos actually been playing a really clean Clean uh, match so far uh, on that preservation of Ochre. You know, it's a healer that uh, we saw quite a bit, um, uh, you know, before this patch, but uh, so far it hasn't really been talked about as much. It's been all about that restoration shaman, it's been all about those mist weavers, you know, uh, playing the long range mist weaver, playing the fist weaver. And it's been kind of all the hype right now, but Vanos definitely showing that. Um, that preservation of Ochre definitely still has a lot of utility. We saw him, you know, getting those deep breaths, getting those sleep walks right here onto next as soon as he trinkets. And uh, that allows them to actually get the kill. I think maybe even, did he get the kill with that fire? Vanos actually got the kill with the fire breath as well at the end. So uh, really, really nice offensive plays. Doing a lot of damage as well with that ability. Actually kind of keeping up almost on damage with that Fist Weaver. So Vanos definitely was a big player in this one. And uh, existence on that rat actually did out damage Swapsy a little bit as well. So definitely showing you could kind of keep up with him. I kind of like, uh, I, I feel like I have to question Swapsy a little bit here. I, I feel like using the, the magic blessing of protection or the, you know, the blessing of spell warding would be really good. Like in the long game, they're just going to win anyways. And uh, against... You know, basically everything that they have. Uh, Infernion is doing mostly magic damage. Existence is doing uh, you know, a lot of magic damage. Vanos is doing a lot of magic damage. I feel like that blessing of spell warding would be huge to basically have a second bubble here in this matchup or even like divine protection. So I'm, I'm a little bit... I wonder if he was on forbearance there when it actually ended. If so, that'd be a little unlucky because they still had you know some of those cooldowns available. And I do think also at some points they can play defensive. Like they do have... Uh, you know, such a lead in terms of mana that if they need to and they don't have any cooldowns, they could play it a little bit uh, safer, um, a little bit more slowly uh, in the match. But uh, this this is going to kind of push the pace, I think, here on hook point. Um, they're not mm -hmm. really going to have an opportunity to reset. And I think Team Huhu is going to have a much more difficult time uh, kind of dealing with this pressure coming in from this melee cleave. Yeah, especially uh, since we're moving to hook point, so not nearly as much space as we're going to be seeing in that last one. But uh, if you do want to see also the build that any of these guys are running, I believe our AWC companion is back up and running. So awc.gcd.tv. It wasn't quite working in the beginning of the day, but last I heard, it was up. So if you want to check out maybe some of the defensive cooldowns that they could adjust to on the side of Admiral's Esports up next, uh, you can take a look. But we've got all of our comps locked in. It's one-to-one -one as well. It's our first tie that we're seeing of the day. Team Hoo Hoo, they're still on that lock as well, Zico. How do you feel like he's going to be able to maneuver around the small space that Hook Point offers? Well, it's going to definitely be uh, tough for Inferno. You know, he almost went down in that last one uh, and mm. that's with having that zy axis and kind of being able to buy himself a lot of time in those kind of crucial moments and also just having a larger area to kind of cut around on uh, on this map it's going to be a lot tougher for him for sure uh, to actually get around and to be able to uh, you know get effective damage out um, with that said it's also harder for admiral esports to avoid some of those crowd controls so admiral esports i think the name of the game is Hold down the gas pedal, do as much damage as you possibly can, and uh, rotate your defensives really, really well. Uh, see if they could have made maybe some better trades in that last one. Um, so obviously did uh, go down there in a uh, death coil or a mortal coil. So he didn't actually, uh, he was still in lockdown there um, towards the end. And uh, they just had traded maybe something else other than the bubble earlier. He could have had the bubble there instead. Had maybe if he saved his trinket or if he trinketed defensively. I don't remember how he trinketed. Um, but, uh, you know, having those kind of CC breakers for crucial moments, you need to rotate through those perfectly and uh, rotate through next uh, kind of trinket as well perfectly. And we'll see uh, if they can do that and stay on target. I think uh, it's looking good for Admiral Esports. 
Uh, if not, Team Who could actually kind of take the lead here. And uh, for Team Who, that's great, you know. You get to play the same matchup that you just won. So, uh, yeah. sure, you know, there's some. There's going to be some differences for sure. But all in all, this is basically the best case situation that you can ask for if you are Team Who. -Hoo. And uh, both of these teams, you know, one and one, very, very uh, evenly matched so far. And there's only going to be one winner of the gauntlet. So, uh, we'll see who can take it. This is the swing match, so it's going to be very, very important to win this one. Yeah, I feel like I, if if Team Hoo Hoo can pull off a win here, they're going to win this series. So that would be that'd be obviously huge for them, especially with the game that we've seen Admiral Esports playing. So uh, it seems like we might have a bit of a delay with both of these teams heading in here, which I don't blame them. This is really, really high stakes. This is the last series um, in the E region for the gauntlet. So winner of this one basically moves on to the global finals for tomorrow and the, the, the loser is out, unfortunately, and that's the end of their season. So we're in a situation where we're tied up. Uh, we're in a situation where it's Rhett versus Rhett. So high stakes, really intense game coming up here. It's going to be probably a lot of explosive damage just in the opener. Um, and it seems like there's a lot of vulnerability that we could see within that as well. So, I mean, who do you think in, in this entire matchup, Zico, like who's the most vulnerable here do you, in, in your mind? Definitely has got to be Infernion. Like He's mm -hmm. got yeah. basically three melees just zugging him down, you know. I, I feel like Inferno is going to have to play a clean game and also, uh, you know, Existence is going to have to provide, because that's the thing about the Ret, right? You know, we talk a lot about the damage, but the Ret brings a lot of utility as well. You know, those Blessing of Protections has to be key. Every time Inferno gets stunned, you can have that Blessing of Sanctuary and uh, you can see, you know, some of those key abilities right there. Uh, he's going to definitely be, have to be on point with that, try to help Inferno get away, get distance, get out of those uh, kind of tricky situations where he might get one shot and try to kind of hold on to that. And another thing as well that we really haven't talked about too much is the fact that, you know, in, when that last game started, Van, Vano spent like 50% mana in like the opener. So uh, yeah. I feel like that's a huge win condition. I mean, it definitely is. That's the thing about the uh, the Fistweaver Monk and the Mistweaver Monk playing, you know, kind of this fist weaving specialization is you just have such an ability to just keep going and going and going and going. And when you pair yourself with a Retribution Paladin, you kind of cover all the weaknesses, right? Like as a Mistweaver Monk, uh, some of the problems can be, um, you know, you're, you're just taking um, big damage and swaps, but when you have a Retribution Paladin actually backing you up, you can actually avoid a lot of that incoming damage and they can sank you out of stuns, they can bop you if you need, they can use a sacrifice on you. If you're taking too much damage, you kind of just really cover some of the weaknesses of that monk. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, that's the thing, you know, that's, I think that's uh, one of the big reasons now why we're seeing so many monks, like, I feel like in the past, monks have been all about, okay, if you get crowd controlled, your team is going to be in trouble, but with how durable reds are, and with kind of how much support they provide as well, even if you do get crowd controlled, a lot of the time, you're not going to be in the worst situation, and then you have that fist weaving, which is that huge, huge kind of upside of bringing the monk, that's going to allow you to get offensive, get out a lot of more damage, and kind of, uh, you know, uh, top somebody off while you're being aggressive, and kind of swing the momentum back in your favor, so uh, monk... I think we're going to see a lot of them because of that. And also the fact that, you know, what you mentioned, they're just super mana efficient, uh, healing with their damage. But ladies and gentlemen, we don't have to wait any longer here. We have 10 seconds until the gates are opening here on hook point. This is the swing match. So if Team Who wins this, if the game uh, or if the series drags on to a game five, they will have that pick and map advantage. And I feel like that could be a huge thing here. It's going to be tough though on hook point going up against this cleave from Admiral Esports. And we're already seeing a strong opener right now onto Infernion. Yeah, definitely. Let's see how Infernion's going to handle the situation using that demonic gateway immediately. Looking to get Infernal off, but it is not easy of a warrior, a fist weaver, red paladin all over. He gets caught into a hammer of justice. A large amount of damage, and this small map is not going to be nearly as easy to maneuver as that Robodrome we just saw. It should allow Admiral Esports a lot more uptime in the match, a lot more damage healing coming in here from Next and Vanos. Inevitably, it's going to be burning through that mana. Look at him already down to 50% mana, 40 seconds into the game. That is definitely not what you want if you are Team Hoo Hoo. 
Yeah, and Inferno does manage to get his Tyrant out, but they actually leg sweep the Tyrant, and the Tyrant so far has been kind of getting crowd control. Now Inferno actually teleporting away from his Tyrant there behind the pillar, but now here it comes, finally able to shoot a little bit, but as, as I say that, it disappears, so no value on that Tyrant, no counter pressure. And that's a very, very big cooldown for Inferno. He needed to get something with that, and so far Swapsy has basically everything. They do get the Life Cocoon right there. Big damage actually coming out here onto Blizzo as they do a little swap there onto him during that life cocoon but now once again it's gonna be inferno in big trouble they're cleaving his pets as well trying to keep it alive with the health funnel inferno teleporting away here but there's not a lot of room to move around existence getting disarmed here comes the setup they get the hammer of just onto next they're going after swaps and they get the full sleep there onto next as well but once again inferno taking huge hits of damage the death coil coming out there onto Swapsy as well but once again it is inferno on the back foot he actually fake cast the intro gets that precog and gets a lot of the big cc out there with that deep breath there from Thanos as well. And is really trying to keep the team, you know, offensive and trying to lock them down. But so far it's been, you know, a lot of healing on his side, already dropping to 20% mana. Inferno now getting rescued far away from the cleave. But so far, he's gonna be Inferno just trying to stay alive, trying to hold on. And so far, no real pressure. They got a life cocoon, but that's already back off cooldown. So obviously actually trinketing, finally trading out the sack. Uh, right there and now there's the life cocoon as well so they are get, able to get some of those kind of smaller cooldowns but still yet to force out those big cooldowns you know the divine shield and the trinket up next yeah this is decent damage coming in from infernion they're almost at the finish line admiral esports they just need to continue this push a little bit longer here comes the tyrant can they get it no blizzard shuts it down swapsy trying to reconnect to his target they can get up time on infernion here it's going to be massive Still has his unending resolve, but Vanos just almost has no mana left. He's down to almost execute range. That touch of death could sneak in as well. Inferno in a lot of trouble going for a Shadow Fury, getting some stuns out. They need to find some counter pressure here on the Swapsy, but he still has his Divine Shield. He's almost got his uh, Divine Protection available as well. And this damage is just completely overwhelming. Inferno on ports away. He gets stuck once again, just struggling so hard in this matchup to actually get off a Tyrant. He needs that damage. There it is. Tyrant is out. Can it actually land any damage? It looks like Blizzard's just gonna go ahead and fear it up, stop it from casting whatsoever. Infernium is just so far away from his demonic circle at this point. It just Vanna's doing everything he can to try to keep him alive, but there's really not that much left here for Infernion. But they are finding pressure at the same time. They do manage to get the life cocoon out of the way from next. He's got no restoral also. So pressure is still here for Team Hoo Hoo, but they are running out of time and running out of time very quickly. This could be easily be the end of the match. Infernion gets completely overwhelmed, almost in touch of death range, but they're going for it here on Swapsy. They get the Divine Shield, but just too much offense here for Admiral Esports on this small map. But I can't help but wonder. I mean, they got a lot of cooldowns out of the way. They got the Divine Shield, managed to get the Life Cocoon. They had good pressure, so maybe they just need a large map once again. Yep, the large map uh, definitely w should help them, but still, I feel like that Divine Shield, it was a little bit offensive almost there for Swapsy, just kind of using it to seal the deal, and I really feel like this game kind of highlighted what we talked about a little bit earlier. In the opener, once again, Vanos just spent half his mana gone, and at the end of this match, you can see uh, the biggest reason to why Inferno actually does go down here, despite doing a great job kiting, is because Vanos is just going out of mana, and that's that fear on the Tyrant. Look at the Tyrant here. It doesn't get a single cast off, because here it gets stunned as well. It gets one cast off, and then uh, it does get stunned right there, and then after that, it's been feared, it's been stunned, and then it's going to fade, and that is really the big thing for the Demo Warlock. You want to have that Tyrant kind of far back, just free casting onto anything, getting massive pressure, but Inferno not able to actually get those Tyrants out, not able to well, he's able to get them out eventually, but uh, as soon as he does get them out, it's immediately crowd control. The same thing happened to his first Tyrant. He had to spend a lot of mobility, a lot of you know cooldowns to actually get it out. And then when he finally did, uh, well, all of a sudden, uh, you know, he just got crowd controlled and it just continued the, the pressure there. So for Inferno, definitely tough on this map to do anything. And also, if we take a look at Vanos' mana right there. Uh, towards the very very end of the replay he just has nothing to work with like as soon as he tops him here that's basically his last little bit of mana that comes out so obviously gets the um uh, life cocoon right there stays on target gets topped and then here vanos just completely dry goes for the nullifying shroud trying to stay alive you know or trying to stay out of crowd control but then here He's got nothing left to work with. Look at Next. He's got half mana left. He's chilling. And uh, Swaps still has his Divine Shield as well. And uh, he drops kind of low there, uh, but he just decides to kind of trade it there on the Moral Coil just to make sure that he can stay on his target and uh, deal, you know, that last bit of damage that they need to actually secure the kill. 
And also look at next damage. That is definitely a lot for a healer, for sure. Yeah, that most definitely is, and that's uh, where that advantage certainly comes in with next. But it looks like we are moving on to Tolveron Arena up next. It's 2-1 as well, so Admirals Esports, they have... Excuse me, my cat is sneezing. I'm sorry if you can hear that. Are you <laughs> um, he's got asthma. <laughs> so 30 seconds left here for Admirals Esports to lock in their composition. And Team Hoo Hoo, I mean... You know, they, they moved into that smaller map on hook point. They had that lock, weren't able to make it happen, but now we've got a lot more space available for us. They've locked in Tolveron Arena. So if they do play that same comp, hopefully everything goes to plan like it did the first time around then, and they can get that win once again. But unfortunately that does put us on a game five where Admirals Esports has the draft pick advantage for the map. Yeah, we're going straight to Ruins of Lordaeron, like something real small, you know, Dalaran Sewers, Ruins of Lordaeron, something real nice. Um, but Infernion has to win here on this map. And we can't forget, even on Robodrome, Vanos was almost completely out of mana when they do did manage to get that win. And Swapsy still had some cooldowns left. I feel like they could have extended the game just a little bit longer. So, yeah, I don't think that this is a free win for Team Huhu just because it's a large map. Uh, they're going to have to play an insane game. Going to have to find that pressure onto Swapsy in this match. Find those nice setups because they're definitely on a timer when you go up against the, you know, the Fist Weaver plus the Rep Paladin. They basically outmana any other healer. So you gotta find that win condition because if you just let the game kind of play out, you will kind of inevitably lose to the pressure and healing that the, the Mistweaver does bring. All right, well, let's see what they can do. Game number four, this is gonna be a really big one here for Team Who Who. They don't want the series to end just yet. They've still got a chance to stay in it. Tolveron Arena, let's see what they can make out. Yep, let's see what they can do here. This is uh, the last series of the Gauntlet uh, in Europe here. After that, we are going to be looking at North America. So if uh, Admiral Esports wins here, well, they are going to be the team that actually advances to the finals as the fourth seed. Swapsy once again, going to find himself in a situation where he goes up against his former teammates, uh, Raikou and Waz. So it's going to be interesting to see if Admiral Esports can do it, or if Team Hoo Hoo can tie us up here and take us all the way to a Game 5. Uh, let's see what they decide to do here. They do. They did manage to win on Robodrome, and this map is definitely a really, really good one for Team Hoo Hoo. Let's see what they can do here in the opener existence already. Uh, getting out of a stun right there, and looking to get aggressive. Inferno already gating away extremely far, trying to get that Demonic Tyrant, but still struggling to get those casts off, still struggling to actually get that Tyrant out. And as long as they, you know, prevent that Tyrant from being summoned, they're buying themselves time where they can just get aggressively, uh, they can get aggressive for free. Manos here getting a full sleep onto next, but it is a preemptive um, life cocoon being popped there for Swapsy. So Swapsy is going to be completely fine. Really nicely done there by next. Now next is going to be on DR here for those crowd controls. And next can actually activate that fist weaving and just get aggressive himself. Swapsy right now taking a little bit of damage there in that pet stun, but so far... It's going to be Infernion here on the back foot. Swapsy actually taking a decent amount of damage still, but next we'll be able to pick him back up here now that he is in the fight and healing with those kicks. And now Swapsy as well should be able to make it to his target here. Demonic Tyrant actually was summoned there for Infernion. Let's see if they deal with it. It looks like it's uh, feared actually into a stun right there. So that Tyrant not getting a lot of uh, value, but actually, as I say that, they do manage to get that Divine Shield from Swapsy. So far, a good opener for Team Who, probably the best one we've seen so far. Yeah, not too bad. Infernion trying to get away right now. Swapsy looking to reconnect. Do they have the damage to take him down? Vanos going to stabilize him with the Emerald Communion. And this has just been such good pressure here for the side of Team Hoo Hoo. But they need to keep it up. Let's see what they can get done here on the Swapsy. Great kiting. Existence almost going down, though. Forced to trade out that Divine Shield. Now there's multiple openings here for Admiral Esports. If Infernion gets too far away, I like making swaps onto Existence and uh, trying to keep that pressure rolling. Swapsy will get the life cocoon as they do manage to almost cut through it immediately. Good blessing of Sanctuary there by Swapsy, keeping Next into the fight. And if Next can stay on target, we will be able to heal his team up immensely on that Mist Weaver Monk. Ernion still cutting away. He's been doing such a good job with those freedoms, with his demonic circles, everything. But Existence gets swapped too. And this is looking like they found a new target. I mean, they put a swap on Existence, they get the Divine Shield. They put a second swap, they get the Blessing of Protection. Existence could be in a lot of trouble in the future. 
Absolutely, but you're going to leave Infernion free here. Infernion definitely can get a lot of work done. Swaps, he has no Divine Shield as well. There's the Blessing of Protection, but he's kind of getting blasted through it. Through it. And Swaps, he will be able to stabilize for now, activating his wings here as well, getting aggressive once again onto Infernion. And that is the, the kind of the tricky situation here. You have a kill window onto existence, but leaving Swaps, or leaving Infernion free could lead to their demise. Infernion, though, of course, teleport away. Of course, straight out it's under the result. Also getting a sacrifice there. Now existence could be in a lot of trouble here next trying to take him down here on the fist weaver infernion also getting swapped to a lot of healing here for vanos how is he going to keep them alive he trinkets out of the stun is it going to be enough existence is dropping so low here tyrant has been summoned into the fight if they can keep existence alive this could actually be swapsy going down and swapsy realizing the danger he's in he's trying to live side beautiful repentance coming out here by existence next he's going to trinket and trade out the life cocoon right there he gets slept now on his trinket but that is next being completely on the art and now next is going to be able to activate his fist weaving and with those ancient teachings and get aggressive here, man. Yeah, this is potentially match point. Admiral Esports, they want it. If they win this, they will be earning their ticket to the grand finals. Can they do it next? Can he stay alive? They keep up the pressure here onto Infernion. Vanus has no mana left. Swapsy Popsy oh. Avenging Wrath, and this could just be the game. Infernion down to 1% health. Gets a huge shield by Vanos, but it is not enough. He gets crushed by Blizzo and Swapsy. Admiral Esports 3-1, and they are looking good this team is going to be super solid here in the finals for europe yeah being able to win here on, on tolvir realizing those situations that they're in making the perfect trades and having that aggression admiral esports also playing of course a very very strong comp in the current meta uh wow this is going to be a tough team to deal with and uh, you know Admiral Esports, this is the beauty of the gauntlet, right? They finished in fifth place. If there was no gauntlet, they just wouldn't have made it. But now they were able to kind of take down Dragonlance Roulette. They're able to power through here against Team Huhu as well. And now, you know, if they can just continue, you know, this momentum as well, there's no reset. There's no, okay, now we'll see you guys next week. Tomorrow they're playing in the finals, and tomorrow they're going to have to go up against Echo, uh, which is formerly Poggers. That is going to be Meh, Waz, Raikou, and Chanimal. So they're going to have to go against some very strong teams as well. But if they can win those matches, all of a sudden they're going to go from being, you know, in one of the worst positions that you could possibly be in to being potentially in the best situation uh, for them. So uh, Admiral Esports, you know, they have a couple of more hurdles for sure, but uh, this is not the end of the road. They still have plenty of more to show us uh, tomorrow in the finals. And for Team Huhu had a great season. This was a newcomer team as well, you know. We never really saw yeah. Banas compete. We never saw Existence compete. And these guys had such a phenomenal run during the Cups. And even now in the Gauntlet, the only team that actually was able to take games off of Admiral Esports. And even this last game could have gone either way. There was so close, so many close calls there at the end. Yeah, that's very true. So, uh, you know, absolutely well done. They made it this far. They were really, really close to making it into that global finals. But Admirals Esports, they are going to take that dub three to one. So very strong day for them. And we are going to see them play tomorrow. And you kind of mentioned the teams that we are going to see them being up against Zico. I mean, in your mind, like they have this composition that will likely see some other teams play. But it seems like they just they, they kind of know what to do with it, despite it might being something new for them. Absolutely. I think, you know, this is a team that played this composition when it wasn't, you know, super strong in the yeah. meta. And here we can see uh, the uh, actual match schedule of the finals. Uh, this is not uh, something that we're going to be playing today. This is for tomorrow. Uh, we still have more games here as well. We have the entire North American gauntlet uh, coming up as well. Uh, but yeah, they're going to go up against Echo. So the first seed versus the fourth seed. And then we're going to have the Agents versus My Way that second seed versus that third seed. And I mean, if Admiral Esports win there, they're gonna be in such a good position for the rest of the tournament. They really have the experience, they have the players, you know, they have the roster, they have the comps, they have everything they need. If they can take down, you know, kind of their uh, longtime rivals in Echo, all of a sudden they find themselves in the semis, you know, going from potentially not making it to the tournament to going to the semi. And even if they lose there, they're not going to be out because it is a full bracket reset here. They're actually going to be, uh, you know, dropping down to that elimination bracket. They might be able to learn something from that and potentially make a, a lower bracket run as well. So uh, this is, you know, where most of the money is going to be located as well. This is a 300k prize pool, uh, you know, allocated uh, for the finals in NA and EU. So a lot on the line here and they, you bet that they are very happy about this outcome 
Yeah, I'm sure. I also like that it's a, a full bracket reset. You know, we're kind of used to these AWC Cups. Half the teams coming in, they're already down one game in the elimination bracket. But now we got to see all, all four teams up there um, in that upper bracket. So super excited to see how those two teams play or how those European play teams play tomorrow. And well done once again to Admirals Esports. So we'll see them play up against Echo um, in those games. But that being said, now we are moving on to the North American region in the gauntlet. Um, and we've got another round of exciting games for y'all. It's Ascension versus Silver Sentinels. Up next here, Van, what's your take on these two teams? I feel like this is kind of a similar start to what we saw in Europe, where maybe some of the teams that are kind of sticking to the old meta a little bit are going to be going head-to-head -head, uh, at the beginning of this one uh, for Ascension. They have some different comp options, but you know, primarily Whaler uh, playing that Discipline Priest or playing that Priest. Um, they've been playing a lot of Rogue Mage. I think Dopamine has actually picked up the Retribution Paladin, so we might see a bit of a surprise from him. And then for Silver Sentinels, I, I think they might just be sticking to you know what they mostly play, which is that warrior mage priest and rogue mage priest so it'll be an interesting matchup here for game number one uh but as kind of the gauntlet progresses i, I feel like we're going to see more and more of that you know the fist weaver plus the rep paladin and demonology warlock so it's only going to get more difficult for both of these teams yeah i think so for sure i mean we saw the same thing in eu where you know the deeper you got into that bracket the harder the games did uh go you know we saw a lot of three o's in the beginning of the day and we might just see that yet again in the na region so definitely stick around uh we've crowned who will be going on to the global finals for eu and now we just need to get through north america and find out who moves on from na so first up ascension versus silver sentinels we're gonna head to a break we're gonna come back very very soon
everybody and welcome back if you're just now tuning in we just finished off with the european region admirals esports came out on top we will see them play tomorrow in the european global finals but we are now moving on to north america and sid it's going to be ascension versus silver sentinels yeah um I, I was talking a little bit with palomar and like how is he feeling coming into the tournament he's honestly not feeling too good um with his with his roster at the moment for this so they're just kind of trying to make it through do the best with what they can here uh i'm not imagining to see any sort of like composition swaps unless he's like bluffing unless that was like some insane mind games <laughs> bluff that they've he's done like, it before that he's like to trying us. to make it seem like that um I, I wouldn't imagine to see too many changes so likely we're gonna see whaler on some type of priest here from him uh silver sentinels when we intervene uh, interviewed rosita jones asked him a couple of questions about going into this tournament is that they also have not changed their comps they're not going to be playing any ret paladins they're going to be sticking to the same types of comps that they were playing uh up to this point so rogue mage or warrior mage they were particular on warrior mage uh quite a bit throughout the cup stage so this should be a kind of like a, a rep a ret free zone uh at least for <laughs> the first round uh between these two teams um i'm really curious to see what types of comps i'm, I'm imagining dippy's going to be coming in on some type of warlock um for their side or maybe even it might even possibly be rogue mage mirrors phenomenal uh discipline priest main uh he won the the solo shuffle tournament on disc priest and whaler has been playing holy priest i think can flex as well to disc um so this is kind of like a priest showdown in the first round of the gauntlet mm, okay so i mean how important is the blind pick going to come in in a situation like this uh, if Palomar's team, I don't know, because again, like I got you got like switch gears here because we've just been talking about rets all day and talking about fit monks and, and <laughs> yeah. stuff all day. It's like this is a completely different type of lineup, right? Like if they use Naj on Rogue and if they run Rogue Mage, then maybe they need to get Dippy on Shadow Priest and run a Shadow Priest Rogue with Palomar. Uh, but if they run Warrior Mage, what's the best comp for Ascension? Are they just both going to go in main comps, Rogue Mage Priest? Um, I could see a world where we do see two Rogue Mage Priests uh, from each side, and they kind of just have at it and see who can make it through this first round. Unfortunately, their next opponent, Power Man, is going to be really scary. And okay, this is not what I was Ooh. expecting. Well, Rogue Mage, not, not unexpected here from the side of Silver Sentinels, You're but right. uh, Ascension with a Mage Lock. Um, and it looks like a, an, I'm trying to identify, Frost Mage Frost. Uh, from Dopamine here in game number one. Yep, Frost Mage. So this is, this is an interesting matchup. I feel like Ascension has kind of the late game advantage. So the problem with Discipline Priest is you're not very mana efficient. So Silver Sentinels is going to have to play a really aggressive game because if it goes on long enough, inevitably Flay will just run out of mana. We're going to have to see solid defense here from the side of Ascension if they want to win and really good offense from Silver Sentinels uh, if they want to have a shot at ending this game a little bit early. They make a swap here onto Whaler. They do get the Bark Skin out of the way and maybe potentially more the Tranquility also. Whaler kept his Trinket, but that was a really good initial push here by the Silver Sentinels. All right, let's see if they can get more here as they're trying to stay on target. They get the Tree of Life. Are they going to cut him down through the Tree of Life? Nosh is just training him at the moment. Gets the Iron Bark immediately. Tries to wild charge back behind the pillar. It looks like they've been going after Flay uh, on the pillar, trying to cut them down, AoE them with the Frozen Orb. This is a really surprising pick uh, on the part of Ascension. I was not expecting to see Wheeler on anything other than a Priest. And honestly, I don't know how good a Druid is going to be in a matchup like this. They're just training him start to finish. Both Nosh and Wheeler Trinket on that setup as Nosh is getting clotheslined on his push. Uh, but now they can maybe just go for the kill on that next Arcane Surge, get all the hots off. Looks like they're poking Dippy for now. Death from above, trying to pre-immune something from the crowd control. Uh, as Naj is navigating behind the pillar here uh, towards Rosita Jones, now pushing forward towards midfield, getting bleeds up on Dopamine, trying to keep his options open here, uh, which is good against a Resto Druid. You don't want the Resto Druid to know exactly where your next target is going to be. Still has Cloak of Shadows, but no trinkets. So they're going to pre-paint Suppression Naj so he can go behind the pillar. But Whaler goes into Bear Form on the Kidney Shot and takes no damage. So really good pre-Bear Form but his teammates are dying thanks to those bleeds that Naj put up earlier. So he's going to need to recover his teammates uh, after that fact. He might even be getting pretty close to an ice block here onto Dopamine. He gets counterspelled. He can't block. And it looks like a big nature swiftness comes through for Whaler as his side will stabilize. Yep. Good push there by Rosita Jones, though. Just trying to find pressure in multiple different areas. Big Arcane Surge going to be cast here onto Dippy. Can they take him down? It's a lot of pressure. Beautiful Ring of Frost there. Drops in from Dopamine to try to slow down the damage a little bit. Flay doing surprisingly well uh, on mana in this match, so really excellently done by him so far in the match. Interrupts here on Dippy once again as he's down to 50% health, looking to get aggressive. Down to 20% health, they might be able to drop him. There's no defense here. Whaler really greedy, opting not to use the Iron Bark there, but has enough healing to keep Dippy alive, and Ascension manages to hold on. 
All right, let's see if they can here. Dippy with no defensives. Gates into the midfield, trying to escape the Rogue Mage Priest and the Haltair on Anaj. Anaj is just chasing him down with that sprint. You can see him gunning in, looking for that kill, killing off that Fell Obelisk. Really important to kill off that little green totem here, buffing up the Warlock's pets. But even with the Iron Bark up, almost taking out Dippy in this position. Rosita Jones playing at the pillar, trying to spell steal those hots, trying to stay ahead. But Naj, oh no, almost goes down. Wheeler slips through with that bash at the last second, but Flay with that Void Shift keeps Naj alive. That was a close call. But now, guess what? Deathmark's available. Where are they going to be going with that? Naj is looking like he's retreating at the moment. He's in stealth. Where is he going to open up? Garot over onto Dippy, dotting up the Felguard pet as well. If they can kill that pet off with cleave damage, it's going to be really good. And decent AoE from an Arcane Mage to support that strat. But Naj is just out in midfield, getting destroyed here. Halotar onto Flay. Pain suppression comes out onto Naj, and he's going to have to retreat back to the pillar. There's no trinket. There's no cloak. If he plays aggressive in this position, it is going to be lights out. Now, if I was Whaler, I would be drinking while the Rogue Mage Priest is retreating. You've got them pinned down because you are not ahead on mana in this position. You are going to need to drink as a Resto Druid in this type of matchup. You're going to get outmanned by every other healer. Otherwise, Rosita Jones is just free casting on Dippy, getting so much damage. Is he just going to die? It looks like he will as Silver Sentinels take game one. Yeah, really impressive push there. And honestly, I, I feel I felt like Flay was going to struggle a lot more with mana in this particular match. So uh, the fact that he was able to hold on, even as we approach you know the four minute mark into the match, makes me feel like Silver Sentinels is going to have a lot of opportunities to win in a matchup like this. The Arcane Mage with the Kleptomania, the Assassination Rogue, I still feel like is really powerful into these different wizard compositions. Uh, I think Rogue overall has fallen off just a little bit, but it's mostly just because of the Rep Paladin. Okay, so Silver Sentinels, it was pretty close for them, though. This wasn't a free win. Um, Naj, Naj was really exposed. Like these pre-bear farm plays by Whaler, totally negates these push. Really like Flay with the heads-up pain suppression so that his rogue can go behind the pillar safely and be protected. Um, but at this point, they just kind of like bait hots onto the pet, bait hots onto an off-target. Uh, and as long as they can survive this setup here, then with Deathmark and Arcane Surge, like there's no way you're healing a Warlock um, with no any resolve and no Iron Bark. This is not going to be stable uh towards this final moment of the game i was just cleaving down dopamine baiting hots onto the mage while rosita and flair are going after dippy on a split push it's keeping pressure on multiple targets and those barrages just hit so hard against demonology warlock just cleaving down everything in front of him power infusion free casting behind the pillar really good positioning to avoid dopamine's counter spell by rosita and they're just able to free cast too much damage uh at that last final moment so Really nice to see Rosita Jones here styling on the Arcane Mage, um, especially because I feel like we were talking about Mage not being in like the best position, but into a Resto Druid, it definitely is still strong, which is kind of why I'm surprised to see Whaler um, using the Resto Druid in game one. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, it worked out for Silver Sentinels for round one, and we're gonna head into round two. We're gonna get through that draft process and see where we go to a map first. Ascension is down, and this is a this is single elimination as well. It's only the first match of the day, and we saw Dragon Roulette kind of win three two series in a row last time around. So I do wonder if the winner of this one ends up having that kind of a winning streak again. Looks like we're heading to Hook Point, um, and that's going to be quite a bit different from the Grand as well. Then, and there's that a comp also from Ascension. I'm a bit surprised to see Ascension didn't kind of lead with this composition first, you know, bringing the rep out in game number one against the RMP, but uh, it looks like they wanted to save it, maybe just test out the mage, dopamine with more of a comfort pick. I'm curious to see if the rep out actually ends up working out better for them in this one. Well, I, I lied. It's not a ret free zone. I'm sorry for anybody that was uh, <laughs> baited by my comments before the series started. I, th I thought none of these players had a ret paladin prepared, but dopamine is apparently going to be playing a retribution paladin. So Silver Sentinels here, um, this is a really tough matchup, right? You've got Sanctuary that can counter the rogue. You've got the pets from the Warlock that can counter the rogue. Uh, Priest is less susceptible to spam spell steal. It's a really small map, so you're going to get stacked up. Um, interested to see how Silver Sentinels are going to navigate this and kind of if the old meta uh, is going to be able to overcome the new meta here, even despite I'm guessing Dopamine doesn't have the most amount of practice um, on Rep Paladin. Could be wrong there, but I'm imagining it's not going to be as much as uh, Silver Sentinels here on their Rogue Mage Priest at least. Yeah, probably not exactly even, but I think Dopamine has been playing it a lot. I, I think a lot of players kind of realized how strong Rep Paladin is and... Uh, you know, they hopped into the solo shuffles, pushed a bunch of raiding, hopped into 3v3, and I I'm really curious. Silver Sentinels, can they get it done here with the RMP? They're one of the teams that kind of really just wanted to stick to their guns. Uh, so can Ascension kind of rise up here? 
uh, with bringing in that Retribution Paladin. Um, I, I think they obviously bring a really meta composition with <laughs> both a Ret and a Demonology Warlock. In theory, this should be really good into Silver Sentinels. Okay, let's see how it does here. We've not seen it with a priest. Either, this could either be really good and even better with a priest in a matchup like this, or just totally bad. Um, I, I don't think it's going to be any sort of like mid-range point here for the side of Ascension. So, so for Sentinels, they're probably facing a comp. You probably see a lot of Red Demo, but not with a Disc Priest. They're moving in immediately with Sprint. Nosh really wants to get a Sap here before they can get combat. They do get the Sap on the way layer. They're going to open up Cheap Shot the Pet so it can't Axe Toss Nosh. He can't afford to use his Evasion like offensively here against the Red Paladin. He's going to need that to survive later on. So I like that stun on the Pet to allow him to get more of a clean opener here onto the Warlock. But even with that clean setup, you know, they only get the dark pact uh from dippy as dopamine is chasing Naj around the map he gets pulled back to the pillar he gets a pre-dismantle here on the shadow fury preventing dopamine from attacking during the avenging wrath now cheap shotty i'm really good control on the rep paladin initially here on the side of silver Sand. oh but that grip on the bomb whaler with an mvp life grip right there pulls dippy out of the smoke bomb yeah really nicely done there let's see what they can get done dopamine continuing the push here onto Naj and the Rep Paladin is going to have so many different tools uh, with the Sanctuary, with the Blessing of Protection to remove a lot of those stun effects. Big pressure here on a Rosita Jones. He gets topped off by Flay. Dopamine down to about 50% health right now as he's looking to make a push. And they make a push here onto Dippy. Good pressure on the side of Silver Sentinels, but this small map is going to be really difficult to get away. Dopamine looking to make a push, but he's a little bit vulnerable here, down to 50% health as the Silver Sentinels are really mixing it up, going after multiple members. Dopamine, if he overextends, seems to be a great target here in the match. And Whaler is burning through his mana. Maybe that is the problem for Ascension. Not having the Restoration Shaman doesn't give them the late game longevity in terms of mana. Uh, and Whaler is really burning through uh, his mana quickly here. All right, they just need to stay alive a little bit longer here. And Silver Sentinels could win on attrition, it seems like, um, against Ascension. And the small map not working out too well. Dopamine just not able to connect, even with the final Reckoning moment here, getting dismantled on his Avenging Wrath. Just really good crowd control on the Rep Paladin from Nodge so far. Looks like they're swapping the Dopamine as he's going to line a sight behind the pillar with that Shield of Vengeance and soak the hits. Flay is so far ahead on mana here. Nodge just poking targets, but his healer is stunned. He's got to be careful. He's stunned now as well. Is he going to go down in the Shadow Fury? Paint Suppression stabilizes him dopamine's chasing flay he gets a hammer oh but it's on dr the hammer of justice is not going to get any value and now flay will be able to free heal Naj knows that he's getting aggressive barrages are flying in they drop the barrier on Naj so he can go for the kill kidney shot arcane missiles flying in polly's onto the ret trying to remove his support from the game as much as possible and rosita jones resetting the cooldowns they've got a death mark and they've got a human and a night elf that they could swap to if they don't want to go after dippy who can remove it here um, with that fire blood, now just trying to go behind the pillar and get a resell. Gets cleaved by that final reckoning, but now final reckoning isn't up, and he's mind controlled. He can't sync it up with his avenging wrath. So much good crowd control on dopamine. He's out of the fight, but Nosh got feared, unfortunately, not able to connect. Uh, just for a second as now dopamine's able to get back in the fight stunning flay going after rosita frost nova on all the pets good crowd control in the demonology pets Nodge, he knows he could be the target here is he going to get a pre-evasion up he's trying to stack on top of flay to break the crowd control and they do break the blinding light with that wake of ashes cleave dopamine sitting through polymers looks like they're swapping to flay a big swap onto the healer flay ready for these hits he trades out the rapture but this is the avenging wrath the kidney shot dopamine on the avenging wrath taking him out of the fight buying time for flay whaler has absolutely zero mana so they just need to find a target that they're going to sink their teeth on to find the kill. I think this should be able to power through here in a moment. Here comes the Arcane Surge. Dippy ports behind the pillar. Activates the Dark Pack. Spamming out those Curse of Tongues. Trying to prevent some damage. With Dopamine's mind controlled at low health. This could be the Divine Shield as he trades out Shield of Vengeance again. The big powered shields. Looks like he will be able to recover and somehow Whaler still healing with absolutely nothing left. And if he can keep this going, his team's in a good position. A bubble for the kill from Dopamine. He's going all in here. Uh, maybe he's just afraid of the master spell later on, but using that divine shield pretty recklessly, that does open him up to death mark from Naj. Actually, he's already committed, so maybe he just bubbled the death mark is what I'm imagining here. Dippy getting crushed in midfield. Barrier comes down. Is it going to be enough? It, dopamine gets knocked out of it. Dippy gets knocked out of it. Dippy ports back behind the pillar. Waylayer is counterspelled. Naj has no evasion. Naj has no cloak. Flays into the stun. It's not just going to go down. We see the spell warding activate onto Dippy. They mass to spell the spell warding. Great counter into a fear on Whaler. This could be the kill. It is unending resolve going to be enough to keep Dippy alive for one more second as Whaler gets the void shift, swapping his health over to Dippy and buying his team a few more seconds on the clock. 
Yeah, nicely done there, but I think Ascension has run out of time. Dippy, no cooldowns left whatsoever. Whaler has no mana. He's going for the Rapture Shields, but with no mana left, those shields are not going to be able to actually fully connect. Hammer of Justice here on Deflay as mana is equalizing. Is there actually a chance that Ascension can pull this into a little bit of a late game? Nosh could be vulnerable. He's got no evasion, no cloak. Is there a chance for Ascension here? It would be an absolute miracle. I feel like Whaler's been out of mana for the last two minutes in this match, but somehow their team does manage to hold on. They are managing to make a push. Uh, and it looks like nobody in this match is safe, and Flay is surely, but slowly but surely, burning through his defensive cooldowns. Silver Sentinels, they need to end this game. They're falling behind somehow. Dippy is just stabilized. This is the power infusion from Whaler, but I, I feel like that's too little too late. Dippy ports away. What? How is he still alive? This is unbelievable. Uh, I think that's going to be it. Dragon's Wrath on Whaler. Silver Sentinel shut it down. And that's like with how long Whaler was able to keep him alive, I honestly feel like he just needs to multi class. Like, even if he's not good at Shaman, I feel like it, it is enough of a counter in this particular matchup that it would be able to actually pull off wins against Silver Sentinel's RMP. I, I really think that they should make that change because I, I, that's got to be the only reason why they lost, just because of the mana. Yeah, I think a healer swap would be good for them here. Um, even Holy Priest, I feel like, has probably better mana than Disc Priest. Um, Druid and Disc Priest are probably the worst mana options that you could go with in this series. Only thing I'm, I'm trying to pay attention to Dippy, you can see his Dreadstalkers kind of following him around and not attacking uh, for a lot of the game. So I'm not sure if his pet was overextending, he was pulling it back on passive a lot, and then his pets were just not attacking because it seemed like he probably lost a lot of damage. Uh, just watching the, the way the pets are moving throughout the fight uh, in this map in particular. So just keeping an eye on, on the, like watch the Dreadstalkers here. They're just standing next to Dippy. Uh, now they're now they're moving forward. Now they're attacking Nosh. So he's going to get some damage and value out of that. Uh, but any amount of little extra damage in this series from the side of Ascension, I feel like they could have even won it here with the Disc Priest. Uh, they, they were very close to the kill. Um, the fact that they actually managed to get Flay out of mana while being out of mana for like the last two minutes uh, was pretty impressive. Um, I wonder, this has got to be their best comm. It's Rhett Demo. It's got to be their best comm. So I don't think bringing in, like, I was thinking maybe a Rhett Hunter, maybe with Palomar. He's been playing Hunter a bit. Maybe that would give them more pressure if they have to win fast, right? If Whaler can only play Priest, maybe it's better to have a Hunter. Hmm. Yeah, I, I really wonder what kind of uh, adaptations that they could make here. Um, curious to see what they end up doing. Um, I think... I kind of, I, I feel like everything about what Ascension did was good, except the Discipline Priest. So I wonder if they go to a small map once again, uh, make it difficult for the RMP to actually get resets, make it difficult for the Rogue to actually get away. Uh, I do like that line of play. So they will be going to Dalaran Sewers. Uh, Silver Sentinel, I think there'll be no change for them. It'll be the uh, Assassination Arcane RMP once again. But how is Ascension going to adapt? Do they go with the Disc Priest or do they mix it up and uh, bring in that Shaman? Uh, we've got Dalaran yeah. Sewers. So I don't think they're changing. I think Ascension's probably doing the same thing here. Small map, cleave, and whether or not Whaler plays holy, maybe. Um, but if it's literally first day shaman, you really think first day shaman can beat Rogue Mage Priest? Oh, they're doing do Rhett Hunter, but they're doing Druid. Why are you doing Druid? Yeah, I feel like I would actually like the Disc Priest here, I think, right? Maybe Druid's okay. Into an I Arcane Mage? Yeah. Yeah, maybe not. Yeah, the kleptomania is pretty. <laughs> well, when you compare the two, I mean, what are the big differences that you're most concerned about, Sid? Well, Druid's gonna oom as fast as the Disc Priest, but your hots are spell stealable, and you can also die. Mm. Whereas the Disc Priest is never gonna die, so you've got to worry about being swapped <laughs> to. You're gonna run out of mana just as fast, or as fast. You don't add any offense. Like if you're a priest, you're adding some damage, like, and you can't die, and the mana is the same. So, well, as a priest, you can be polymorphed. You can be polymorphed. That's a big thing. You got Shadow or Death. You think Whaler with as much experience as you're not fighting a, a sub rogue, like you're not gonna get yeah, stunned into it. Yeah, and... DB into a sheep with like... a BM hunter <laughs> blasting yeah, the, mage the whole game. It could like... happen, yeah, on Dalaran sewers. I, I don't know. If I feel like Whaler should have like at least a man advantage here, maybe. I mean the Kleptomania is kind of devastating, but at least Ascension is bringing in some different compositions. I do feel like ah, yeah, maybe. I was gonna say I do feel like the Demo Warlock is pretty important here against the RMP, but Maybe BM is just as good. Uh, I feel like Cupid is just super strong into mages right now, um, especially on a small map. I wonder if Rosita is going to be able to stay alive. 
Yeah, we'll have to see. Definitely keep an eye out here on Rosita in this map. Dollar and Sewers is the map that we're heading to. Silver Sentinels having a very good series so far. Ascension trying to hold their own, though. Going to switch things up a little bit, see if they can stay in this. But they're going to have to reverse sweep, which is going to prove to be a little bit difficult. So we'll see if this comp swap makes a difference for them in game number three. I really wish Whaler just stayed on Disc Priest and went full aggro and just played into that as their playstyle. This team in the past has always been about aggression and like winning fast, flashy plays. Like, don't try and be the dampener team. And Red, Red Hunter is a good comp. So I feel like this, if they can't keep this alive, then it, I mean, it's over for them. They're down. This is match point. They're going to be knocked out of the gauntlet. It's their last lifeline. And Resto Druid into Arcane Mage Double Purge does not seem too appealing. Uh, at least to me personally, I would not want to be in this matchup right now on a Druid. So Palomar in camo, trying to flare out Nodge, doesn't find it. Ring of Frost, trying to go fishing. Nobody gets clipped by that Ring of Frost. Palomar's going to reposition. Just still trying to pop the rogue out of stealth. They're going to open on dopamine. Palomar sneaking in with that aspect of the cheetah. Lands a freezing trap from stealth and immediately looking to connect damage on the Nodge. I love that hammer of justice on the rogue. Trap and then Hodge the rogue is going to be really good. But it doesn't matter. He just trickets and goes for the reversal onto Palomar and immediately gets aspect of the turtle. Immediately gets divine shield. Are they going to get it? They're so close to it. Oh my goodness. Insane turnaround from Nodge and Rosita Jones despite that disastrous start. Palomar dopamine need to recover. They need to stay aggressive and keep landing freezing traps. But Palomar is getting pushed back so hard. He's nowhere near Flay. He's just dying to damage at the moment. Dopamine's mind controlled off the middle of the map. He's totally out of the fight. Palomar at least stays alive here. They're dropping their souls vortex. I'd imagine Palomar's going to be disengaging across the map here soon. He throws the freezing trap. He gets it with a bash and a notch. Great crowd control by Ascension. And that gets the trinket void shift. If they can survive to another setup, they've, they've got match point. They've got game in the bag right now. They just need to survive and get a clean double stun trap. Yeah, I mean, there's been great offense from Silver Sentinels, but that last setup coming in from Ascension really tied things up here. Naj is going to be in a lot of trouble. Flay has no trinket. Big kitty shot here on the Dopamine. How is Whaler going to keep him alive? Looks like he should be able to stabilize for now. Dopamine still has answers with his Divine Shield as well. So there are answers. Here's the Hammer of Justice onto Flay. Naj on the run, realizing he's in trouble. They actually just make a swap on Flay. And the, you're almost getting one shot there by Dopamine. Polymar was not even in the picture. Absolutely crazy. And here we see Naj also taking quite a bit of damage. So... Good pressure here from Ascension, but Palomar may have overextended. He's caught down on the lower side of the map. Whaler in a position, finally getting in line of sight to connect some heals, and looks like he will be able to stabilize. That was, of course, going to be the Kleptomania, but an overgrowth comes in from Whaler. Palomar should be okay with that one, but Rosita Jones just free casting Arcane Blast. Arcane Blast, beautiful gouge there by Naj, and that is going to be lights out. A beautiful setup there by the Silver Sentinels. Naj coming in with that smoke bomb, with that gouge in the nick of time, and that will be 3-0 here for the Silver Sentinels as they advance in the gauntlet. Really clean games from them uh, throughout this, just avoiding every curveball. I mean, Ascension threw everything at them, right? They played almost every comp available. They played a Caster Cleave in the first game, then they went to a Demo Ret, then into a Ret Hunter. This last game definitely looked the best. Makes me wish that they had been playing this since the beginning of the series um and maybe tried a couple of different healers with it instead and played this comp into their play style uh, the way that i've seen them play in the past so a bit unfortunate to not be able to see any more games from them uh, but silver sentinels are going to advance they're going to now face i believe it's power men if i'm mm -hmm. not mistaken and then shall we after that so power men now this is a red demo team <laughs> if, you, if, if there was going to be a red demo team but also tuna like does he have resto shaman ready to go because in the liquid tournament he played druid um, throughout that and I think Druid could be an exposed point possibly uh, for Rogue Mage to pull off some wins against Rhett Demo so we'll have, to, we'll have to wait and see for that but this is just clean setup at the end of this game you see Naj get a smoke bomb on Palomar which line of sights Whaler here and when he walks into the bomb he walks into a gouge and Rosita just closes out the game don't mean couldn't get in that bomb in time uh, to get him out of the stun lock so really good push there from Rosita look at the damage Rosita was able to get off on Arcane Mage even despite you know how much pressure he might have been under throughout this game so Really well done uh, on the Arcane Mage. Definitely styling with it. Now moving into this next series. They're warmed up, but that was just the first boss of the gauntlet. And there's three more left. Yeah, it certainly was. It sounds like uh, this next one is going to be even more difficult for them. Power men, like you said, Sid. Uh, we're going to be expecting another Rhett here. So, I mean, they, they got that last game. Ascension, they were playing that. And, and they still got a victory. But this is obviously going to be completely different here when we see it with power men. So... We're going to see what they can do in just a little bit. But Silver Sentinels climbing up that ladder uh, to in hopes of advancing to tomorrow's games. 
for the global finals, but there's a lot of teams they got to get through, not only Power Men, but there's Shao Wei, and then there's Team Liquid waiting up there at the top. So no matter which team does end up moving forward, Ben, in this next uh, next series, they're going to have a long uh, and difficult day ahead of them. Yeah, I think that final boss is going to be Liquid. Um, I know all of you had you, them as kind of your prediction to make it into that top four, and it, it is a really solid pick. I mean, Liquid, I feel like, has been putting in more practice and more effort than any other team that I've seen. I mean, they're streaming their practice all day, every single night, playing all the best compositions. So they are fully ready to make it into that top four. So I, I think it's appropriate that they're kind of in that final position to be the final boss. But you have teams like Silver Sentinels obviously putting on the for, uh, an amazing show here today with that RMP. They're going to be going up against the Power Men, uh, which is the team that actually they won uh, the Liquid Tournament, I do believe, right? So Power Men is kind of on fire coming off, uh, you know, kind of a community tournament win uh, with their Ret Demo. Uh, they're a really solid team, and uh, that's why they're kind of my pick to make it into that top four. So this should be a really exciting match. Yep, certainly. So don't miss it. We are going to head to a break. When we come back, it's going to be our second North American Gauntlet series up next. Power Men versus Silver Sentinels in just a bit.
Welcome back, everyone. Second North American series of the day. It's Power Men facing off against Silver Sentinels. All right, we're going to see Tuna on Resto Drid. So obviously not feeling confident on the Resto Shaman in this specific matchup, which could be susceptible to the spell steal of the Mage and the Priest. Uh, but if the Power Men can just stay alive, we saw how much damage Red Demo is able to do throughout Europe and even just that first series that they're absolutely going to be destroying. They're going to trying to Blade Storm out Nodge with his pet, but it gets cheap shot before he can. Clean opener so far for the Silver Sentinels. Tuna's going to rake stun up the Rogue, try and deny his assaults here as Dazed is just tearing them both up. Going for that Wake of Ashes while disarmed, getting the execution sentence rolling while disarmed, using as many globals as possible. Sacrifices up as well. It's like Nox sports back behind the pillar. He's free casting his pets behind the pillar. This is a really good position for him to start building building up that burning legion as he's got the Valfine out onto the battlefield. Nodge is still just poking him away, but he's forced back. Now he's stunned up. He's getting blasted. It's not just going to go down. He Trinket vanishes from the fight. Now Days is swapping back to Rosita and Flay, cleaving them both down. Look at this damage. It's getting eradicated. Anything that Days is touching just gets demolished. Nodge down at 10% <laughs> again, and Flay is trying to recover. Surprisingly, Flay has not panicked. He's been very conservative with his cooldowns throughout this onslaught. Yeah, he's been able to hold on to both his pain suppressions. Might need to trade one right here, though. It might be a little bit too greedy here, honestly. He's trinketing out, and he does access his Void Shift right there. So, trinket, Void Shift, he still has two pain suppressions here. They is now finally in a Fear Nage, getting controlled here as well as Tagonomics is looking to blast off here. Day's now finally in a Kidney Shot, taking a little bit of damage here, but it's like you said, Anything that Days touch turns into ashes, and right now he is looking to take Naj down here. He's got the wings active, and he is dealing devastation. But Naj slows it down there with the disarm, and here comes the damage for Days as well. Now Rosita Jones also getting swapped to their by Thugonomics. They're gonna go for that Hammer of Justice, and here comes the Rake Stun. Here comes the Bash. Big damage. Those those sheeps. Only reason why Naj is actually alive here. That was really nicely done by Rosita Jones. But Rosita Jones now getting swapped to going for that Arcane Surge. It's time to get some offensive pressure going, but he's just not able to find those Arcane Blasts right now. He does manage to sneak a full Polymorph here onto Tuna. This is a good setup here with Arcane Surge with the full sheep, but it's going to be Rosita Jones forced into the Ice Block on their own setup, while Naj is also getting swapped to now as Rosita Jones makes his way to that pillar. Naj now also making his way to the pillar. Flay now caught up in a Hammer of Justice. Beautiful Vortex coming out there from Tuna, and more and more damage is sneaking in. It will be the Pain Suppression for Flay. Play. Blinding light coming out now onto Flay as well as this damage just appears to be endless. Flay's mana not looking too good. Cooldown's also looking not looking too good. He's got the Rapture, he's got the power of barrier, and he might need to trade one of them right now. That's gonna be the Rapture and the PI. They need to find some pressure here. Ergonomics still basically has all of his cooldowns left. Now he's getting blasted once again to 1% HP cheap death procs, and he gets the banish. But now Rosita Jones getting swapped to Rosita Jones also running out of that barrier, trying to run back into it as Flay is basically having a heart attack trying to keep his team alive here Sid. I mean this is a double maybe a triple kill for power men in probably like the next minute uh, at most if they can last 30 seconds uh, to say the least evasions up for Nodge just trying to dodge attacks Flay has zero mana Tuna's in tree form free healing his team he's got efflorescence behind the pillar they're trying to kite away but they're getting flanked off the pillar they're getting smoked out now Thugonomics can be able to free cast Rosita Jones getting stunned up dazed is pushing forward gets kidney shot and pushed back for a moment by Nodge and Rosita's trying to do whatever he can but he gets spell locked on Arcane he can't get any pressure going here comes another Vile Fiend dazed is just hunting down anybody in front of him. He gets full blinded. He's not offensively bubbling. He's not going to want to risk throwing the game in this position, but he's going to get blind sapped, and I do wonder if that blind sap's an opportunity. Flay is actually drinking. Flay is actually getting mana, perhaps not breaking that blind. Will be a mistake later in the game, but here comes the Avenging Wrath. Naj immediately Cloak of Shadows, and he's going for the kill on Thugonomics. He ports away. He's going in. Naj is overextended right now onto Thugonomics, but Dazed is chasing down Rosita, and I don't think that's a good move for uh, chasing Arcane Mage. He's trying to swap back to Naj gets polymorphed. They've held the Rep Paladin at bay. They're doing whatever they can, pulling out all the stops to try and give Flay a little bit of time to recover and try and pull off a miracle. Naj Shadow steps in once again onto Thugonomics. Goes for the kidney shot, but blinding light onto Flay. Rosita's got nothing. Days is swapping back to Naj. He's getting cleaved down and absolutely blasted in game one. The smoke bomb comes in desperation. He's at 1%, but it isn't enough. And the Power Men will overpower Silver Sentinels in game one. Yep, that was... Um... That was definitely a game right there. Naj, what is he gonna do? How is he gonna stay alive? He did some fancy moves there, you know, with the smoke bomb. Tried to stay alive there towards the end of it, but uh, it's just, uh, it seems so tough actually, uh, compositionally right now. Power Man just looking absolutely, you know, 
devastating to go up against here and you can see you know every single time they try to get aggressive here uh, it's just like look at flay right now like this is like the very opener of the match this is when rogue mage is supposed to have you know a lot of pressure and it's just Naj. it's just a highlight reel of Naj dying here again ergonomics this is a great setup here they got the um uh, arcane surge they got the full polymorph flay is there to fear as well rosita jones maybe a little bit preemptive there on the ice block but again they swap over to Naj here they swap to Naj again he doesn't have sheet death and uh, it's once again you know flay and rosita trying to just stay alive trying to drag out the game a little bit trying to buy some time for their cool to come back but just not enough here as you can see they're trying to keep days at bay trying to knock him away they're trying to the dragon's breath and do whatever they can now just trying to get aggressive here once again it's his tuna sitting down for drinks and then this stun lock is really really nice here they get the coil into the rake stun into the uh, pet stun from the warlock and then they connect here and uh, it's just a lock and the druid honestly doing such a great job here thugonomics you know we've talked a lot about thug being kind of the uh destruction king uh only destruction player and uh, well whenever he's not on the thug bear of course uh but it's nice to see him actually pick up the demo warlock as well and uh it was really really clean uh set up there at the end you know they got the stun into the stun or the coil into the stun into the stun and um you know they just capitalized perfectly on the situation they were in so Power man, definitely looking powerful. Most certainly. So that's a game number one victory for them. Silver Sentinels came out of a victory for their last series, but they are down one game so far in this one. And it's single elimination, like we've said so many times. So uh, not a good situation losing the blind pick. And uh, we're going to head into game number two, Sid. What do you want to see them do moving forward? I mean, what else can you really try? Like, are you going to bring in Laros on Warrior and try a Warrior Mage? Maybe that gives you a little bit of extra cleave. Maybe Warrior Pressure is going to be higher on a Warlock. Um, I don't think you're going to be able to out mana. Like, Tuna, when a rest of the dude's confidently re-stealthing, like, frequently and stunning your team, like... Uh, you're not in a good spot. You're not in a good spot when that's going on. So the rest of the Druid, uh, even despite the Arcane Mage um, as, you know, a, a counter to the rest of the Druid, like Tuna did a really good job in this matchup and set up kill windows for his team uh, as a result. So Silver Sentinels, I kind of would like to see it. Maybe maybe a Warrior Mage, just because it's a comp they've played in the past. You could do a lot of cleave damage, swap around on the hots. It might be able to smash them, but they're staying to it. Same with the Arcane Mage, same with the Assassination Rogue. Picking a bigger map, um, so maybe pulling the Ret Paladin, you know, having the Mage 1v1 the Ret, if you can get that position ever, like where he's chasing him, is probably their best shot of winning. Uh, but it's really on Dazed, right? Like if he chases the Mage too much, then he's he's feeding. So he's just got to recognize when <laughs> he's chasing the Mage too much and not chase the Mage uh, in those positions. So it, I'd still say it's going to be leaning towards the Power Man. It's kind of on them if they're going to make mistakes, I think, to lose here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and how comfortable in your mind, uh, Zico, does Days look with the Red Paladin? I mean, is this a mistake that you expect him to make by overextending and kind of tunneling the mage? Or, is, you know, is he going to be able to have the foresight to have that patience to kind of stick behind if they're trying to bait him to 1v1 the mage? Well, the thing is, I feel like that's not like a red specific thing. Uh, that's just, if you're a good melee player, you're not going to really make that mistake too often. And Days, of course, was also a fantastic rogue. We've seen him, you know, in the past on that. So I don't think uh, that's going to be a, a big mistake that he's going to be doing. And in general, uh, you know, he looked comfortable on the red. Like he was getting, you know, a good crowd control. He was pushing in when he uh, felt like he needed to. He was kind of harassing the priest and the mage at the end of that last game. And then, uh, you know, as soon as the setup happened on this rogue, he started crossing the map and, and making his way to that target. So... Uh, I feel like for uh, for a red paladin, uh, it really just comes down to how fast you can be with your utility, and then just like small things like knowing how to maximize your burst, maximizing uh, your rotation. And uh, I think as long as he doesn't do that, and as long as he doesn't throw his bubble like offensively when he doesn't need to and things like that, uh, I think Dez uh, is going to be looking prime so far. Uh, and uh, right now, this is in a sap. They're going to be opening up here onto Thugonomics on the side of the Silver Sentinels. But again, Tuna is there blocking it with offense, you know, getting those rake stuns and uh, slowing down kind of that opener. And now comes the Hammer of Justice. This could be Dazed. Uh, uh, actually, this could be Flay's Pain Suppression. And uh, it looks like uh, they're actually going to be able to stay alive with that. Just trading out the barrier there. So, so far, pretty good trades. Uh, and as I say that, Naj, what is going on here? Naj dropping to 10% HP. Activates the Cloak of Shadows there. And then now going for that Smoke Bomb play here on Thugonomics. But look at that. There's a Tyrant free casting onto Naj in that Smoke Bomb. I feel like he does kick it there. But 
He definitely took a lot of hits. He's taking a lot of hits. Doesn't have Taco Shadows. That Tyrant is doing so much work in the back line. Hammer of Justice coming out. Nice blast wave there by Rosita Jones. Uh, trying to kind of stop that pressure a little bit. But that Tyrant, I feel like, got so much value there. Almost KOing Naj, Naj in the opener. And already costing them a lot of mana and a lot of resources here, Sid. Oh, that crowd control into Naj and Flay. Oh. They both can't play. Is he going to go down today as Naj holds on at 50%? <laughs> Training out the Vanish and Trinket, now stunning up Thugonomics, but they just can't break his defense. And Thugonomics is, he's kind of like BM. He's not even playing Dwarf into an assassination or he's playing Orc. So his death marks are going to connect and sit and he's tanking them so easily. Look at this pressure onto the pillar. Dazed is all over them right now. Just a wrecking ball on that Rep Paladin, cleaving everybody. Vortex pulling them together. Paint Suppression onto Nosh, stun onto Flay. Nosh just might die through Paint Suppression. Dazed Trinket's under the Kidney Shot to go for the kill. Rosita is free casting, but gets pushed back by the Shield of Vengeance and now Nosh is on the run. Once again, trying to avoid Dazed at all costs with economics is on the other side waiting for them on the flank of the pillar there's nowhere they can go that they're safe they're trying to fear days but even that is not enough he is unfazed as he continues to push forward here as flay's trying to recover mind control finally on the days pulling him off the pillar as Naj goes back behind it attacking the pet for a moment building up some combo points for his next push here on the thugonomics but it just seems like they can't break their defense this is a blind play this needs to get a big cooldown they get tuna's trinket so swapping to tuna could be an option but flay is he just gonna die he's stunned Whoa. up by dazed at the moment he trades out pain suppression, gets a big shield. Now swap onto no oh. massive pressure over to him. Cheat death, void shift, everybody in trouble. This is an absolute nightmare situation for Flay. Just every second of this game is a living hell for him to heal through. Oh my goodness, they got everything right there. And now Flay's in a full fear. Naj has his Cocoa Shadows in three seconds. He might have to trade it out instantly when he gets it. He's dropping super low, but Flay does manage to come out of that fear. Manages to keep him alive for a little bit, but there it is. He gets stunned. He pre-cloaks the stun, but look at Flay. This Flay's is a double dead. kill right now. Flay is just getting absolutely crushed here by the red. Naj is getting absolutely crushed by Thogonomics. And once again, it's just so much pressure. And they have every defensive cooldown available. Thogonomics finally using that gateway defensively here trying to get away uh, from the Naj there trying to build some distance Days getting feared arcane search coming out and this is the damage this is the big hit from the arcane mage and we're just sitting down drinking right now going for the restart there's the rake stun and if days can connect onto that that is just it there is no sheet death available for Naj look at Flay just instantly getting tap targeted to and deleted as well right after the power man uh, they have definitely been powering up and uh this is just such a scary team right now. The Red Demo, you know, we've been talking about the Red Warrior, we've been talking about the Red Demo. These are really, you know, what we consider the best comps right now. And the Power Man looks so good at it. It's just perfect. <laughs> Everything they're doing here just looks so good. Like, look at the situation here. Full Hodge, full stun, pre cloaks is stun. Ergonomics is killing the Rogue. This is killing the Priest. Both of them dying. Naj activates his Battle Master, and Naj activates his Cloak. Naj trying to just stay alive here. And they, you know, they fear up days, they cheap shot days, they get some counter pressure, the economics gates away, they try to buy themselves a little bit of time right here, and then as soon as they go in and they play aggressively, look at Tuna, he just sits here in bear form right now, doesn't want to get swapped to, then he restuffs as soon as he drops combat, and then as soon as he drops combat, he sits down, and he goes for that rake stun that we're going to see in a minute here, and now Shadow sure stepping back in, gets rake stun, and then he just push forward, Flay gets axe tossed, and uh, now just gets absolutely destroyed. So, uh, just uh, this this is definitely a team that's been practicing this comp, and uh, they definitely know what they're doing right now. Yeah, well, it certainly helps when you've got Thug that's already been playing lock for so long at this level in in a competitive environment as well. But uh, yeah, what a lethal composition. You know, we've got Days on the red, Thug on the lock. What is it about these two classes, these two specs that are doing that are that are doing so well together? That synergy that is there, Zico. Like, what are we seeing them? partner up with well it's just you know the demonic well uh, warlock in general uh, they're just super strong right now they got so much disruption you know their pets they got the axe toss they got the spell locks they got the coils they can go hall of terror as well if they rather have that they got the fierce and they're also you know the most durable caster i would say right now so warlocks just uh, in a really really good spot plus they have that big hit we saw it at the start of this match with that demonic tyrant you know as soon as that thing comes out you basically have to respect it you have to either crowd control it or run if you tank it the way he kind of nudged it he kind of dropped a smoke bomb and he tried to get counter aggressive you know counter aggressing a tyrant if there's a tyrant and it's free uh, it will be doing you know a lot of damage and also um you know the pet providing that mortal strike effect 
that is a big reason why you know red warrior is so strong you know you have two melees and then one of them brings you know all the utility of the rat all the you know tankiness that the red brings as well you know they're very hard to kill we got a lot of new tools this patch like um, divine protection uh, it's uh, basically like a bark skin for a rat you could say uh, and then they also you know in addition of the unbound freedom they got the blessing of protection blessing of sacrifice they can remove stuns on their teammates they just have a lot of uh, different ways that they can save their teammates you know uh, so when you pair that up uh, you know with something that has a mortal strike effect uh, like a demonic uh, dem demo warlock you know uh, or a warrior all of a sudden when they pop their wings they're gonna have that extra you know healing reduction in addition to those wings uh, and it's just gonna be really really hard to deal with as we can see here for flay poor flay he is just spamming cooldowns from start to finish in these matches. You know, this priest, they want to stay ahead. They want to be offensive. They want to do damage and kind of, you know, play from ahead. And somebody, you know, activates a cooldown. They want to pain suppression that person that's getting targeted, you know, at 80% HP so they can continue to do damage, continue to hammer out offensive dispels, go for fears. There's none of that here. Flay is just, he's just trying to catch up the whole game all the time uh, because there's just people getting stunned left, right, and center. He's getting swapped. There's rogues getting swapped through. Everybody's just getting absolutely destroyed. He pushes in for a fear. His mage has to ice block. You know, it's just uh, definitely tough uh, for the Silver Sentinels right now in this matchup. Yeah, it seems for sure like a, a difficult position to be in, but Silver Sentinels, you know, we know what they are capable of. They have made it this far. They had an incredible season together as well. Uh, you know, the first time that we've seen them as a roster in competitive play this season. So we'll see what can, they can do, but their backs are certainly up against the wall. This is match point for Power Men, Sid. I didn't expect that I would, I don't even know if ever I expected this, where I'd have sympathy for Rogue Mage. Uh, in, in competitive play, but right now they are getting absolutely blasted here <laughs> in this series. I almost thought Nodge was going to swap uh, classes locking in hook point because they went from a big map, now they're on a small map, so they're making their lifeline even smaller. If they don't win this game quick, I think it's going to be over for them. Uh, it's like an obviously setting down his gateway, setting down his port. Nodge is getting in position, gets a sap onto the Rep Paladin, but that pet is Blade Storm. He dodges the Blade Storm, gets the cheap shot onto Thugonomics. Looks like he wants to kidney shot the Druid, though. Otherwise, he would have used his kidney shot on the Warlock here. So Nodge is getting ready to swap, but he might drop before he gets the opportunity. He ports back into a Ring of Frost. There's the swap on a Tuna. Can they take him out? Can they finish him? Where's the Sanctuary from Dazed? It's surprised to not see it. It actually just goes for a Blessing Protection. That denies the Death Mark. Oh, but he trank shields on top of it. Bit of an overlap. This could be an opportunity for Silver Sentinels. He also used the uh, sacrifice right there. So huge defensive overlap here. Uh, they might have an opening there onto Tuna with that next kidney shot potentially if they can get some control onto Dazed and Thugonomics. But right now, Flay is getting swapped. There's that next kidney shot onto Tuna. He gets sanked. And look oh at Flay. He might just go down here. Triple DR bash coming through. Flay on 1% HP. Activates the pen suppression. And he should be fine with that. Uses that Desperate Prayer. Uses double Radiance. Gets the fear out as well defensively. Tries to play some catch up here onto Naj. And, uh, you know, both teams going out after each other's healers definitely looked a little bit better when the red uh, did it uh, but now this kidney they don't have anything to another with a beautiful pre-bear form as well as that bark skin i don't think he's gonna go down through that and Naj once again that's the second pain suppression immediately being popped there now they're swapping over to rosita jones as Naj is ducking away with that cooldown on him and they're gonna sheep up dazed here in that next kidney shot, they're going to have the Blessing of Sanctuary, which can just dispel it. So they need to make sure they have cross prior control here onto Dazed. Uh, I would like to see a blind onto Dazed and then a kidney shot onto Tuna. And that's exactly what they're doing, actually. Beautiful setup here. This could actually force it something. Can they get a follow-up? They do have a DR Fear, but Naj wanted to go for the Sap there as well. So they actually dropped the chain. And Tuna, once again, reading these swaps beautifully, trying to preemptively bear from, trying to preemptively heal himself, make sure that these swaps aren't as deadly as they possibly could be. He's going to allow him to stay alive once again. That's going to be the blind. That was a clean oh, setup. No. But it's not going to be enough. And now Naj is in so much trouble. Void shift coming out there for Flay. That is their last cooldown, Sid. Uh, Rosita, he's got nothing here. He's so low. He pops some mirror images. Flay's trying to pick him back up in this fight by their team. Any sort of opportunity, any sort of miracle to pull off in this match. But being such a small map, here comes the execution sentence. That hammer from the sky is getting closer and closer to Rosita Jones. He needs to be in that barrier to deny its collision here. 
and it looks like it will soak the hit. Rosita will be able to survive, but they're stacking up. That blade storming pet's going to start getting some pressure. They dismantle Daze. They get Thugonomics on the back foot. They go after Tuna. He sanctuaries the kidney shot. Naj gets stunned and intercepted in midfield. These Ursul's Vortex Star Surge is coming in onto Naj as well. They swap back to him. He needs to make a cloak here. He goes for the kidney cheap shot on today's Garot on the Thugonomics, slowing down the damage just a little bit further. Mana is surprisingly even if there was an opportunity for the Silver Sentinels to pull off a miracle, but Tuna's into tree form. He gets kidney shot, but Naj is feared. He needs to be get dispelled on the sphere right now. He can't get any damage onto Tuna with that kidney shot. He goes for a DR cheap shot. He's going all in to try and take him out. Will it be enough? They knock Dazed away with the blast wave, but Naj is just coiled into a bash. Cheat Death is his last line of defense. Will they proc it? Will they kill him through it? So much damage incoming. Shadow Steps back behind the pillar. Trades out the feint, looking to restop, but now Rosita's he's overextended. He's getting swapped to. He tries to blink back to his teammates here at the pillar. Naj getting a garrote onto Daze, trying to get combo points. Kidney shot. Daze trinkets it. Daze smells blood in the water. He's going oh. for the kill here on Matt point looking to advance and somehow some way nosh survives once again but like where are the opportunities here you still got divine shield you still got a trinket on the druid there's no lines for the silver sentinels to take at this point they're just floundering to stay alive on hook point here they're getting cleaved by the pets behind the pillar days is going in for the kill triple shadow fury flay trades out rapture doing everything that he can to give his team any sort of opportunity but vortex pulls rosita from behind oh. the pillar and absolutely shredding him down with all of those pets but still actually alive unbelievable Unbelievable that the Silver Sentinels are still alive right now. What an insane vortex, but they're not out of the woods yet. Rosita Jones blinking back into the barrier and dazed. He doesn't want to overextend here and get caught up behind the pillar. He doesn't want to throw the game, but they are just winning this one slowly. Full blind onto Days. Rosita Jones getting lower and Away. lower here. How is he going to stay alive? Flay working with fumes right now. Ring of Frost on the pet. There's a big blade storm coming out from the Felguard as well. Thugonomics trying to duck in there, trying to get some work done. Thugonomics is actually gating back to his healer right there. Tuna has been able to sit down for a drink. Flay once again, actually sitting down for a drink. Now she gets a restyle, and all of a sudden, they're able to actually execute a little bit here. The execution sentence, though, doing a lot of work here on Rosita. Flay caught up in a hammer of justice. They might just take down Flay here. Do they have any follow up? They don't even need it. Flay gets absolutely blasted. And Thugonomics actually did have a, a coil right there, but he just used it on the rogue instead, potentially to peel, uh, maybe to stop that kidney shot. But he could have actually hodged into that coil as well and just extended that CC chain even longer and, and then just taken down Flay. But they didn't even need that coil. And uh, the Power Man are going to advance here uh, to continue fighting here in this uh Gauntlet, what an insane performance though. That was a complete stomp, honestly, from start to finish. It did not look too good here for the Silver Sentinels. Oh, the map. I mean, they picked a small map because they wanted to be more aggressive, see if that could work out for them, but then they just stack up here. Those vortexes from Tuna were just so lethal throughout this series, just grouping them together, and that's the downfall against this composition. If you stack up, you're dead. If you get isolated, you're also kind of dead <laughs> to the rep file and you're <laughs> overextended, so it's like you're in a checkmate position pretty much no matter where you go uh, in this particular matchup, but they they fought valiantly here. Uh, but their last days defending in the AWC for at least season one is going to be over here in this series. Just absolutely overwhelmed. So many close calls. Like, how's Naj alive during this setup? Void Shift comes through for Flay, and Rosita gets swapped to. He's at 10% trying to carry his team, but they just can't dent them. Like, they're doing everything they can just to keep the boat from sinking, but they're never actually sailing <laughs> the seas. They're just pulling water out of the boat, just desperately trying to keep it, <laughs> keep it above water with no opportunities really to go anywhere. Like, there's, there's a blind on the ret, and Rosita is still dead. <laughs> He's crowd controlling the pets. Rosita is just trying to CC pets here to buy some time. And then Flay's like, oh my God, I might be able to get a drink, guys. Maybe we can win right here. I'm getting a drink, guys. I think we can do this, guys. I'm shadow melded. I'm drinking. I'm getting mana. We can win. We can win. We can win. Flay's trying to keep morale up on the team while everybody's dead. And then Daze is like, yeah, no, you're not. You're stunned. You're dead. <laughs> See you later. Nice mana bar. <laughs> <laughs> and just kills him in the stun. Just absolutely brutalized. Uh, I mean, that, that was a great reset, though. Sorry, I am. I was just gonna say the way you described that, Sid. I've never felt more bad for a team loss. I think ever. <laughs> I was getting a little <laughs> emotional at the end there, uh, but go ahead, Zico. And I, I mean, uh, there was a it was a great analogy for sure. Uh, I think. Uh, uh, the only thing is, I don't think they were using buckets to kind of remove the water from the they're boat. Using they're using spoons. Like, yeah, they're using, they're using spoons, forks. Like they're actually using forks. To <laughs> the water. It's like <laughs> watching Shawshank Redemption. They're just like trying to, to hack away, trying to, to trying to get out. Dig a uh, hole just, with a uh, plastic knife through a cement wall. <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> yeah, pretty much. 
Uh, that was rough for sure, but now we have the Power Man. Uh, this is a team, you know, that Van Rooke actually predicted to win the entire North American gauntlet here. And, uh, I mean, uh, they look very good so far. They're going to be going up against Shall We uh, in their next series. And then the winner of that, of course, will face the gauntlet boss, a.k.a. Team Liquid. Yes, certainly will. So quite a few difficult teams for Power Men to get through if they uh, want to move on to the grand finals tomorrow. And um, yeah, like Zico mentioned, Shall We is going to be the first team up next and then Liquid kind of waiting there at the end. And so far we haven't had two teams. We haven't had a team play uh, win twice in a row like we did in EU. It's kind of just been like one team getting knocked out after the other. So we'll see if Power Men is the first one that does it up next against shall we and uh we are gonna head to a break but i mean real quick you know power man i know ven did predict for them to win but shall we in this series do either of you think that they can pull this one off uh yeah i i think they have a shot but i think power man definitely uh they definitely you know are a tight end i think they would be favored but we don't really know exactly what shall we has been practicing as well you know we saw a lot of uh you know rogue mage uh, rogue shadow priest uh, coming out of these guys uh but i do believe they have a warlock mage potentially which i think could be a decent answer uh i know that nick has been kind of the multi-classer of this roster he's kind of been playing a little bit of everything and i know that Korlik does play uh the shaman as well so they could have a shaman uh and then maybe they could play some uh yeah some kind of wizard cleave uh, which i think could be potentially an answer or they could just kind of flip the script go for a melee cleave as well so i think uh, they're, they're very um a flexible roster and they have a lot of talent there so i don't think it's gonna be quite as easy uh, as we saw here against the silver sentinels just due to the fact that silver sentinels great players but kind of tied to one comp that has fallen out of flavor a little bit yeah yeah well let's uh see how they do against shall we we're gonna head to a break when we come back it is power men facing off against shall we up next
Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome back. Shall we facing off against Power Men? Winner of the series, moving on to face off against Team Liquid to see who makes it into the global finals. All right, here we go. It's going to be Retribution Paladin, Feral Druid versus Rep Warrior. So a bit of a surprise here from Shall we? Just going full on Rep Paladin, Warrior, Mistweaver. This is going to be an absolute bloodbath. All six members in the middle of the map putting out maximum amounts of damage. And this is just going to be a huge pressure situation. Anyone could fall at any moment. Ernie right now getting swapped to Nick at the same time, popping that die by the sword. And this is going to be an unbelievable amount of damage from both sides. Uh, Tuna trades out as he's getting targeted down. And it's just all about making those hard hitting swaps, going after different members. Oh, he was getting low. Finally connecting some heals of full fear here on the two nights, forced to trade out the trinket. And that will allow him. It's actually the sanctuary coming in that allows him to get out of that. Get some heals here on the fuse at the same time. Uh, Nick's house going to be going down, and this is just this is a very chaotic match. Absolutely insane. Kearney might just go down behind the pillar. He does manage to activate that life cocoon. Tuna getting a blessing of protection. Fuse is now getting swapped to. Nick is getting swapped to. He's got no die by the sword. Cabbage trinkets out. Drops the sanctuary. Fuse dropping dangerously low here. Goes into bear form. Activates the survival instincts. Nick now and Kearney both getting cleaved down. There's a vortex on the ground as well. Fuse just bleeding up everything. Doing maximum DPS here. Everybody is just stacked up in this melee blender ball right now. That's it. Everybody's taking huge damage. And that is going to be it. We're going to see see the mist weaver just get absolutely dropped but look at the cross kill potential cross here kill, cross oh kill. my goodness he's so close what is going oh my god what <laughs> what is going on here everybody's just getting deleted in midfield then yeah i mean that is like a that's crazy when you see these kind of mirror matchups where it's like uh, mist weaver that's playing the fist weaving build uh with a rep paladin with another melee it's basically all six members just in the middle of the map switching targets it's very chaotic uh sometimes the mistweaver healing can actually be a little bit unreliable too so you're not exactly healing who you want and it just it makes for a very kind of like <laughs> explosive matchup but i feel like in this particular matchup i you have to give a little bit of an edge to the warrior i think just having sharpened blade every single time you want to kind of burst down a target gives you you know a, a lot of flexibility in those moments where you can actually burst and it's really difficult for your healer to kind of deal with that so a good pick here by shall we in game number one and uh yeah uh the power man what are they going to do uh, how are they going to mix it up here because i i feel like this is not really that solid of a matchup for them yeah i mean this was an interesting pick for sure i mean they this was a very close game, though, as well. Uh, I mean, look at this swap here to Tuna. Tuna gets absolutely blasted. And then as soon as Tuna goes down, uh, look what happens after that. Fuse actually getting a cross kill. I do believe he actually killed somebody uh, on the I cross I don't even know what actually, happened. I think they actually almost killed two people here. So they killed Daze. Is going Kearney down. and then Daze and Fuse got double killed. Yeah. They, what? Oh, yeah. Kearney uh, lived, what? by the way. He actually survived 1% uh, health. Oh wow. my goodness. That was insane. They were they were very dead at the end. Yeah. Take a look <laughs> at let's look take a look at the damage and healing. Uh, pretty even across the board, right? I mean Tuna and Kearney got similar damage out. Uh Dazed and Calvish. A little bit of a difference there, not nothing too crazy, and then Nick and Fuse, but I really think the big thing for this match, even even with the sharpened blade, I mean, it's such a close game, right? I mean, they almost managed to take mm -hmm. down the Mistweaver if they just had survived one more setup. Uh, they would have ended up winning that one. So a super chaotic match. I really can't tell who's going to win this. Like, this is <laughs> this is crazy. And to make it even more chaotic, we're going to hook point. <laughs> I actually don't. Too big. <laughs> I don't think the map matters at all. I think no matter what map you go to, it's going to be just a little area that all six members are hanging out in. <laughs> <laughs> all, they all go in the room under the under the building over there. All six of them just head in there. Sounds like a party. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, no, I was going to say, uh, although this matchup is really chaotic and everyone's health is spiking and, you know, it could be difficult to tell what's actually going on. I think the main kind of strategy for both these teams is going after the Mistweaver. And the best way to go after the Mistweaver is to make sure that every single time you stun him, you're also getting a stun on the Retribution Paladin. So he's slow to react with his uh, Blessing of Sacrifice, his Blessing of Sanctuary, the Blessing of Protection. So whoever can do these kind of rinse repeat setups onto the Mistweaver Monk, kind of concentrate their damage during those double stun moments, uh, I think is the team that's going to pull out ahead. Yeah, right, well, definitely. I, I think it's... Uh... Go ahead. 
I was going to say, I, I think it's uh, going to be absolutely key to go after these mist weavers. And maybe that is the thought process by unlocking in the smaller map, just to try to have, uh, you know, a little bit of an edge in, in trying to kind of chase down the mist weavers. Uh, because we did see a couple of close calls there on Kearney as well, where he kind of teleported behind the pillar. So maybe they want to just be able to reconnect a little bit sooner. Uh, but then again, like you said, you know, both teams have a mist weaver. So uh, it definitely could happen on either side here. And, um, we have the game started right now, game number two between Shawi and the Power Man. And this is a, a Zug Cleaver. If I've ever seen it, let's see what they decide to do. Immediately opening on onto Kearney here. Full Hodge onto Calvish. Days getting stunned as well. Kearney immediately teleporting back. And they're just going to train Kearney here right now. Getting good damage. He actually teleports back. A line stomp coming out now. So he's going to be able to access a lot of heals here in the midfield. And yeah, I think we've decided on our spot in the map where we're going to be hanging out. And right now, Fuse actually dropping very, very low. Gets the life of Nick as well. Trading out the die by the sword. Everybody so far trading big cooldowns. There's going to be Kearney once again here. Caught up in a leg sweep. He has no trinket. And he's dropping quite low there. But he does manage to catch a big heal there from the red uh, i wonder if that was actually the lay on hands that came out right there actually no it wasn't it was just a big heal uh, restore out and uh, that was the restore all there so uh Kearney definitely trading out a little bit of his cooldowns early on tuna now as well getting swapped to getting crushed here too now what is he gonna do he's got no life cocoon he's just hanging out in the midfield trusting in his kicks right now to keep him alive and so far uh, it looks good uh, for team power man yeah, that was a blessing of protection trading out there by Dazed, and they're running out of answers to actually keep Tuna alive. There's really good pressure. Intimidating shout coming in, and that slows them down a little bit. Sanctuary comes from Dazed to get Tuna out of the Hammer of Justice. Now they're making a swap over onto Fuse, and this is just so difficult for Tuna to actually keep him alive. It looks like he will go down, and I mean, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I, I, I am a little bit surprised about how this is playing out. Shall we? They are looking good. They're looking very prepared. And I mean, I'm, I'm just going to say it. Like, I did not expect them to have this composition and play it at this level. Like, they've obviously practiced this a lot. They're looking really good in these kind of mirror matchups. And they they might be the team to beat if they can play this Rhett Warrior Mistweaver at such a strong level. They're looking like they might 3-0 Power Man, which I certainly didn't expect. Yeah, I don't think anybody expected this. I was I was kind of voting for Power Man to be kind of the favorite heading into this match. I thought maybe we were going to see some Wizards come out of Shall We, but they've just completely flipped the script here, picked up, uh, you know, a triple uh, meta comp here. And it's interesting to see, you know, how well they've adapted to this as well. I mean, look at this damage coming out. And there was a couple of close calls there onto Kearney uh, early on as well, like uh, around this time when he teleported and then he put it back into the midfield, uh, kept himself alive and... Yeah, I feel like um, these blinding lights also are not ideal. Um, you know, when they go out, Fuse just kind of loses all of his damage. So uh, I feel like uh, we might need to see a comp swap here. We might need to see uh, maybe potentially Thug tagged in here or something. Because right now, Shao, we are just walking away with the series here. You know, they tried the melee cleave twice and... Uh, maybe they don't want to lock in the the lock into the warrior rat. We've kind of seen what happens there, but it might just be their you know better option because the feral druid so far definitely struggling compared to you know having an arms warrior providing like you said you know the mortal strike, the sharpen blade, and uh, you know even if the feral druid and the arms warrior are doing the same damage, the arms warrior is going to be more effective just because the arms warrior is going to provide that big big uh, healing reduction. Hmm. Yeah, certainly a difficult position to be in. We'll see if they do end up making any of those comp swaps. We are heading to Ash Mains as well, so quite a lot of room to maneuver around. So seems like they're going to completely change up strategy from the last game that we did see, shall we? They are on match point, so it's been a very convincing series for them so far. Um, is this kind of where you expected this series to end up at this point, Zico? Definitely not. Like... Uh... I, like I said, I think, uh, you know, heading into this, I was kind of voting Power Man to be the uh, kind of team to beat in the series. But shall we have just uh, kind of blown us all out of the water here uh, with this uh, surprise, uh, bringing in, you know, Nick on the Warrior, Calvish picking up the Rat, you know, and uh, just able to perform so well right now uh, on this cleave and kind of out cleaving uh, the Power Man. And uh, we'll see, you know, they tried going to a small map. And now they're going to try to go to a big map. They're going to continue uh, with the same composition. So maybe they really feel like this is uh, their best option on the side of Power Man. And, uh, you know, these guys, these have been really close games. I mean, if we go back to the to the very, very first game, 
Uh, there was definitely cross kill, you know, written all over that game. Kearney was on one percent HP. Uh, if they could have, if they had their Mist Weaver alive there, he for sure would have just got in touch of death and died. So uh, there's, you know, small, small things that he could potentially change uh, that could uh, turn this one into their favor. Um, so we'll just have to see what the Powerman decide to do. I don't think this series is uh, just over uh, just yet, you know. I think that there's definitely uh, room to kind of do a reverse sweep here as well for the Powerman if they can kind of figure it out. Yep, I could see them doing that as well. Uh, you know, Power Men, incredible team. They've had an incredible season, and they've certainly been in this position before. It wouldn't be the first time that we've seen a reverse sweep. So we'll see what we can do uh, on the side of Power Men here in Game 3. They've locked in Ashamane's Fall, so hopefully they've got something up their sleeve to get a victory here in this third game because uh, they have to, like Zico said, they have to reverse sweep. If they lose one more, they are out. And shall we will be moving on. So game number three, Ashamane, shall we versus Power Man. Here we go. Another explosive match in store for us. And this could be potential match point. Shall we just one away from eliminating Power Man from the tournament, which is, I think, a total upset uh, for most people. Let's see what they can do, though. Calvish on this Restribution Paladin has been looking good so far. Double Blinding Light coming in. Days looking to get aggressive here on the Kearney very early on. So getting that crowd control on Calvish, going after Kearney. That's going to be the main line to play, but they're looking to get reverse pressure here on the Tuna. Keep in mind, it was Fuse that fell in the last match. So all three members, all six members in this match are actually really vulnerable to this kind of blender ball. But Fuse taking a lot of damage. Kearney forced to shut out the Life Cocoon in the meantime as both teams are trading out cooldowns to try to stay ahead of the damage and keep their Mystery Weaver Monks active in the match. Yeah, so so far both teams, no Life Cocoon. Nick already trading out his Trinket and his Die by the Sword. Nice Triple Fear here. They're trying to set up onto Tuna out of it. They get a stun there onto Tuna. Uh, Trinket from Dazed. Sanctuary comes out there as well. Fuse uh, also trading out his Bark Skin. So a uh, very, very even right now. Oh. Cooldowns with Kearney dropping so low here. Kearney gets the Blessing of Protection right there in the nick of time. And he will be able to stabilize with that. Now they actually get the Blessing of Protection onto Tuna as well. Tuna actually still uh, not out of the woods r right now and Kearney getting swapped to once again he's gonna have to trick it as well as actually another sanctuary comes out there from Calvish this time and Tuna still tricking a lot of damage here dropping quite low another hammer of justice there's no way out for him unless he trinkets this one and he will use every man for himself right there Nick now getting swapped to and getting blasted here huge damage coming out here from both of these red paladins Fuse now gets the life cocoon and Tuna yeah. here on 1% HP can he stay alive Nick. touch of death comes out Nick is a 1% HP as well Fuse gets absolutely blown up out of the water right there and that was whew, that was a lot that was a lot of damage Jeez, that was wow it's <laughs> <laughs> hard to keep up <laughs> yeah <laughs> All right, well, take take a breather we're gonna we're gonna take a look at the replay and we can kind of maybe catch what happened <laughs> Yes, in slow motion, please. <laughs> yeah, 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 you hear his production, please. <laughs> oh, there we go. You listen. All right. Well, All right. you can see it's just it's so chaotic. I mean, what it, what what this game basically comes down to is trading out your defensives at, at a time where you can kind of keep your misweaver active in the fight. Like basically, what you want is your misweaver to constantly stay in the fight dealing damage, Mini can heal. If he has to like kite and run away, things just kind of spiral out of control. So you have to be trading out, you know, the Blessing of Protections, the Revival, uh, the Life Cocoon, the Fortifying Brew, um, everything you can to just make it show your Mistweaver doesn't have to panic and just keep ahead of the damage. Uh, you can see right now, Nick is getting incredibly low, but it's at this point, Tuna really doesn't have much left. It does have his Trinket, but it's just an overwhelming amount of burst damage. Tuna is trying to kite away. It looks like he does manage to for a little bit, but forced to come back. I mean, as soon as he rolls away, they go after Fuse. He trades out the Life Cocoon, doesn't have Life Cocoon for himself. And then Tuna's just in a world of trouble. Although they almost oh. get a cross kill here on Nick. Goes down to like 5% health. And uh, I think this is where things get really interesting because there's like, there's its own little meta within like the Rhett Fist Weaver. So there's like Rhett, Rhett Fist Weaver, and then you can bring in different melee and... What's interesting is I think one of the best melee you can have uh, in this kind of matchup is actually a Windwalker. So you play double monk, Rhett Paladin, um, I think is probably the best in like the, me the melee matchups. Uh, so that might be perfect for Liquid. I mean, if we see Shall We run this composition and they play against Liquid with Trill on the Windwalker monk, uh, this could be looking really, really good um, for Liquid if Shall We doesn't have something else prepared. 
<laughs> that, that's going to be very interesting to see because you know Trill on that Windwalker as well is uh, just an absolute menace to deal with. So uh, this could be a little bit of a preview of what we're going to see. But look at Kearney here. Uh, two killing blows on the Monk. And uh, I mean, we saw it on the replay. Nick was at 1% when he got that big heal and he was actually able to stay alive. So uh, definitely a really close series. You know, I feel like this is one of those series where it's a 3-0, but it could have just as easily been a 3-2. It could have been a 3-1, you know. Uh, that first game could have definitely gone in favor of the Power Man. This last one as well could have easily been a cross kill. And then who knows what happens in the 2v2, right? So... Uh, I feel like this was a uh, you know very close one uh, between these two teams, and now uh, we know who is going up against the final boss of the gauntlet, Team Liquid versus Shao We. And uh, now you know for Team Liquid as well, if they didn't know that Shao We kind of has this in their back pocket, now they've kind of revealed it as well. And um, for them, they're gonna you know at least have a little bit more information kind of heading into that match. Yeah, that. I mean, as a player, then, like, what do you think that's like? You know, if you're if you're Team Liquid or if you were uh, Team Hoo Hoo earlier, you get to kind of see all of the competitors that you might be facing. I mean, what would you be doing in that position, just taking as many notes as you can? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I think for Liquid, what's interesting is I actually had a chance to talk with Sidu yesterday, and he was saying the one team that he does not want to fight is Power Man. I think Power Man was maybe the only team that had a solid answer into what Liquid is going to be running. Um, that being said, shall we? They look very prepared. And you know Nick, he's a phenomenal multi-classer. He could play the Windwalker Monk as well himself. Uh, so I think this should make for a very interesting matchup. The winner of this next series uh, will, of course, be making it into the Grand Finals, uh, which is super exciting. But... Yeah, it's just it's really interesting to see how these teams have kind of adapted away from you know their comfort picks uh, picked up more of the meta compositions um and looking really good on it so far yeah certainly well uh we are gonna have to tune in to find out who ends up going moving forward on to tomorrow's games and who is going to finish the day with second place but we're gonna head to a break it's gonna be team liquid versus shall we coming up next
everybody and welcome back if you are just now tuning in we are on the last series of the day shall we has made it through to the na gauntlet and they are here in the last series versus team liquid shall we playing that ret warrior and now they're going to see how they can face off against the final team of the day ben what do you expect team liquid to bring to the table I feel like uh, we're going to see Liquid lock in the Windwalker Monk. So I think Trill will play Windwalker Monk and they'll play uh, that. Well, they have a, a bunch of different options. Like I kind of mentioned at the beginning of the day, Liquid's been playing basically everything. But I think in this kind of like uh, Mistweaver, Retribution Paladin, uh, melee matchup, the Windwalker Monk is really good for a couple different reasons. First of all, you have the Leg Sweep. So you have an AoE stun for that uh, kind of control and burst. And also, uh, the Windwalker Monk Turbo Fist parries any of the incoming attacks from the Monk, so you can actually prevent him from doing damage, which prevents healing. So you have a couple different tools on that Windwalker Monk uh, to kind of prevent and make it really annoying for the enemy Mistweaver to actually get out any kind of melee healing um, and also control the team with those AoE stuns. So I'm curious if Shall We ends up running a Windwalker Monk of their own or what exactly is going to happen in this blind pick? Ooh, it's not wow. at all. It's a mirror, a straight mirror. Kearney's going to mirror Sidu on Shaman in a all showdown right. to qualify into the top four. Demo versus Demo, Rhett versus Rhett, and Shaman versus Shaman. There's a little bit of difference in racials. Mez opting for the Torin Rhett Paladin. Sidu looks like he's playing a Draenei Shaman. Um, so going to be getting a bit of extra healing overall in the matchup. And both Rhett Paladins just charging across at the opposing team's Warlock so far at the beginning stage of this match. Now, this is a matchup that can go for a little while. Both the Rep Paladin, well, actually, all three members are very durable. I'd be surprised if this ends in the early game. I think it's going to be about those early game advantages, picking up some defensive cooldowns, burning through some mana, but maybe I'm wrong. We'll see what happens. we got a Lightning Lasso here on Mez. Beautiful setup with that Tyrant, and this is where uh, Mez is going to get absolutely blasted. They have good pressure here on Calvish, and it looks like the main strategy for both these teams is kind of drag and overextend the enemy Rep Paladin uh, while trying to create a lot of pressure uh, of their own on uh, the Rep Paladins themselves. All right, let's see which Rep is going to get exposed the most here. Nick is looking like he's taking the brunt of the damage at the moment. Kearney is stunned up. How are they going to trade? Big heals come up from Kearney with that Ancestral Guidance Ascendance, a massive combo as Nick's going to port back behind the pillar. Nick's actually playing Void Elf, it looks like, so curious to see when he decides to activate that to try and escape from the Rep Paladin. It could be key uh, in victory. Mobility ratio is going to be really good against the Rep Paladin. Uh, as we see Nick just continuing to generate pressure. It's going to be a bit of a slow start outside of these Avenging Wrath windows. Mez is finally being forced back. Lightning Lasso on them. Are they going to get Divine Shield through Divine Protection? Cedar's into a stun. Mez into a coil. They might just do it. They're so close to forcing it. Can they get it? No. Shield of Vengeance comes out, and they will not get Divine Shield. The most important cooldown to get from these Rhett Paladins. Now Mez is charging forward with Avenging Wrath. Going to be tearing into Nick right here. As Kearney's just posted up the pillar, trying to line aside any potential crowd control and keep heals going. Sam ports back away from Calvish as his Avenging Wrath is active as well. Mez is pulling back with Sidu at the pillar. Maybe going to go after Calvish a little bit here. Grounding on the Hammer of Justice of Calvish there by Sidu. It was a really good grounding totem, immuning that stun. A very important crowd control now. Lightning Lasso out from Sidu, but it does it actually end up getting stunned anyways. Mez, Divine Shields! And this is... Oh no, Sidu trinketed too. This is really bad for Liquid here in Game 1. Yeah, this is not what I would have expected. I did not even know that <laughs> Shall We had this composition available or, you know, the Rhett uh, Warrior. They're looking really solid here today. They have a lot of pressure uh, in the initial stages of this match. They're able to get a lot of cooldowns out of the way from Mez, a Divine Shield. Sidu has no Trinket. Now Liquid could be a little bit vulnerable. And if Shall We can pick up a game number one win here, that would be really important for both these teams. You have that swing map advantage. If it does go to a best of five, it'll be your map and a comp pick, which is huge in a series like this, where both teams just have so many different options that they can run. Calvish though getting pressured. He does have the Divine Protection up, but Mez is really ripping in here on that Rep Paladin. Calvish pops wings of his own, looking to get aggressive here on the Mez. Mez backs off, does not want to have to make any more trades. He still has the Blessing of Spell Warding, but you don't want to have to get rid of all of those cooldowns before dampening even kicks in. Oh, Mez is stunned up. No Divine Shield. Blessing of Spell Warding. But Calvish now having it turned around onto him. Is he going to have to Divine Shield? He will have to. Mez keeps his team in the game there along with Sam I am to force that important defensive cooldown out from Calvish. Sidu and Kearney even on mana here at the three minute mark. And both Rep Paladins are exposed. Another Lightning Lasso from Sidu going for the kill onto Calvish. Can they finish him with both Sam and Sidu all over him? He's line of sighting the pets trying to avoid damage and buy time for Kearney. But he's just dying outright. Now he's not sure if he should go in or out. But Execution Sentence is ticking away. Kearney gets stunned. He pre-links the Hammer of Justice. Sanctuaried out of it. 
a moment later, but suddenly Calvish is the one is who is behind. Double blinding light. This could be it. This could be lights out. Calvish on the run. Gets a big lay on hands behind the pillar. Knocked away from the gateway with that unleashed shield. Demez is chasing him. He's all over him right now with that Avenging Wrath. He's getting swarmed, overwhelmed, and Kearney just can't heal him. He's getting cleaved at the pillar. He has to astral shift. Calvish needs to get away from Kearney. He's stacked up too much, and that's going to be dangerous. They're trying to turn it around on Demez here, but he pre-shielded Vengeance that stun. It might not matter. So much damage once again on Demez. This is going to be Cedar Spirit Link Totem. Calvish is retreating away, trying to avoid damage. Stunned up by Sam I am. Sam and Mez both going after Calvish, recklessly going after him despite being so vulnerable at the moment. Bless your protection comes out from Calvish, denying some hits. For now, onto his team, Mana still even stun onto Mez, still anyone's game. Cedar did link amongst amongst all that chaos. He used the Spirit Link Totem, which means this is still anyone's match. Yeah, it definitely is. Mez is low. He has no defensive cooldowns whatsoever. Not even a Divine Protection is going to be available. Just using his Divine Steed, trying to line of sight, trying to avoid as much damage as possible here as Calvish is looking to connect. But a great job with positioning from Mez. Keeps him alive while Sidu is now out of crowd control and can keep him topped off. Now they're looking to make an aggressive play here on the Calvish, but he's playing defensive. Ooh. But this is a huge damage from Mez. And they take him down. The beautiful stun there by Nick, just trying to slow down the aggre uh, aggression here from Team Liquid. But I don't know if it's going to be enough. At the same time, though, Mez is low. This is just such a close match. Both Calvish and Mez in a lot of trouble. And I think it's Calvish who needs to run away, needs to play defensive. Kearney needs to throw in some big heals. Does manage to connect a few, but the blinding light from Mez might be enough. But at the same time, now Mez is getting incredibly low. This matchup is just so back and forth. Oh, they got Sanctuary with the Fear. They could stun Sidu in the near future and potentially kill Mez here. He's 10 seconds away. 10 seconds away from Divine Shield. Mez just needs to stay alive. 10 more seconds. Can he do it? 8 more seconds. He's looking stable right now. And if he can get to that, he's going to play with confidence. He's going to steamroll Calvish. As soon as he has Divine Shield, he's going to mount up, run right in, and finish this match. Now he does have it. Sidu is stunned. Mez is going after Nick at the moment, not wanting to overextend. Just attack the closest target. And I don't really blame them, but Mana is still looking pretty tight. Mez gets feared far away from the engagement. Calvish is still 50 seconds away from his Divine Shield. Mez is charging he's got wake of ashes he's got avenging wrath here comes a big hit mez gets feared on his big hit by nick good peels for now earthen wall is down but will it be able to soak the damage of a rep and calvish doesn't trust it he's kiting away but he's just getting overwhelmed trades out shield of vengeance sanks the crowd control trying to stay aggressive trying to turn it around onto mez now onto sam sam is exposed no one any resolve what happened to that cooldown sam down at half cedo into a stun sanctuary comes out from mez at the last second here as sam ports back behind the pillar calvish is trying to finish him off so a target swap here from shall we going after the warlock here at this moment in time is Sam going to get crushed? Dampening's almost at 30%. Sidu is crowd controlled. There's no link. And Sam, he's looking like he's going to go down in game number one. Fears on Calvish instantly removed. And he gets rebuked. He goes into the stun. But now Nick is getting swapped to. On any resolve forced from his part as well. Both Shaman's almost completely out of mana. Sidu with a slight edge. And now Kearney into a stun. This could be it for Nick. A huge turnaround. Mez trying to connect. But Nick ports back behind the pillar. Blinding light on the Kearney. He's line of sighting. Trying to avoid Mez. Trying to get back to Kearney. He's spirit links. But it's only a two player spirit link. Calvish is too far away. And I don't know if two players are going to be enough here. If Mez can stay on top of them, see you into Hammer Justice, no Sanctuary. Sam ports back behind the pillar. He's got defensives. Kearney's Healing Tide Totem is down. Doesn't look like they're able to kill it. This Tide's getting so much value. Lightning last one to Mez. Nick gates back to the pillar. That Healing Tide ticking away, but now it's over. And Mez has got wings up. This could be a double kill for Mez behind the pillar. He gets coiled away by Nick, trying to stall it. And Kearney's trying to drink, possibly. But Mez is just a wrecking ball doing so much damage. Kearney, I think he procked an Ascendance there with a Riptide. Really key moment. He's going for a Hex. Gets grounded. Cedar turns around with a hex of his own. There's no trinket on the Kearney. Coil Lasso, triple crowd control by Liquid, and Nick is going to, oh my god, survive at 1% with a port behind the pillar. I can't believe it, but that still surely is going to be the game. Nick, how are you possibly going to hold on? They get the double stun, but somehow Kearney is stabilizing him. Earthen Wall goes down. Here's the Tyrant. Can they actually reverse the pressure? There's so many cooldowns available here for Liquid. Sam I Am is actually forced to use that in resolve. Calvish is really ripping in, chasing him down. Can they take down Sam I Am? This would be absolutely unbelievable. Nick surviving at 1% health, and they make the play. They make the aggressive push here onto Sam I Am. There is absolutely no way these teams are so evenly matched here in this game number one. Sam I Am finally connects his appeals. Nick has forced the portal away, and now momentum in favor of Liquid once again. That's the Divine Shield here by Mez. Calvish right now has the Avenging Wrath, but dampening is just so high. Can Calvish hold on? They make a push here on Mez. Nick is getting low as well. Sam I Am putting out tons of damage, and ultimately it will be Nick that falls, but that was as close as it could possibly get.
I mean, for the first five minutes, or maybe not five, maybe like first three minutes, I'm like, oh man, this is Shaoli's game. Like they're they're winning, like clearly winning. They got bubble and spell warding off, like back to back. Like it felt like Liquid is really struggling to find their footing. And then it got really crazy. Then suddenly they're attacking the Warlocks at the five minute mark. The dampening kicked in a little bit. And then at that point, it felt like Liquid was just starting to get ahead and ahead, getting more and more confidence. We saw those Shaman trades uh, on Hexes uh, towards the end of this match as well. That really played key in terms of putting each of the teams behind. So really good early game from Shall We. This might have just been like Liquid maybe warming up um, because Shall We were just coming off some games and maybe Liquid, maybe they weren't able to find some mirrors. Um, I would imagine it's pretty tough to find mirrors uh, of this caliber, at least, uh, especially because Shall We seemingly are coming out of left field with this comp and really challenging Liquid with it. Uh, with so many close calls, this this game it, it almost felt like a trilogy or something. Like it had three different arcs <laughs> in it. Like the first arc was like the Shall We arc where they're just winning and they're going after the Ret Paladins, and we advanced into the the middle arc where the Warlocks were the targets, and then how can they deal with it? And then the final arc was the Shamans. Like who's getting more hexes than the other one, and who's grounding the hexes? until ultimately Liquid was able to almost get a double kill onto Calvish and Nick. Like a horror movie where you think the villain is dead at the end, but it's it's not quite. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, this is just so crazy how back, I mean, look at Sam I am, how, like, I don't know how he's holding on here. C2 connects to Riptide. Samai eventually is able to portal away. And then somehow they actually do manage to stabilize, even though dampening is so high. And now it's Nick completely on the bat. You think this is over. It's like this lightning lasso. Nick portals away at 1% health. Look at him. And they get the double stun here too. It's a hammer of justice onto Kearney. They get the axe toss here onto Nick. And it's like, how, how on earth, how are you surviving? What What is going on? 1% health. Riptide comes in, somehow even gets rebuked there by Mez. Mez is just like, what is going on? Die, die, die. I can't believe it. And then... And in a miraculous turn of events, once again, they force Sam I am back to the pillar. This is a little bit after that, but it, this is just shows you how evenly matched these teams are. I'm very impressed with Shall We. Uh, even though they lost that game, I didn't think they would be able to play this composition at this kind of level, uh, really making it close here against Liquid. Yep, I mean, definitely. The rest of the series is going to be interesting. <laughs> yeah, Let's look at the scoreboard yeah. here. So Mez getting in pretty significantly higher damage than Calvish here in game one. Although Calvish with almost a million more healing, that doesn't really directly offset it. So Warlock's looking pretty even in terms of overall pressure. So if Calvish can get a little bit more damage out, I wonder if that was because at the point in the game where he was like hesitating and running with Kearney, he wasn't really getting to attack anything. Um, so if they can keep him more stable and more aggressive, if he can match Mez's damage more evenly, then I think they're going to be in a bit of a better position. But this is a series that could go all the way. This is not going to be free for either team to get into the top four. And they're both looking like scary teams for everybody else waiting for them, right? Like, I, I can only imagine, like, the Golden Guardians sitting there in the top four going, like, oh, God, there's two Red Demos coming out of this one. Like, there's no way we're going to avoid this. Like, this this is a scary uh, final to this gauntlet. This What kind of surprises me about this particular matchup is I feel like both these... I, I would have thought that the Retribution Paladin... Uh, with, you know, uh, a Fist Weaver and a Warrior or a Windwalker Monk would be really good into the Demonology Warlock. But the fact that both these teams are just locking this in blind, like, is this just the best comp? Yeah, uh, I, I really thought that the, the the melee cleave would be able to beat this, but it turns out um, that maybe not. I mean, maybe this is just the, the, the best comp that these teams can be running right now. Uh, so I'm really curious to see who ends up coming out ahead, if Shall We can kind of battle it back, um, if we are going to see any comp swaps a little bit later on um uh especially if liquid loses like if liquid ends up losing a game and they get to counter pick i wonder if they'll end up trying something else i'd be curious to see it as well against miss weaver warrior red um this composition see how that pans out but i don't know if we're gonna be able to see that today tiger's peak we're headed to and shall we looking to tie it up here neither of these teams no surprise uh changing their compositions so we're pretty much gonna see the same exact game that we saw uh the first time around sid yeah, I mean, strategies might change here. Uh, like targeting evolved mm. in that game. It wasn't just tunnel the rat and pull him behind a pillar. It was chase after the lock and, and try and finish the game. So uh, it's going to be an ongoing kind of improvisation from both teams, which is what you really like to see at the highest level of competitive play. You can't just kind of ride one line the whole game and it's really predictive, predictable. I, I like it when it's like this, more a little bit more impromptu. Maybe there's opportunities even to swap Shaman if they're stacking up at the pillar. 
uh, for teams to take advantage of. They've gone to a neutral map, so they're not looking for any specific edges. Uh, I was wondering if maybe if they go to a Z axis map, like how does this play out? Like does the Warlock getting to free cast on the high ground provide any sort of changes in the way the matchup plays? Uh, but they're not going for that uh, here with Tiger's Peak. So likely just going to be trying to aim to get Calvish more efficiently into the match so he can match Mez's damage more closely, I think. There's also like a very small difference in in the builds that the, the two teams are running. Do you feel like that makes much of a difference, Sid, in how they're approaching this game? I mean, did we get to see the Void Elf from Nick at all in that? I, I don't remember a point where he used it. So Void Elves have the ability to like shoot a little shroud version of them out and it moves forward and then you can teleport to wherever it is on the map. Um, mm. we, we didn't really get to see him use it, I don't think, unless he used it when he was off screen or something. Or maybe I missed it. There's a lot going on, but um, I'm wondering maybe if there's something more valuable you'd be getting on Warlock. Um, maybe even the Dark Iron Dwarf for like an extra empowerment. Like when you remove an effect, you get more stats, which can give you more damage. Um, might be better for him because uh, we didn't. I, I didn't. I didn't get to see him do it at all. Maybe Kearney even. Maybe Draenei from Sidu is a little bit more efficient in terms of healing. Possibly these are little tweaks that I don't think ultimately. Um, with the they can that matter. Lost, they can matter, but I think the gap was so big that it that wasn't the reason. Like if Calvish's damage was maybe like within five hundred thousand of Mezes, then I'd say you may be getting close to the point where like those little decisions <laughs> matter. Uh, maybe like their talents. I, I'm wondering like is there anything they're doing with their talents? If I look at this, that looks any different. So Resto Shaman's look identical, except Kearney's running Sky Fury Totem, uh, whereas Sidu is running Unleashed Shield. So Sidu is like knocking enemies away and then rooting them. And I actually think that's a really powerful effect uh, the sky fury totem is going to give you like you know some rng damage to potentially just crit somebody out of the match so one is more rng the other one is more static and consistent cdu's options more static and consistent um gear looks pretty much the same here except actually cdu is running a an on use trinket as opposed to a medallion so cdu is getting an extra minute on use activation to heal which lines up with avenging wrath every minute so I think you I mean, use that, it for Earthen Wall Totem. This this could be one thing that's separating them. Kearney might have felt like he was going to be the target in this matchup, so maybe he was wearing the emblem, but then you lose throughput overall um, in the series. So that that's definitely one change that I think maybe Kearney could make to be a little bit more efficient. And what what is Calvish running compared There's to There's big Mez? differences between Mez and Calvish. Yeah. Yeah, if you guys so, want to take a look at this yourself, you can go to awc.gcd.tv. So Lawbringer versus Spell Warding is one big one. And then Vengeance Aura. So Mez is just getting an insane crit the entire game because everyone's getting CC'd by Demolock. So Mez is just getting free stats with Vengeance Aura, whereas Calvish is getting Luminescence for when you're when healed by an ally, allies within your aura gain 2%. So he's giving his team 2% damage. Is 2% damage better than, what is that, 12% crit? Uh, <laughs> I, I feel like most most Rep Paladins use Vengeance Aura. Like I, I feel like the kind of standard is just Blessing of Sanctuary. Vengeance Aura, if you really have to drop it, I, I guess you can. Um, but also, I feel like the Blessing of Spell Warding is really nice for their team also. Like having that as an option, of course, it, it kind of... I think Mez isn't actually even specced into Blessing of Protection, so it frees up a different kind of talent pathway for him also. Um, so he can get some more maybe damage talents or defense talents in his regular class tree. So yeah, some interesting adaptations there. And that's the thing, right? Like Liquid as a team, they are just, they're so old school when it comes to just min-maxing every little thing. Like how can we get one extra talent point? How can we get like the absolute advantage in terms of even just the racials that we use? Um, and I think that's one thing that like gives them maybe a little bit of an edge is putting in extra all that extra thinking and homework just in terms of like those little min maxi things that they can do. Mm -hmm. Well, we will see how that works out for them for game number two heading into Tiger's Peak. We will see if uh, Team Liquid can repeat that once again, or shall we going to figure this out? I am really glad, though, that we have a mirror match in the finals. Certainly a, a super interesting way to end it here with the North American bracket. Of course, the winner of this one will be moving on to the global finals, and the loser will finish the day with second place. But shall we? Are they going to tie this up? <sighs> He's Volpirin. Is this the first time we've seen a Volpirin on broadcast? They're, wait, they're both Volpirin. 
What? Both of the war both of the warlocks are Vulpira, and I'm pretty sure that's bag of tricks, at least on the icon. Was Vulpira is the min-max racial for the warlocks? They're both Vulpiran! I mean, okay. I mean it's looking. I think they have right. some other effect. There is a reason why you run. I think it like you are a little bit. It's tanky. versatility, maybe. You get a little bit of extra defense versus like minor attacks or something like that. There's something like that. Oh, for all the little imp pets, they're yeah, gonna do a little bit less damage. Do, yeah, something like that. I'm gonna get confirmation on that one, but I think that's the reason why they end up going with it. It's not often that you see uh, the Vulpirans, uh, but it is cool to see. And that's going to be the Unleashed Shield there by Sidu, slowing down some of the damage from Calvish. And I do think in general that's a much better honor talent than the Sky Fury. Sidu's going to be able to get big value, reducing damage, but huge pressure here on the Calvish. Oh, not having to use any defensive cooldowns, but that was a big nature surface there by Kearney. And that was a bit of a close call also. A great initial push there by Liquid. And Sidu's actually playing Adaptation, so he's not going to have that Trinket Spirit Link, trying to rotate through Adaptation to break a crowd control, and then um, Sanctuary from the Rep Paladin, just trying to be as efficient as possible um, with that choice. But it could leave them exposed if they get crowd control at a key burst moment, where he can't break it, and then he can't trade Spirit Link. So this will be more effective if he doesn't get punished on it than Kearney, but if they ever find a moment, it could just lose him the game. So kind of a risky gamble, honestly, on Sidu's part here. Um, to go for that choice. He's axe tossed at the moment. Uh, doesn't look like his team's taking too much damage though. Mez is avenging Wrath up. Rebuke over onto Nick. Kearney into a fear. Looks like that fear is going to break, but into a full hex. And Sidu's been getting a lot of these hexes. Fortunately, not finding too much damage uh, as Nick is able to sit through that comfortably. Calvish is getting swapped to. Massive damage out from Mez here. And Shield of Vengeance comes out from Calvish, soaks those hits, and is now trying to get him more offensive. That unleashed shield on the Calvish, reducing the heals, rooting him, keeping him away from Sam I M. These tiny little tweaks and differences between the team are definitely going to add up over a long duration match as we see Sam poured away from Calvish. Nick is going for a Tyrant. They stun Mez. They're trying to stay ahead of the pressure. I think that victory is a bit premature here at this point as we see them gate away. Calvish is chasing them down with the Wake of Ashes. And if he can stay connected to Sam here, it could be dangerous. We see Nick port back behind the pillar away from the Dreadstalkers looking to try and get out some more pets of his own with that Valfane spamming fear now onto Sam. Canical Dance loaded out here as Nick is tanking damage in Earthen Wall. Likely going to be a little bit of a longer match if the Ampity starts reducing some of these heals from both sides and perhaps this Vulpira swap is like, I never would have thought of Vulpira as the counter to Demo, but that, that's pretty sick. Yeah, so apparently the racial we're looking for here is called it Nose for Trouble. Uh, when you first take damage from an enemy, reduce that damage by 5% of your maximum health. And every single one of the demons, when they first hit you, uh, count. So it's a lot of damage you're reducing from a demonology warlock. Every single one of those imps or the tyrant or whatever it may be, when it first attacks you, is going to be a bit of a damage reduction there. So really intelligently done uh, by both of these teams. Just min-maxing to the absolute max here in this matchup. Calvish right now getting absolutely blasted by the tyrant with the lightning lasso. Good combo there by Team Liquid. But can they get the divine shield? That's going to be the question they do it, it looks like they will be able to uh, hold on so that's really nicely done there by shall we holding on to that very important defensive cooldown uh, and avoiding the setup now they need to look to strike back here as dampening is slowly but surely ramping up in this match all right wings is up here for calvish can he connect onto sam mez is getting low as well uh, as wake of ashes is cracking sam i am skull at the moment barely holding on here now mez is trying to connect onto nick but he's taking some punishment as well does manage to recover thanks to the ancestral guidance of Sidu as he's repositioning back to the pillar. It seems like he's getting a lot of effective value out of this adaptation. He's quite ahead of Kearney on mana at this point if this game keeps extending as it's likely going to. Mez behind the pillar it, with Sidu trying to recover, going after the pet it looks like, maybe just getting holy power, getting some heals out, trying to stabilize. He's just dying behind the pillar at the moment. Calvish is just whacking him from the other side of the Tiger statue. That 20-yard range definitely improving his ability to just sit at the pillar and do damage at the same time. Shield of Vengeance is up for Mez as well as Earthen Wall Totem swapping back to Calvish in that Lightning Lasso, fortunately on DR. Here comes Avenging Wrath for Calvish. How much damage is he going to get out during this time? Unleash Shield, reducing his damage significantly during that burst window. And Coiled. Anytime Calvish activates wings, he gets Unleash Shield into a Coil or into a Stun. So that's going to shut down a lot of Red Paladin damage if they can keep coordinating that between Sam I Am uh, and Sidu. Mez is trying to connect onto Nick at the moment. Valfiends are out on both targets here as both Red Paladins seem to be the main targets. Calvish is stunned up. Can Mez get over there? It doesn't look like he's going to blind Kearney and then go over 
on his steed as Nick ports away from that target. Sam Am gets blinding lighted by Calvish as well as his Tyrant. Really good blinding light usage here on all those pets. Definitely want to be min-maxing, removing that threat. Calvish getting blasted. Spell warding trades for Calvish. This is the first like significant cooldown we've seen. So first defense cracked from Shall We on the side of Liquid. Let's see what they can do. I mean, it, mana is actually surprisingly evened out. CD was way ahead. Uh, but there's been so much pressure output by the side of Shalwi that that has kind of evened out and they've lost that advantage. Calvish going to be coiled into a fear away by Sam I am just trying to get control of the matchup and slow down some of this retribution pound and damage. Nick uses his demonic circle to reposition far away. Looking for a tyrant. Can he find the tyrant he bandages to? So this is a really dangerous moment here for Liquid. If they can't avoid the damage, they need a line of sight. They need to not allow this tyrant to get off any cast. Calvish right now going to get blasted, trying to drag people into the open. Uh, so at least if they're going to go after Calvish, they can get hit by the Tyrant. But that was kind of the burst window there for the side of Shall We. And uh, Liquid has weathered the storm. All right, Nick tanking some damage right now in the midfield. Is he going to be able to escape? He stuns up Mez, looking for a Fear, but he's getting very low at the moment. Fear onto Mez, maybe swap to Mez. They're going after Sam. Sam's got the high ground here. Um, surprise, maybe he doesn't put his portal on that high ground. Rep Paladin not going to be able to get up that balcony. It might actually be really good. And then you could free cast a Tyrant from the high ground. Uh, I wonder if they'll ever consider repositioning this. You can even use Gateway, I think, going up there now as well. Calvish taking a huge hit of damage Whoa! as Divine Shield comes out. And Mez is absolutely cranking at the moment. Now going after Nick. He's trying to get away from Mez. Looking like a scary Rep Paladin at the moment. Valfine coming out for Nick. Trying to push Mez back. Calvish is low. He's got no spell warding. No Divine Shield. He's taking it. So much damage. He's trying to jump off the side towards Kearney. But Kearney is stunned. Sanctuary comes through to break the stun. But blinded on his Sanctuary. Mez with great crowd control as they're setting up damage onto Nick in that Axe Toss. But not finding enough to kill him. Erzenwald towed him down from Kearney. Looking for an Aura Mastery Hex. He finds that on the Sidu, but Adaptation removes it. Now Calvish is just getting blasted. Son of the Kearney. Trinkets, he links. He almost doesn't connect it in time, but now Kearney, he's got absolutely zero mana left. His team is going to need to pull off some big moves here in the next couple of seconds if they want to still take this. He's got Ancestral Guidance. He presses it instantly, but does he have the healing to keep him going? Execution Sentence is about to go off on Calvish with Lightning Lasso. Imps are free casting onto him as he's down below half with nothing. Kearney into the stun. Massive hit of damage. Man, gets feared in desperation but it is not enough calvish at one percent goes down and liquid looking even stronger in game two yeah i mean they're just warming up in this match i guess liquid up 2-0 they're one away to make it into the grand finals and they've been putting so much work into not only this composition but basically every composition you could want in this particular meta We'll see. I mean, do you think we're going to see any kind of composition change coming in from Shall We? Or do you think this is just going to go back and forth? Uh, may the better team win with this uh, kind of mirror matchup? Uh, I mean, it's probably, I, I don't know. Like, Shall We, the fact that they didn't lock in the Warrior Ret right off the bat makes yeah. me think that they, they have to think that the mirror is a better option for them. Um, maybe they switch to Adaptation. I mean, it got Sidu out of so many crowd controls, um, whereas Kearney didn't have it. Um, for a lot of those. So it just allowed CD to be way more effective on healing. He could be in a better spot to get his totems down. Um, and it seemed like their team was just built for more efficiency here uh, in game number two. And also it seemed like the Warlocks were a lot harder to target. Um, like that Volpeer ratio was actually really important because uh, they weren't you know, taking nearly as much damage as we saw in game number one between the two of them. So uh, I, I almost wonder if that's now evolved the strategy. Maybe Calvish, like look at the Unleashed Shield right here from Sidu. That, that needs to be played by Kearney. There's no way that that needs to not, like if he used Word of Glory while he was in that and it was reduced on healing and that little bit of effectiveness was the reason that his healer couldn't sit through the crowd control. It stops him from connecting with wings for a second. Like it seems like it's huge value uh, to get that Unleashed Shield during those key moments, both offensively and defensively. Yeah, you can unleash shield on like a tyrant as well you know they reduce all of its damage incoming it's a lot of versatility with that particular talent uh, a lot more than you get from sky fury so yeah um really really interesting to see and it's all those little decisions that just end up to being more pressure cooldowns at a better time you know having more mana as dampening gets higher and in a matchup like this all, all those little little micro decisions and plays uh, end up mattering a lot when it's just so close so back and forth so pressure based uh, this is a really nice setup here by Liquid with that Lightning Lasso. And at this point, this is nothing left for Calvish. There's no heals going to be incoming. Kearney gets feared away out of the stun. And it's a really good setup there, clean by Liquid, basically from start to finish. I mean, you can see the gap. The gap The gap is getting bigger um, between Mez and Calvish here in this game. Like, look at the healing gap, too. Like, Calvish is healing way more um, 
than Mez is. So he's using a lot of holy power and healing rather than damage. And maybe he's just focusing too much on healing. Or maybe that's because c is getting out of more crowd control with the Adapt. So Mez doesn't need to use it for healing as much. Uh, but they've got to get these numbers a bit closer than this. There's, I don't think there's any way they're going to be able to win if they're playing at like 50% effectiveness. Uh, to him in this matchup in particular. And maybe it's the Unleashed Shield. Maybe that's what's restricting Calvish's damage. Maybe he's getting Unleashed Shield on his, like, his big hit moment during Avenging Wrath, so every time that's half as valuable, right, with Unleashed Shield. So that could be what's going on. So Kearney needs to switch the talents, but I think we're seeing a Fist Weaver with Hook Point. I, I think Shall We are doing something different. It might either, either Demo Ret Fist Weaver or we're seeing the Warrior Ret. Some, something is changing here, I think, uh, on the side of Shall We with the fact that they're going with Hook Point. Also, I looked into it and it looks like the Warlocks are playing Vulpira because of their racial passive Nose for Trouble, which is a 5% reduction of maximum health the first time you take damage. Um, and both of them both of them were running racial, uh, sorry, Vulpira. So were they playing Vulpira for the first round as well? I don't know if anyone no. checked that. No, I don't know. I don't know who told them to go Vulpirin because they switched it, it like, in game two and not game right? one. Or maybe, maybe they didn't think so it was weird. a demo lock in game one. Is the only thing maybe maybe they thought mm. it could be a different comp so they wanted it to be oh, something yeah. else on the blind pick but then when they knew it was a demo lock it was like okay we, we need to play volpira but shall we go into the ret warrior they got a reverse sweep which means liquid even if this comp doesn't work could bring something else out as well so can they make it out of the gauntlet here backs against the wall this is their last chance to qualify for the big money the big prize uh, over saturday and sunday so a lot of pressure on to shall we they really surprised us honestly though i, I feel like Nobody was predicting them to make it even past Power Man, I think. Um, but their their Miss Weaver Warrior Ret was so strong in that series, and their Demo Red is almost rivaling Liquid, given how much time Liquid have been putting into it. I'm a bit surprised. Uh, and now they're going back to this, like the comp that worked for them. Go back to it, see what you can get done. Uh, it's a really explosive comp. I think just kill the Shaman maybe on on this map. Just get the Miss Weaver offensive and kill the Shaman. Maybe swap to the Red. I don't know if you want to train Lock. I know you say the Fist Weaving healing on the Lock is really good, but I also feel like Ret Warrior can just kill the rest of the Shaman and like even a DR'd Stormbolt. Oh, whoa. That is actually really interesting. Um, just looking at gear, this is not something that I really I, I noticed, but Mez is running something that's I've never actually seen before. Look at his legs. He's uh, legs. using... Yeah, he's using a piece of equipment called Frostfire Leg Guards of Preparation. So that? anytime he damages a new enemy, it grants him haste for 10 no seconds, way. stacking up to five stacks. So, so he's AOEing he, the pets and getting a thousand more haste? He just has a thousand haste all game? Or uh, I wonder what the uptime on that is. It's got to be really high when you're playing against the Demonology Warlock. I, I mean, didn't even know that item existed. <laughs> me neither. <laughs> this, is, this is what I'm talking about, though. This is like the little decisions that they make, the little kind of advantages they find uh, with the gear. Luckily, we're here to you know reveal them all with the <laughs> the AWC companion. But every other ret's going and crafting these pants. Oh, a hundred percent. There's no doubt about it. That that is that's got to be big, right? Like a thousand haste is huge in terms of secondary that's the second. Same, isn't it the same amount of haste as the weapon enchant? If you're running a haste weapon enchant, so you're, could, you're getting Sophic devotion and you're getting uh, the haste at the same time, basically. I think by running that. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's definitely pretty good. They're not going to be as valuable in this matchup in particular, but against a Demonology Warlock, I feel like all the Rep Paladins are going to go uh, craft these pants now. It's that right. good? You think everyone's going to go do that? I guess, uh, oh, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. you're just running a crazy <laughs> amount of haste for free in the match, which Consecrates, is really, really good. Let's, let's take a look at the, the TR. We're going to see Calvish running towards the vendor, grabbing those real quick. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't know if he'd be able to or if, he's, if they're in the game already, but looks like we're in the game here. And, oh my God, there's lightning, there's rain. This is, what is it called when the weather matches the intensity of like a book or something? Is there something called something? Um, and that's exactly what's happening right now. Shall we, it's their final moment, their final opportunity, everything on the line. If they want their entire season of play is coming down to these last three games. If they can stay alive back to back, facing Liquid on this Demo Ret Shaman, absolutely min-maxed. They've thought of every conceivable option in terms of stats and gear to min-max their opportunities here, but a triple stun setup by Shall We is a great way to start this here into a blinding light onto Sidu. Now, how many cooldowns can they force throughout this? A pre-earthen wall from Sidu looks like it retained a lot of that opening pressure, but they do get on any resolve from the Warlock, and here comes the Tyrant. Sam
Sam I am is getting ready to load out a lot of damage. They're gonna go after the Mistweaver. He gets knocked out of the Earthen Wall for a moment, and they're still going after the Warlock. Sidu trying to get a heal out here. Healing Surge after Healing Surge. Sam ports away. Mez is now doing so much damage. It's Mash Point and Kearney, man. If he gets unlucky with that fist weaving healing onto the wrong target, it could be game over. He panics. He life cocoons himself. Nick is still very low at this point in time, and Kearney is struggling to connect to his target. Yeah, it's just so slowed at this point of the game, but he moves forward, finally connecting damage here onto Sam I Am. And on this map, it is going to be very difficult for Sam I Am to get away. CD is going to be under heavy pressure. You can see him just bombing out healing wave after healing wave, looking for a full hex. And this hex is absolutely deadly here on Kearney. He's forced to trade out his trinket. Look at that. There's the Unleashed Shield. His healing is reduced. CD doing absolute work on the Shaman right now. And Liquid is looking good. This is a matchup they've obviously practiced quite a bit. I feel like the next hex here on Kearney could be the end of the game here. On to Nick. That Calvish is going to have to really save the day. Red Warrior not looking too strong right now. They need to crank out a huge amount of damage almost immediately. Just one shot Sam I Am. It's their last chance and they're actually doing it. Sam I Am down at half health. See, do oh no, he needs to link he bops. And S comes out with the bop. And Sam I Am will recover. Now they're swapping to Mez for a moment. He's down at half. Sidu's trying to pick him back up. He's retreating away from the engagement. Sam loading out the Dreadstalkers. Triple Howl of Terror. Looks like it does break, though, a bit early. They do get the Hex, though. Kearney with no trinket. This could be it. It's match point, and their healer's crowd controlled. Nick is trying to stay alive with Ignore Pain, absorbing some hits. Hex is finally over. Kearney needs to connect. Sam I Am moving away from the Feyline Stomp, and Life Cocoon comes up with Nick. Now they can swap to Kearney. He's down below half health. Nick is leaping in, trying to keep his team offensive and stay on target, but ending resolve is coming off cooldown. Instant sanction from Mez onto the stun on Sidu. Sidu is now free, and he's going to be looking for a Hex here, I think, in the near future on Kearney to close out this match. Nick needs to pre-die by the sword. The stun lock, if they get a Hex stun, it's going to be game over. Nick is just dying to damage at this point. Kearney is really struggling. Here's a blinding light. Sidu trinkets out. Here comes the Avenging Wrath. Massive damage incoming from Calvish, but Nick is so low. They stun Sam. They stun Mez. They hold him back. Unleash shield, reducing the damage from Nick here by so much. Sam is just staying in the puddle, and here's the Hammer of Justice. Here comes the kill, potentially onto Nick. He's going to die by the sword. He's so Oh, he can't trade it. Sidu clutches it out with the lightning lasso and Liquid are going through 3-0. Unbelievable there from Liquid. This is just pure domination and they played this matchup so incredibly well. The crowd control that they were able to get onto the Mistweaver, with the Hexes, the Fears. It just seems like they always had perfect cross and all of their practice has definitely paid off. They've earned their ticket to the Grand Finals, to that top four. Uh, and they are looking absolutely deadly. Uh, I mean, this is looking like a really good meta for Liquid, and uh, they played this one really well. Yeah, yeah almost, for sure. I wonder, like, shall we? I feel like they like kind of like pulled these comps out last minute. I, maybe they just it's like a spread yourself too thin. Like Sidu's team seems like they've really focused on this comp, uh, at least from the ladder play that I had seen from them, but. Yeah, you, you'd think the Fist Weaver would do really well in this matchup, but it just looks so tough. And they're so exposed to Hex. I, I really like that Sidu was playing offensive. Sometimes what can happen in tournament play is you kind of like tunnel vision defense. You just want to keep your team alive, but you miss huge opportunities uh, if you're not also playing offensive. Like, look at this Unleashed Shield. Like, it's getting de defensive and offensive value right now. And then this Hex, casted by Sidu, Lightning Lasso, bzz, 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 and just immediately dead after that. So really clutch setups. Uh, and I love that Liquid was getting all involved and all get being offensive on those pushes and those turnarounds. So they're going to be the fourth team in North America. And I think that means they fight Kawhi. And honestly, this might be the first tournament. Like, I don't think you can play Holy Paladin Brain. I, I don't think you can. True. I mean, maybe it's Brain and maybe you will, but I don't think you can play Holy Paladin. So this is re a real test, honestly, for Kawhi. They've been able to play Paladin, I think, in every tournament. Pretty much this. since they... Yeah, since they came on this, they, they, did Brain play like a little bit of something else this season? Might have, but not enough like that I can. Drew it? Yeah. I don't even. I don't think it was this season. I think maybe Shaman like once randomly in a tournament that, uh, is very. He locked it memory. in on accident or something. So oh, he's played Shaman even on before. Purpose. Yeah. Like, like like how many series out of all? Like if you true for sure. But uh, and and sorry, luminosity. The hardest Luminosity Gaming, formerly Kawhi, I should say also, um, is that roster with Brain on it. So Liquid's going to go head to head with them. And they've been a nemesis, I feel like, for a very long time. And now Liquid in this patch, they look really good. Like, this is a Shaman patch. This is a Sea patch, right? Like, Golden Guardians, they've got Absterds. They got, like, th this is the time, I think, for the North American Shamans, if there was a time to make a deep run in the grand finals uh, over Saturday and Sunday.
Yeah, and we've got some shaman mains in North America too, so I'm sure those teams are extremely happy and I can't wait for North America, especially or, uh, as well as the European region. So we're going to see both of those tomorrow. Zico, welcome back. What do you think about this team of a pool, pool of teams that we have left here? You know, they, they fought hard, but uh, now we look ahead for uh, the finals. And uh, uh, like Sid kind of mentioned, I feel like this is a great patch for Liquid. Um, and going up against Luminosity, we I feel like we've said in the past, though, there's no way Brain is going to play Holy Paladin. There's no way Brain can play Holy Paladin. But then he does anyway, and he just like, completely no way. You know, dominates on <laughs> it. There's just no way. But then he does and wins, you know? So... Uh, I'm excited to see what, what they have in store uh, uh, on Luminosity. And uh, that's the cool thing about the Gauntlet format as well. You know, you don't really know who you're actually going to go up against. So in a way, you kind of have to prepare for everyone. You know, all the teams have to kind of prepare for everybody in that top eight. So, uh, you know, I think that's going to be really cool. And then, of course, here we have the European teams and the North American teams kind of side by side. And uh, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see. You know, we're going to start off with the EU tomorrow. And... Um, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, Admiral Esports uh, and Liquid. I feel like there's a lot of kind of similarities there, uh, you know, uh, playing those cleaves out and uh, also having that Warlock available to them. Uh, and then, you know, Echo, Luminosity, Kings of the Old Meta. Can they stay? Of course, Echo, formerly Poggers. If you guys haven't seen that switch yet, they uh, did get picked up. So that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, we've got a lot of great competition, so definitely be tuning in tomorrow. It's going to be here the same time, same place. And every team is starting off in upper bracket as well, so it's double elimination. And none of these teams are starting off with a loss, so there's no elimination rounds um, early on. And of uh, of course, we're like Zico said, that first schedule of the day, first half of that schedule is going to be in EU. Echo and Admirals Esports is up first. Um, and then Luminosity Gaming and Liquid are going to be the first of the North American. Those are that's a, those are big games, I feel like, tomorrow. this It's going to be tremendous. Um, we're not seeing anybody go home either. All of the elimination rounds are going to be on Sunday when we find out who the NA and EU champions are. Here's a look at that schedule right here. So like I said, Ego versus Admiral Esports up first. And then for NA, the first one's going to be Luminosity versus Liquid. Sid, do you have any series that you're looking forward to in particular? I mean, Luminosity Gaming and Liquid is... I th mm. Maybe Echo and Admiral's Esports and Luminosity Gaming and Liquid are like mirrored in terms of like... I'm Hypeness. really interested to see, yeah, because it's because it's <laughs> yep. like it's the team that's been dominating for so long versus the team that's like been the underdog for a while, and now it's the underdog's patch. So it's like the tables have turned a little bit uh, in terms of which team is theoretically favored. So can Echo and Luminosity Gaming adapt to that change? And if they can, then they're definitely you know establishing themselves yeah. as, as as the best team in each of those regions. So those ones stand out. A series that I would really like to see at some point is Liquid Golden Guardians. I feel like that's always very exciting. Um, and then also, I wonder what Calm My Way is going to play. Like, are they going to bring a Red Hunter? Because they might be the only Hunter team. I think they eh, maybe Jelly Beans. Both regions actually have some very similar comps. Like the Agents and Where's Gordy are like the kind of like the Wizard teams. It's and true. We, we've got My Way as the Hunter team. Golden Guardians as the Hunter team. Luminosity Gaming Echo like those Rogue comps. Uh, it's actually interesting. Like that doesn't the top happen. Fours. Yeah, often, it's like a, yeah, it's like an NAEU mirrored version. Uh, of each mm -hmm. other across the board in the top four. Yeah, I, I wish this was a land so we could see some of those those EU NA mirrors. But uh, no, it's a, it's an interesting observation for sure. I feel like usually, especially since the teams have been playing separately, the regions have been playing separately for so long, we just have completely different metas and we don't normally get to see them stack up against each other. But uh, that being said, definitely stick around for tomorrow's games. We're going to have some explosive matches like you guys just saw. It's going to be here same time, same place, twitch.tv slash Warcraft. You can also watch us on YouTube if you so choose. Definitely be sure to follow us on Twitter as well at WoW Esports if you want constant updates of what's going on. And we'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific. Thank you so much. See you soon.